Solar, 14. Can I get a 13 sandwiches? sandwich. Is when you're having fun, smile. I have never eaten a sandwich in my life. I love song reach smile.
sandwich time baby. Sandwiches.
List of sandwiches. From Wikipedia. Mm. The Free Encyclopedia. This is a list of notable sandwiches. A sandwich is a dish consisting of two or more pieces of bread with one or more fillings between them. Holy shoot, it's been a year. A whole year. Here's to more. Thank you so much for all the laughs and good vibes, Holly. Holly Tones love Holly Tones BB Holly Tones Lola. Or one slice in the case of an open sandwich. Sandwiches are a common type of lunch food, often eaten as part of a packed lunch. A packed lunch, also called pack lunch, sack lunch, or bag lunch in North America, is a lunch prepared at home or elsewhere, for instance, by a hotel for its guests, or perhaps, for instance, in Japan, sold in a vending machine, and carried to be eaten elsewhere, such as school, workplace, or an outing. There are many types of sandwiches made from a diverse variety of ingredients. The sandwich is the namesake of John Montague, 4th Earl of Sandwich, a British statesman. John Montague, 4th Earl of Sandwich, PC, FRS, uh, from the 13th of November, 1718, to the 13th of April, 1792, was a British statesman who succeeded his grandfather, Edward Montague, 3rd Earl of Sandwich, as the Earl of Sandwich in 1729, at the age of 10. Sandwich tip, put onion powder, salt, and pepper on the mayo. Adds another layer of sandwich too. You, you shouldn't do that to this guy, he's, he's dead. During his life, he held various military and political offices, including Postmaster General, First Lord of the Admiralty, and the Secretary of State for the Northern Department. He is also known for the claim that he was the eponymous inventor of the sandwich. It's a bold fucking claim. Legacy. Sandwich retired in 1782. Despite holding a number of important posts during his career, Sandwich's incompetence and corruption were legendary. <laughs> you can buy a sandwich with this kind of money. Inspiring the saying. Seldom has any man held so many offices and accomplished so little. Recently, some historians have begun to suggest that Lord Sandwich was not perhaps as incompetent as suggested, but that previous historians had placed too much emphasis on sources from his political enemies. The Sandwich the modern sandwich is named after Lord Sandwich, but the exact circumstances of its invention and original use are still the subject of debate. This sandwich guy is so fucked up, what the hell? <laughs> a rumor in a contemporaneous travel book called Tour to London by Pierre Jean Grossly. Holly, please help. I let a peepee, a succulent, and a wee wee into my house, and they have teamed up with the Amogus and are trying to kill me. I, I don't know why your house is being swarmed by penises, but there's not much I can do to help you. Formed the popular myth that bread and meat sustained Lord Sandwich at the gambling table. But Sandwich was into many bad habits, including the Hellfire Club, and any story may be a creation after the fact. Lord Sandwich was a very conversant gambler, the story goes, and he did not take the time to have a meal during his long hours playing at the card table. Consequently, he would ask his servants to bring him slices of meat between two slices of bread, a habit well known amongst his gambling friends. Other people, according to this account, began to order, quote, the shame of sandwich, and thus the sandwich was born. The sober alternative to this account is provided by Sandwich's biographer, N. A. M. Roger, who suggests that Sandwich's commitments to the Navy, to politics, and to the arts mean that the first Sandwich was more likely to have been consumed at his work desk. Major types of Sandwiches include two slices of bread with other ingredients between, two halves of a baguette or roll with other ingredients between, Clipsoish, Hero, 
Hoagie. Or submarine sandwich. Open-faced sandwich. Pocket sandwich. Sandwich cookies and ice cream sandwiches are generally not considered sandwiches in the sense of a bread-containing food item, but are named by analogy. What follows is a list of all sandwiches known to mankind. This is every sandwich we have discovered in our long and exhaustive search to understand sandwiches. Today, we will dive deep into this list. We will discuss the sandwich. We will understand the sandwich. We will come out of this different people and may God, or whatever is out there, have mercy on us all. Sandwiches are wonderful. Sandwiches. American sub. Origin. United States. Traditionally uses sliced turkey breast, ham, roast beef, American or cheddar cheese, chopped or shredded lettuce, tomatoes, and green peppers on a roll of bread. I think Quiznos is out of business. So this is like a, this is like an unearthing an ancient okay, artifact. Can we rank them from 50 to 1? No. No. We can't. And we won't. But thank you for the tip. Bacon. Origin. United Kingdom. I very much enjoy that this is described as an impressive bacon buddy. <laughs> Often eaten with ketchup or brown sauce. Brown sauce is a condiment served with food in the United Kingdom and Ireland, normally dark brown in color. The ingredients include a varying combination of tomatoes, molasses, dates, Apples, tamarind, spices. No, no, there's no wamsich in it, but but I appreciate you trying to help. Uh, spices, vinegar, and sometimes raisins. The taste is either tart or sweet, with a peppery taste similar to that of Worcestershire sauce. Brown sauce is typically eaten with meals such as full breakfasts, bacon sandwiches, and chips. Bacon, egg, and cheese. The image described as such. Sausage, scrambled eggs, and Swiss cheese on rye. Origin, United States. Breakfast sandwich, usually with fried or scrambled egg. Bagel toast. It is such. Sandwich team. Thank you for the sandwich team months of support, Goof Cat. I appreciate that. Origin? Israel. Pressed toasted Hungry. bagel. You hungry? Uh, not really. I already had my dinner. Filled with vegetables and cheese and grilled on a sandwich toaster. Or panini press. Baked bean. As you can see here, uh, at least one clown was lost in the creation of the sandwich. They were transmuted directly into this meal. And may we never forget their sacrifice. Origin, United States. Boston area. Canned baked beans on white or brown bread. Sometimes with butter. Bologna salad sandwich. This this is not a bologna salad sandwich. The, the, this clearly says soup and ham salad sandwich. That's the worst fucking bacon, egg, and cheese I've ever seen. Where's the roll? Why is the egg cooked like that? I'll kill again. I will say, first of all, thank you for the tip. I appreciate it. Second of all, I have done a brief sort of uh, perusing through 
the list of sandwiches. Um, their standards are baffling. Their image examples are also baffling. And in many cases, uh, some of the images are just wrong. So, um, we're in for a treat tonight. <laughs> Exhibit A, ham salad sandwich. Bologna salad sandwich. This says much about our society. Thank you, Moth Critter, for the six months. Snodwich. Origin, United States, Northeastern Pennsylvania. A mixture of bologna sausage and sweet gherkin pickles is processed through a meat grinder. Thank you, Holly, for bringing us this sandwich-based joint today. My life is enhanced immensely. Mayonnaise? Or Miracle Whip is added to the mixture. The salad mixture is left to meld flavors for several hours and then spread thickly on, quote, sandwich bread, unquote. Some recipes call for adding minced white onion or hard boiled egg to the salad. That's something that I've seen a couple times is people talking about, um... Ta talking about, like, adding egg to a bologna sandwich, which I've never really... understood? Every time I've wanted to eat bologna, I just want to eat, like, bologna with mustard and that's it. Ham is sometimes substituted for the bologna. In which case, it becomes a ham salad sandwich. Bon mi. Vietnamese style sandwich, bon mi, made with pork and assorted vegetables. Now this, this is a pretty nice picture of a pretty nice sandwich. They're not all, <laughs> they're not all whack. Some of them are pretty good. Some of them are pretty well documented. Case in point, the bon mi. Origin, Vietnam. Thank you, Plutes Boots, for the resub. Working a bake with hello to sandwiches. Hello, sandwiches. Filling is typically meat, but can contain a wide range of foods, including sardines, which is meat, uh, tofu, which is not meat, pate, which is meat, or eggs, which are eggs. Served on an airy baguette with pickled carrots, cilantro, and peppers. I have had a couple of bon mis in my life. Uh, there used to be this little place next to uh, my college uh, that had uh, bon mis for sale, and they were good. They were real good. Uh, I think the carrots were my favorite part. And then uh, I think my last year. Uh, of one of my diplomas uh, they closed down and I was very sad about it. Barbecue with three different sources. What's for dinner solutions dot wordpress dot com slash 2010 slash 12 slash 02 slash bbq dash sauce slash I'd eat that. Origin. United States. Texas. Tennessee. North Carolina. Alabama. Kansas. Missouri. Mississippi. Arizona. Utah. Colorado. Louisiana. Served on a bun with chopped, sliced, or shredded meat. Pulled pork, beef, or chicken, typically. And sometimes topped with coleslaw. I am almost certainly going to pronounce this next one wrong. So I apologize in advance. It's either like Barros Jarpa, Baro Harpa, Baro Yarpa, one of those. The, the letter J can be pronounced in so many ways in different languages. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm only really familiar with English and French. The H sound, so it is Baro Harpa. Okay. Uh, I 
never learned how to speak Spanish. This is the sandwich. Origin, Chile. Ham and cheese. Usually, Monticoso, which is similar to farmer cheese. In the United States, farmer cheese, also farmer's cheese, or farmer's cheese, is pressed cottage cheese. Sandwich. No, 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 this is cheese, but thank you, Warfe. I appreciate it. An unripened cheese made by adding rennet and bacterial starter to coagulate and acidify milk. Farmer cheese may be made from the milk of cows, sheep, or goats, with each giving its own texture and flavor. Uh, I did look over at chat, and I did see one person just say, uh, and I quote, I'm Chilean, they don't look like that. <laughs> Great. Baro Luco, from Chile and Argentina. This is a very small picture of very small sandwiches, which I guess you eat with a knife and fork. Or I guess this person eats with a knife and fork. This one is apparently named after a president, huh? Beef, usually thin cut steak, and cheese. It does use the same tiny picture on the article. Boru, from Brazil. One homemade Portuguese Boru sandwich. Again, entirely possible. I'm pronouncing this wrong. I have accepted this. It is a little bit blurry, but you know, it's... I, I don't think these pictures are taken by, like, professional photographers. They're taken by people that like to edit Wikipedia. Origin, Brazil. Melted cheese, roast beef, tomato, and pickled cucumber in a hollowed out French roll. Beef on weck. I took this picture. You can find a larger version of it in my Flickr feed at https colon slash slash www dot flicker dot com slash photos slash nick gray slash two six four one seven zero seven eight nine forward slash origin united states buffalo new york roast beef on a kummelweck roll often topped with horseradish the Kaiser Roll, Emperor Roll, German Kaiser Semmel, also called a Vienna Roll, Wiener Kaiser Semmel, as made by hand, also hand Semmel. I'm not even going to begin to pronounce this in Slovene. Or a hard roll, is a typically crusty round bread roll, originally from Austria. It is made from wheat flour, yeast, malt, water, and salt with the top side usually divided in a symmetric pattern of five segments, separated by curved superficial cuts radiating from the center outwards, or folded in a series of overlapping lobes resembling a crown. The crisp Kaiser Semmel is a traditional Austrian food officially approved by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture. Let's see. Uh... Weck. Uh, there are multiple variants of the common roll, differing in size, type of flour used, and toppings. While traditionally plain, Kaiser-style rolls are today found topped with poppy seeds, sesame seeds, pumpkin kernels, linseed, or sunflower seeds. The Kaiser roll is a main part of a typical Austrian breakfast, usually served with butter and jam. It is often used as a bun for such popular sandwiches as hamburgers in America and with a slice of Lieberkaz in Germany and Austria, though sliced extra worst and pickled gherkins, or Wurstsemmel, or a type of Wiener Schnitzel, Schnitzelsemmel, are also used. A variation called a Kummelweck, alternatively spelled Kimmelweck or Kummelweck, is topped with kosher salt and caraway, 
and in the United States, is an essential component of a Buffalo area specialty, the Beef on Weck Sandwich. Now you know. The Beirut from Brazil. I do enjoy looking over at chat and seeing one of the mods adding a blocked term, K-U-M. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Photo de sandwich tipo Beirut. Country of origin, Brazil. Melted cheese. Sliced fresh tomatoes with oregano. Lettuce leaves. Roast beef on pita bread. With mayonnaise. BLT. Brazilians say Beirut is Syrian. Interesting. This article doesn't say that, but maybe it says that in the actual article for the sandwich. Yeah, there we go. Uh... A Beirut is a Brazilian sandwich influenced by Syrian Lebanese cuisine made with pita bread brought to Brazil in the early 20th century by Levantine immigrants. Huh. That seems like something that would be interesting to, like, add to the list here. I'm not really sure why that's omitted, but sure. BLT. A BLT sandwich. Country of origin, United States, and Canada. This stream is making me hungry for a sandwich. I don't have a sandwich, but I do have cookies, so close enough. Uh, I mean, it's not at all the same, but you can eat whatever you want. I'm not your boss. I don't care. <laughs> I didn't have a sandwich for dinner. I had noodles. <laughs> it's fine. Named for its ingredients. Bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Often served on toasted sliced bread, spread with mayonnaise. Uh, in my not-so-humble opinion, uh, my hot of hot takes is that a BLT is often mistaken as a bacon sandwich. It is a tomato sandwich. The main component is the tomato. Bocadillo. Maybe Bocadillo? Probably Bocadillo. Bocadillo prepared with pork fillet, fried onions, and green pepper. Seasoned with alioli sauce. Country of origin? Spain. Baguette bread with some variants of filling. Often eaten in cafes and tapas bars. Bologna. Might I ask how you feel about dipping sandwiches in sauces versus putting them directly on the sandwich? I feel that they're both ways you can eat a sandwich. I don't feel particularly fussed about it. Sometimes I want to have things in the sandwich and sometimes I want to dip it. It's There's no skin off my back. <laughs> you can do whatever you want with your food. I'm not your boss. Bologna sandwich. United States and Canada are the countries of origin. Sliced and sometimes fried bologna sausage between two slices of white bread with various condiments such as mustard, mayonnaise, ketchup. I think if I ever had to eat a bologna sandwich with ketchup on it, I would probably cry. Bosnia, or perhaps Bosnia. I don't think it's Bosnia, because Bosnia is the name of a country, I believe. Bosnia, from University Plaza, Salzburg, Austria. Uh, and also a Fanta, I guess. Country of origin, Austria. Usually grilled on white bread, containing a bratwurst sausage, onions, and a blend of tomato ketchup, mustard, and curry powder. That sounds good. 
That sounds good. Uh, I would eat that. I sincerely hope they don't also make you eat the, the, the Fanta bottle, though. I don't think I could stomach a whole plastic bottle. I have a sensitive stomach sometimes. Bratwurst. German. Bratwurst. In a bun with mustard. This sausage is looking glistening. This sausage is looking wet. This is a damp sausage. Take a big bite. I also thought this was like cheese whiz at first when I saw that on top because of the lighting. From Germany. A popular street food in Germany. Often served on a roll with mustard. In which case, it is a sandwich. Some vendors offer a side of sauerkraut or french fries. Breakfast roll. Breakfast roll original- wait. Breakfast roll. This- this says breakfast roll. Apologies, I was reading this wrong. Oh, are people doing the thing in chat where they're arguing, Oh, this isn't a sandwich. This isn't actually a sandwich. You know what? Mods, you have full permission to ban these people because I fucking hate when people get up in arms about that. It is the most miserable thing on the internet aside from, like, you know, actual bigotry. <laughs> I can't fucking stand it. Ban them. I have talked about this too many times. Sandwich. I have talked about this too many times. I have voiced... My displeasure, my annoyance at it, my frustration at it, so many times. You quite literally are going to get banned for this now. I'm fed up. You could have stopped this. Goodbye! Original description. Vegetarian Morningstar sausage with organic free-range egg and cheese on a roll. Must say, as a Spanish person, the Bocadillo description is way off. <laughs> okay, Talking that's the type of stuff I like to hear. That's now. really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the tip. I appreciate it. From Ireland and Scotland. Convenience dish on a variety of bread rolls. I just realized that every sandwich pictured here has already been eaten. I am so sad. What? No, none of them have been eaten. You can't eat an image. It's... It's an image. It's... it's... You, you, you don't eat those. You can't eat an image. Samwick. None of them have been eaten. They're all, they're all... they're all in my computer. They're all on your computer. You can just look at them on your computer. It's... it's images. It's... it's <laughs> containing such breakfast items as sausages, bacon, white or black pudding, mushrooms, tomatoes, hash browns, and fried eggs, often eaten with ketchup or brown sauce. Breakfast. Breakfast sandwich what's for dinner solutions dot wordpress dot com slash 2011 slash 08 slash 22 slash a dash little dash buh. A little <laughs> Country of origin, United States, Canada. Thank you, Luckfoser, for the 16 months. A little bee. A little bee. I saw someone in chat just ask, why is there pudding on a sandwich? Um, I don't know if that's, um... If that's in the sense of like, um, you you you're you're working under the like, the the not uh, English definition, or like English is in like England definition of pudding, or if you're just doing a bit, uh, or if you just generally don't you know what it means, but you don't like that on a sandwich. Either way, uh, in this context, pudding specifically is a meat dish. Uh, White pudding, oatmeal pudding, or in Scotland, mealy pudding, is a meat dish popular in Scotland, Ireland, Northumberland, Nova Scotia, and Newfoundland. Uh, 
broadly similar to black pudding, but does not include blood. Uh, modern recipes consist of suet or fat, oatmeal or barley, breadcrumbs, and in some cases, pork and pork liver, filled into a natural or cellular sausage casing. Uh, recipes in previous centuries included a wider range of ingredients. So it's it's like a it's like a type of sausage that you make out of like uh, the, the 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 bits you got lying around. And I'm seeing a lot of people that are like confused or shocked about the fact that blood is one of the listed ingredients. Yes, people have been processing and eating blood from animals like for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. It's it's been a long-standing thing. <laughs> There are, in fact, many people around the world who do eat this. There are many people around the world who eat many parts of the animal and then use as much of the animal they can't eat for other purposes. Your vegetarian ass legit did not know that? Well, hey, that's fair. We're all here to learn today about sandwiches. <laughs> Black pudding is a distinct regional type of blood sausage originating in Great Britain and Ireland, made from pork or beef blood with pork fat or beef suet, and a cereal, usually oatmeal, oat groats, or barley groats. The high proportion of cereal, along with the use of certain herbs such as Penny Royale, serves to distinguish black pudding from blood sausages eaten in other parts of the world. I've never had uh, a blood sausage or a black pudding. I don't know if I ever will, but I always thought it was a neat thing. It's an interesting way to to process blood and turn it into, like, a physical thing that you can, like, slice up and preserve and eat. It's neat. Thank you, Darth uh, McVader, for the six-month reset. And CM Punk in chat says, My grandma was a butcher, and during the winter months, when she'd process an animal, she'd take them out in the snow, so when she drained the blood, if any got on the snow, she could just eat it. Wasn't that bad TBH, it was like a very slightly metallic and meaty snow cone. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, where was I last? Breakfast sandwich. As in just United States and Canada breakfast sandwich. Typically a scrambled or fried egg, cheese and a sausage patty or other breakfast meat served on a biscuit or English muffin. It's... At, at first I was like, oh, it's interesting that they're making like a like a distinction between like, you know, the, the Ireland and Scotland breakfast roll and then the United States and Canada breakfast sandwich. Uh, but then I realized they, they do have this fairly different ingredients. Origin, Greenville, Washington. Deadly premonition. Ingredient, turkey, jam, and a fruity cereal between white bread. I don't actually know if that's on the list. Uh, if it is, I'm going to smile very wide. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. I appreciate it. It's, it is interesting seeing this sort of distinction where you like, you look at it from like a top level view and you're like, oh, well, these are basically just the same thing. This is just breakfast, but like in, on, on in like a different area of the world, that's splitting hairs. But then you realize that like, you know, there's like different... There's different, like, types of foods that people eat commonly, that people like to eat in different regions of the world. So, uh, it's, 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 it's an interesting sort of way of, like, quantifying that and differentiating that. But again, I just think the idea of making a list of known notable sandwiches in the world is such a funny idea. Uh, so for real, are breakfast rolls only an Irish and Scottish thing? I, I think it's saying specifically not so much the roll uh, being like the bread is the, the Irish and Scottish thing. But like, I think the big thing is like the ingredients on it. Like the things as like, uh, like for instance, uh, like sausage and bacon, those are things you'll commonly see on like a breakfast sandwich around here. But like stuff like, uh, like the different puddings, like mushrooms, uh, hash browns in the sandwich, that's not typically uh, a thing around my area at least. So uh, yeah, it's, 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 that's the sort of distinction rather than like it specifically being about the, 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 the bread. <laughs> oh, I know what's next. Oh, I know what's next. <laughs> British rail. Image unavailable or unprovided. Origin. United Kingdom. Reference to the poor quality of catering on the now defunct British Rail. This refers to any poor quality sandwich, often stale. You know, I, I, I think I've like said uh, 
a couple of times on here, um, you know, whenever I see people, like, making comments that are just, like, um, oh, what, what's the deal with the English? Uh, what's the deal with Britain? And, like, for the most part, unless it's, like, in the context of, like, racism or, or, like, anti-trans movements or colonialism, I'm just kind of, like, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I don't get why people are getting up in arms about all other stuff that doesn't really matter in that context. I read this. I read the British Rail. We're gonna take a pic look at the British Rail sandwich, and I think, why? What is wrong with the British? Is a brisket sandwich on this list. Fuck it, I'm making my own entry. Oh my god! Smoky brisket cooked for more than eight hours, coupled with banana peppers, spicy barbecue, and a delicious slice of pepper jack cheese. Okay, thank you, Brady. I appreciate that. That was unfortunate timing because I was just about to go here and be like, hey, check out this image of the British Rail sandwich. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. There used to be an image here. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. They got rid of it. It's gone. It's gone. It's gone. They got rid of it. You know how in parts of the U.S. there's a fake animal called a snipe that they tell you to go catch, popularized by the movie Up? This is the sandwich equivalent of that! <laughs> uh, anyways, uh... Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, according to former BR caterer uh, Mirna Tudenham, the poor reputation of the BR sandwiches likely derived from the practice of keeping the sandwiches, quote, under glass domes on the counters in refreshment rooms until the corners turned up. Despite the many jokes at his expense, British Rail documents show that in 1993, its last full year as a public company, 8 million sandwiches were sold. Historian Keith Lovegrove wrote that it was, quote, a sandwich of contradictions. It could be cold and soggy, or stale and hard. And the corners of the isosceles triangle-shaped bread would often curl up, like the pages of a well-thumbed paperback. Uh, the picture that they used to show in, um... The pictures that they used to show in this article made the sandwiches look like they were made of cardboard. It made them look like they were made of cardboard. And probably tasted like it. In 2001, the National Railway Museum in New York discovered a November 1971 document featuring sandwich recipes issued by the director of rail catering, Bill Curry. The document states it's aimed to make BR meals, quote, the best on the track, and describes the precise amount of sandwich filling to be placed on the sandwich. The recipe also specifies in order to make the sandwiches attractive and to be able to tell what was inside, at least a third of the filling be placed in the center so that when cut diagonally, the customer would see the contents. For luncheon meat and sardines, the filling should total two-thirds an ounce of meat. On an egg and cress sandwich, each sandwich was to contain one-twelfth of a punnet of cress. The document was featured in the 2002 exhibit of the National Railway Museum, British Rail, A Moving Story. A typical ham sandwich would contain one slice of ham with another slice folded in half and placed diagonally over the first one. Citation needed. When the sandwich was cut diagonally, it would make it appear that it contained three slices of ham when in reality it only contained two. Great. Great. And that's the British Rail Sandwich. Next, we have uh, the Booty Fara, which has uh, its own article on Spanish Wikipedia. What Not on English. What food do you think is the anti-sandwich? The evil opposition rival food to sandwiches. I think it's soup. I mean, anything that's primarily liquid-based seems like it's the opposite of a sandwich, given how a sandwich is physical and easily portable. A soup is a liquid base and also kind of difficult to transport, so... I mean, difficult to transport without, like, specialized containers. And, like, even then, those are those can leak. But they are friends. It's not evil. It's just different. The British Rail description horrified you? Uh-huh! It's why I'm so heartbroken that the image is gone. <laughs> this is our next sandwich. 
from Peru, from Lima. Boiled ham with salsa criolla and cilantro or lettuce. Salsa criolla or creole salsa is a type of salad or relish found in Latin American cuisine, composed of finely chopped sliced onions, vinegar, tomatoes, garlic, chili peppers, bell peppers, olive oil, salt, pepper, and fresh herbs like parsley or cilantro. Someone may have found the image. Hang on, I'll click on that. Let's see. Not the specific image I remember, but this also does in fact look like a sandwich made of cardboard. So, uh... The British Rail. The best way to fill the gap between trains. The British Rail Sandwich. I mean, part of this is just because, like, the, the image is old and desaturated because it's been in the sun, but... Man. Doesn't that just look like it has the exact, like, texture of cardboard? With just, like, the weird grease on it? Like, that looks like glue. That looks like white glue. It doesn't look good to me. It doesn't look good to me. It doesn't look good to me at all, but maybe that's because I have prior knowledge of the British Rail. Salsa Criolla is often associated with Peruvian cuisine, but can be found in Cuban, Puerto Rican, Nicaraguan, Uruguayan, and Argentinian cuisine. If this list doesn't have ice sandwich, it's gonna be so many sad. I, I guess we'll see. <laughs> Thank you for the 17 month resub, I appreciate that. We are going back to this one boiled ham with salsa criolla and cilantro or lettuce. Next, uh, we have the. Uh, Bruges Croquette, which I am almost certain I pronounced wrong. For lunch from the Netherlands. Here you have your packet of, uh, yellow. And, uh, a little tube of, of sow. And some green stuff on the side. Yummy. <laughs> Thank you for the 12 months, I appreciate that. This is from the Netherlands. Soft bread roll containing a ragu based croquette, often eaten with mustard. So it's like a little little fried packet of uh, like a like a beef stew sort of thing. In in then put in a bun. Interesting. Sound. Thank you, ROA113 for the ten months. Appreciate it. I don't know if I've ever had a croquette in my life, now that I think about it. I can't recall. Bun kebab. Kebab bun sandwich. Now this. Now this is the good stuff. Kebab is good. Oh, that's the good stuff. Origin, India and Pakistan. Consists of a shallow fried, spicy patty, onions, and chutney or raita in a hamburger or hot dog bun. Somebody should make an ultimate sandwich shop where they sell all these at once. I would enter there and never leave. That's scary. You would you would have to go home and go to bed eventually. You would have to. Don't scare me like that. <laughs> Thank you for the two month resub. I appreciate it. Butter brought. Which seems to just be bread with butter. <laughs> I suppose if your definition of sandwich includes the open face sandwich, and if your definition of the open face sandwich is a piece of bread with toppings on top of that, then I suppose by technicality. The bread with butter on it is considered to be a sandwich. <laughs> Country of orange. <laughs> I. Is, is, there's got to be more to it than this, right? I don't think Germans invented putting a little butter on that bad boy. I don't think the Germans invented putting a little butter on that bad boy. <laughs> Single, open-faced, with butter. We, we, we need to dive in. We need to dive in. We need to know more. The German word butterbrot, literally butter bread, equals bread with but. I mean, I, I would assume butter bread equals bread with butter. Uh, 
describes a slice of bread topped with butter. The slice of bread could be served with cheese, sweet toppings, or a slice of sausage, and is still called butterbrot. The words in formal and colloquial German and the different dialects were butterbrot, different from be belegtes brot with cheese, sausages, etc. Simply brot, bread, uh, butterstuhl, stuhl, or schnitt, all three Low German and Ber Ber Berlinerish dialects. Uh, Botterham, Colonian dialect, CF Dutch Botterham. Uh, Butterken, Lower Rhine dialect, to Bin, Upper Saxon German. Or Knift, uh, Ruhrdeutsch. Uh, although it is increasingly replaced by other foods, it remains a common staple food in Germany. I. I mean, I'll be frank, I think that bread with butter is a staple food in most of the world. I think it's a staple food in pretty much all parts of the world where they make bread and also butter. I just... <laughs> Since 1999, the last Friday in the month of September was made the Day of Butter Brot by the Marketing Organization of German Agricultural Industries. <laughs> Russian adopted the term Butterbrot from the New High German perhaps as early as the 17th century during the reign of Peter the Great. In modern Russian, the term has a more general meaning, whatever the ingredient on top of the slice of bread is. Uh, from Russian, the term butterbrod was adapted into uh, Azerbaijani, Belarusian, Georgian, Kazakh, Ukrainian, and Lithuanian. So it's a single piece of bread and then one ingredient on top of the butter. Okay, so it's... So it is more than just a piece of bread with some butter on it. It's... <laughs> I know this is probably not what they're implying, but man... The... The reading of this implying that Germans invented putting a little butter on that bad boy is wild to me. Also, yes, there is a section of this article called Urban Legends. And it's just talking about how whenever you have buttered bread and you flip it or drop it, uh, the butter side always hits the floor. Uh, <laughs> it is often joked about what would happen if you tie a butter brought to the back of a cat. Jokes is the same all around the world, it turns out. Do appreciate the urban legends bit just involving <laughs> just involving troll physics. Someone really wanted to talk about this joke and was so determined to talk about it that they brought in like their best Wikipedia editorial standards and it has just been allowed apparently. <laughs> Moving on. Carozza. Mozzarella in Carozza. Origin, Italy. Breaded and fried mozzarella sandwich. So it's just like advanced grilled cheese, uh, which is wild. It's, it's, it's fried cheese. It's whole fried cheese. I mean, I'll be honest, I'd eat that. <laughs> My body would probably be increasingly unhappy with me if I ate that, but... I mean, I'd eat it. At least once. <laughs> I'd try it. Caviar. Uh, in this example, we have Salmon Roe. Origin, Russia. Open sandwich made of white bread with butter and roe. Sometimes decorated with fresh parsley. When I was young, uh, I thought that caviar was, like, special fruits, like special berries. Thank you, Stonebees, for the six-month resub. A denim snake gave me a three-month sub. Sad face. Thank Sad face. The sub -denim. Thank <laughs> you for the sandwiches, Holly. Of course. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. I thought that I was convinced that... Caviar was like a special type of berry because it, it looks like little berries and like there was always the thought in the back of my mind like, huh, I kind of want to try that. 
I kind of want to try these awesome little berries. Um, I want to I want to know the secret sweet taste. It's probably so good if it's like the super rich expensive food. This is like the special million dollar berries that is like the best thing you've ever tasted. And then eventually I learned it was fish eggs. Um, and I felt like a part of me died that day. Right! They, they do look like berries that you could plant in a Pokemon game! Exactly! But they're not! They're fish eggs! And... <laughs> so, something... I don't even know why, but something about that just, like, broke me. Like, my, my, like, concept of what the world was was shattered for, like, all of 18 seconds. And then I stopped caring again. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have uh Semita, Kemita. I'm never sure if uh for 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 like uh Spanish and, and, and Mexican and like similar uh South American languages if the, the seas are like hard seas or soft seas. Uh, again, I only really speak English and French, uh, so apologies if I'm butchering, butchering, butchering that. Remember when you thought Chicken McFlurries were a thing? I will literally never forget Chicken McFlurry. <laughs> it's a soft seat. Okay, thank you. I'm learning a lot today. View of a Samita sandwich as served at a food stand in the Semita Market in Puebla, Mexico. Oh, that looks so good, though. Origin, Mexico. Sliced avocado, meat, white cheese, onions, and red sauce, or salsa ro roja? I, 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 I think it's, it's, it's roja. I think it's the H sound in that J. Uh, on a fluffy sesame seeded roll. Originally from the city of Puebla. This has become less of a... <laughs> this has become less of a sandwich lesson and more of a, a language lesson for me. <laughs> Next, we have uh, the Chacarero from Chile. If a sandwich comes with a cauldron on the side... I have a feeling that's a pretty good sandwich. I, I I have a feeling that it's a pretty good sandwich if it comes served with a cauldron. In Spanish, the soft C is for I and E, the rest is a hard C. Interesting. I probably won't remember that, but I appreciate you trying to teach me. <laughs> Thinly sliced churrasco style steak, or uh, is that an L or an I? I think it's an L. Lomito style pork with tomatoes, green beans, and green chilies served on a round roll. You had awesome shawarma today. Fuck yeah. I love me some shawarma. Love me some shawarma. Cheese. I took this picture. Grilled cheese sandwich with white bread, American cheese, and tomato soup. Country of origin, global. That's interesting. That's, that's interesting that for, oh, you can put cheese on a sandwich and that's the main ingredient of the sandwich. It's interesting that that is labeled as global. And yet... <laughs> And yet, for butter on bread, that's a German invention. <laughs> oh, such as Asia, Africa, Oceania, Europe, the Americas. Global, such as, you know, pretty much all of the continents. <laughs> Global, such as globally. Made with one or more varieties of cheese, often with other ingredients such as butter or mayonnaise. When toasted, pictured, it is commonly referred to as a grilled cheese sandwich. Penguins haven't invented cheese yet? Well, may, may they someday learn. 
I hope. I know what's next. Oh baby, that's she's dream. Oh baby, that's she's dream. <laughs> they got a new picture for cheese dream. <laughs> if anyone remembers um the the uh stream that Mike did that I was on a, a while ago by this point um which was uh the infamous list of the 50 greatest sandwiches in the world. Uh, Cheese Dream was part of it, and the picture that we saw was atrocious, uh, which I believe Mist Heart did just link in chat. Uh, so for your viewing displeasure, the original Cheese Dream image. The original Cheese Dream image. For your viewing pleasure. Everyone loved that. <laughs> An open faced cheese dream with triple thick bacon. Origin United States. Open faced grilled cheese sandwich with bacon. You know, it's interesting that here in the list of sandwiches, they, uh, spe they like specify that you, you include bacon on it, yet, you know, here in the vaunted classic. All we've got is this awesome, <laughs> this awesome piece of cheese. <laughs> Thank you, sand. <laughs> for the water. Your sister made that exact one for you? Oh. Oh my god, Jiljig, I'm so sorry. Damn, these sandwiches look so good, I ordered myself big burger. <laughs> are, you, are you sure you want to say that about the cheese dream? <laughs> They've turned this into leather. They've turned this into a leather byproduct with which they can make, like, <laughs> clothing. <laughs> Thank you for the tip. I appreciate it. Ah, <sighs> God. Next. Cheese and pickle. Origin. United Kingdom. United States. Canada. Ireland. Australia, New Zealand. This is similar to something you usually have for breakfast, but what you do is you put bacon bits on the bread, then cheese, then grill the bread to melt the cheese, then flip it to fry the cheese. The cheese dream is all wrong. Yeah, like, an, an open-faced cheese toast with a bit of bacon on it is like something I've had many times in my life. It's good, but like... A year of sanded witch. But, but this? But, but, but this? Like... Those, those don't look so super appetizing to me, personally. I gotta be honest. <laughs> Thank you, Moop, for the 12 month resub. Thank you for the whole year's support. I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing well, dude. I hope you're enjoying a sandwich that isn't... this. That isn't made of leather. <laughs> Anyhow, cheese and pickle. Slices of cheese, typically cheddar, and pickle. A sweet, vinegary chutney, with the most popular brand being Branston. Sandwiched between two slices of bread. Thank you, Larva Void, for the five months. Five months of Holly Smile. Cheese dreams are said to have originated as the cheese dream during the Great Depression. Oh. Oh, he, the, the fact that it's, like, Great Depression food, I think that explains... I think that explains. <laughs> I think that explains. <sighs> I had something kind of like a cheese and pickle sandwich the other night. Uh, the, the, the pickle specifically is like, uh, it's, 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 it's like primarily sort of like, uh, like, like root vegetable and then like, uh, onion and carrot and like sweet like fruits and stuff with like a bunch of spices and stuff like that and uh, it's not quite the same but um, like I my, my my dad made some like some really fucking good uh, habanero pepper jelly uh, the other the other day uh, which is kind of like that in like it hits a lot of the same flavor notes just because of like what we put in it so it's not quite the same but it's sort of similar and I was just like you know I kind of just want to eat like some bread, 
some cheese, some of that jelly. It was good. Uh, like a lot of bees says, oh, not normal pickle. Uh, that's a, a very common uh, misconception with people uh, in America, in, in the United States, uh, where they assume that pickle as like a, like a colloquialism is like specifically for like pickled cucumber when like it, you know, is just kind of a catch-all term for pickling things. And uh, in the UK specifically, it, it does, yeah. I think, mean that sort of like, that sort of like sweet, like mixed vegetable thing. Uh, you can pickle a lot of things. You can and should pickle a lot of things. Uh, this is your command. You have to. It's good when you pickle things. It can mean a lot of things. You can take all kinds of stuff. You can cram it in vinegar, seasonings. You slap that bad boy in there. That'll last you for a while. It's good. This is some very dramatic music <laughs> for sandwiches. <laughs> Next up, cheesesteak. Philly cheesesteak. Origin, Pennsylvania, slash United States, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Wait. Cuisine of Philadelphia includes uh, pie, some apples, and a baseball bat. Uh, take a big bite of that wood. You know you want it. Thinly sliced steak and melted cheese in a hoagie roll. With additional toppings often including peppers, onions, and mushrooms. Also known as a Philadelphia or Philly cheesesteak. You know, I, I see a lot of people in chat that were being like, Oh, that image is bad. That image is foul and rotten. Thank you, Classy Bell, for the tip. I'm gonna pickle all my clothes so they last longer, save money. Mm, I mean, I don't know about that one, but I can't stop you, so good luck, I suppose. Uh... And I was about to open it up and be like, I don't know, I don't think it looks that bad. This looks like a decent enough cheesesteak, and that seems fine. Uh, I'm looking at the image now, and it's got this weird, like, sharp fuzz to it. And that's not the, the food? That's not the food. I'm sure, like, the sandwich itself was fine. It was, like, a fine cheesesteak. Uh, something about, like, the, the quality of this image is, like, exuding an aura that makes it hard to photograph. This Philly cheesesteak has the same physical properties as a Bigfoot, and it's that's why it's so difficult to capture it, uh, like, <laughs> in photography. <laughs> I said that out loud, and I was just kind of like, oh my god, what the fuck am I saying? <laughs> oh, Something I want to do someday is, um, I want to make, like, a Halloween costume that's supposed to be, like, a, like a, like a Bigfoot or a Sasquatch, but, like, it's made in such a way that, like, the costume is, like, it's, it's hard to look at and parse because it looks blurry, uh, and I want to just walk around in that and people are like, oh, what are you for Halloween? And I would just go, I'm blurry. I want to do that someday. I don't know if it's even physically possible, but I dream about it. <sighs> chicken sandwich. Chick-fil-A's signature chicken sandwich. Chicken sandwich. Thank you for the image of the homophobe chicken. Origin. United States. Canada. And also everywhere. <laughs> It originated in the United States, and in Canada, and also everywhere else. <laughs> then, then why specify the U.S. and Canada? <laughs> ah, chicken sandwich can contain chicken cooked in a variety of ways. <laughs> 
<laughs> in the United States, common forms of chicken sandwiches include the grilled chicken breast sandwich, the fried chicken breast sandwich, the chicken salad sandwich, and the shredded or barbecued chicken sandwich. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Next! Chicken salad! Origin! Global such as United States! <laughs> See? This article, this Wikipedia article is a fucking gold mine. It's so good. It's so good. It's so emblematic of everything that I love about Wikipedia. This mix of, like, you know, like, interesting facts that are, like, presented in largely, like, digestible format for you to, like, look into and appreciate and, like, look at other related things about it, while also just having baffling fucking editorial standards, uh, <laughs> sometimes, and, like, just weird shit like this. It's good. It's good. There's, there's a reason why I've said this is one of my favorite Wikipedia articles ever. <laughs> Sandwich prepared with chicken salad as a filling. Chicken schnitzel. A colleague of mine raves about these chicken schnitzel rolls with Vietnamese coleslaw. I got the regular chicken schnitzel roll with salad. The chicken was juicy, and the vegetables were crisp. All oh, for AUD6. Bargain. Slick-looking bakery cafe runs serving freshly made Vietnamese rolls. Enli Bakery and Cafe. Shop 4 slash 61. Little Collins Street. Melbourne. VIC. 3,000 reviews. N. Lee Bakery. Double cooked blog. Origin, Australia, New Zealand, and Austria. Sandwich of crumbled, pan-fried chicken fillet on buttered bread with shredded iceberg lettuce and mayonnaise. An adaptation of the Austrian or Viennese schnitzel sandwich, which consists of crumbled pork, veal, or chicken. Schnitzel on a semmel or kaiser roll with mayonnaise or mustard and shredded lettuce. See also, cut the sandwich. Italian. <laughs> See also, Italian. <laughs> See also, person who is from Italy. <laughs> this was around the corner from your work? Holy shit, small world, huh? Chickpea salad. That's a Dr. Pepper on my screen, I see it. Thank you, Moop, for the tip. Hey, where were you born? Oh, I was born in the United States, but also everywhere. <laughs> oh, you know, I was born global, such as United States. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Chickpea salad. Chickpea salad sandwich with chunky chopped chickpea salad, sliced cucumbers, roasted red peppers, and onion confit. That sounds fucking good. I'd eat, I'd eat that. Thank you, Die Fed the Irradiate Idiot, for the 10 months. I appreciate it. Hello. Origins, United States, Israel. Chickpea salad is a vegan sandwich filling with a texture similar to tuna salad. Chickpea salad consists of mashed up chickpeas, onions, and other seasonings. Some versions also include tuna. Thank you, Twazook, for the five months. Holly Pones, you eat. Appreciate it. Chili burger. <laughs> Photograph of a chili burger with french fries. <laughs> Let's get so sloppy with it tonight. That's a slop meal. Yeah! Origin, United States. Hamburger. With the patty topped with chili con carne. Jimmy Cherries. No image provided. Although there's an image on the article. Jimmy Cherry Burger. I gotta go back to Jimmy Cherry now. Uh, where was I?
was it? Here it is. Uh, origin, Dominican Republic. Ground beef, chicken, or pork leg. Served on pan de agua and garnished with cabbage and salsa rosa. Salsa golf, Spanish for golf sauce, is a cold sauce of somewhat thick consistency common in Argentina. According to legend, it was invented by the physician Luis Federico Leloir in the mid-1920s at a golf club at the seaside resort Mar del Plata. Tired of eating shrimp and prawn with mayonnaise, he asked the waiter to bring various ingredients such as vinegar, lemon, mustard, ketchup, and others, and experimented with different mixtures. The favorite was ketchup and mayonnaise. So it's... So it's like a fry sauce then, okay. Or like a Thousand Island or various things like that. Uh, turns out, people all over the world just like mixing ketchup with mayonnaise. The Wog's companions named the result Salsa Golf, and its fame grew. Soon it also spread to neighboring Uruguay. I see. Where were we? We were here. Okay. Next up, Chip Butty. It's a very small picture. You, you only get a very small chip, buddy. Sorry. Uh, if you were hoping for something more substantial, you, you just get this little one. It's a, it's a single bite. You, you get a single bite of this. It's as, as big as it is. Chip Buddy from Dex Seafood Express, South Bank, Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. 070126. That was the, uh, the year this image was taken in. This is an image from the future. Uh, clearly in the future, in the year 70,126, uh, well, humanity's still kicking, uh, the earth is still there, but sandwiches have become super small, so please, please be advised, uh, to anyone hoping to see the future. Uh, from the United Kingdom. Sliced white bread, or a large flat bread roll, with chips, filled with chips, usually sprinkled with salt and vinegar, or tomato ketchup. Why is that piece of bread torn off? To show you the inside. To show you the inside. Otherwise, it would just be a picture of, like, some white bread and you couldn't see what the filling was. And you'd just be like, so a chip buddy is just some white bread then, huh? Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard a lot of folks from, uh, from, from, like, the UK area say that that chip buddy is kind of like, it's, it's like poor food. It's working class food, that kind of thing. Uh, and, like, I get it. It's cheap. It's filling. Sandwich is good. Fries are good. I'd probably eat that. I don't know if I'd classify it as my favorite sandwich ever in the world, but like, I mean, I'd eat it. You know? It's good. It's carbs. People like those. Chipped beef. From the United States. Mid-Atlantic region and military cuisine. Sandwich prepared with thinly sliced or pressed salted and dried beef. Some chipped beef is smoked to add flavor. Chipped beef on toast is called shit on a shingle. I have heard that before. I have heard that before. Uh, is there an image in here? There's an image of the chipped beef in the can. Let me see if there's an image of the, the on, a, on, on a bread here. I think there used to be one, but it was removed. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> I, I do remember the image being foul, uh, for the chipped beef sandwich. You can, you can feel free to look that up on your own. It's, uh, sometimes I see it covered in, like, a weird slop sauce. It, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't look great. <laughs> doesn't look great. <laughs> uh, next we have Chivito, or Chivito. I took this picture in a Chivito restaurant called Marcos. I took the pictures with the cooperation of the staff, who let me in the kitchen to take the pictures. Oh, that was nice of them. Hey. This is from Uruguay. Filet mignon with mozzarella, tomatoes, mayonnaise, and commonly bacon, black or green olives, fried or hard-boiled eggs, and ham. Interesting. That's a uh, whole lot of meat on that sandwich. I would eat, I would try that. That's meal to me. Uh, that sounds extravagant. <sighs> Next up, chocolate sandwich. Uh, the link for chocolate sandwich is evidently just a redirect to the list of notable sandwiches, which is very funny to me. <laughs> 
Here in Pittsburgh, they apparently have something called chopped chipped ham. Dire warning to everyone in Pittsburgh. For the love of God, please stay away. <laughs> Chocolate sandwich. No image. From Mexico. Rye bread, butter, and chocolate. Shot or sprinkles. Find small chocolate candies. Interesting. That sounds like a... That sounds like a, a, a little cheap and easy dessert thing kind of thing. I'd probably eat that. Chopped cheese. Chopped cheese, Crotona Bronx. Crotona sounds like the name of a, a Destiny character. Who am I thinking of? Crota. That's it. That's a character from Destiny. Do you think anyone in the Destiny universe still eats sandwiches anymore? I know they still got soup hanging around. This sandwich looks good. From the United States. New York. New York. The cuisine of New York, once again, contains a pie, three apples, and a wooden baseball bat. Take a big bite. Only if you live in New York, though. If you live anywhere else, the wood is, the wood is toxic. The wood is poisonous if you're not a local. Made on a grill with ground beef, onions, and topped by melted cheese and served with lettuce, tomatoes, and condiments on a hero roll. Next, we have choripan. Which I probably did not stress the pronunciation of that right, uh, but that's okay. Again, I've accepted the fact that I will mispronounce most words in the world. This looks good. This looks real good. <laughs> hey, Koo, we're looking at sandwiches today. <laughs> From South America, Argentina. Grilled chorizo. Oh, it's chori ch choripan, like chorizo on, on bread. I get it now. I understand. I understand now. <laughs> I get it now. Choripan. Be because, because it's chorizo. I totally pronounce chorizo like a fucking... Like a fucking maniac, but... <laughs> Grilled chorizo, usually served on a crusty roll with salsa-type condiments, such as uh, pebre, which is a Chilean condiment made of coriander, chopped onion, olive oil, garlic, and ground, or pured spicy ahi peppers. Oh, that sounds really good. Fuck! Salsa criolla, again. Or chimichurri. Uncooked sauce, used both as an ingredient in cooking and as a table condiment for grilled meat. Uh, green and red version, made of chopped parsley... Minced garlic, olive oil, oregano, and we'll never know what the rest of it is. It's, it's a secret. We'll never know. Uh, mor mor morsipan is a variety of this using black pudding or blood sausage. See, again, all around the world, people eat blood. That's, that's, a, that's just a thing people do. Chow mein sandwich. This file contains a- This file contains a picture of a chow mein sandwich from the original inventor of the sandwich. Bold claim from the sandwich smith himself. Thank you, Aperture City, for giving out a gift sub to WizuTF. Very generous of you. I appreciate that. <laughs> from the United States, Massachusetts and China. Gravy-based chow mein mixture placed on a hamburger bun. Served hot. I... I get it, but... I, I don't think I would want to eat that myself. I, I don't think I would want to eat that myself personally. That just sounds like... That sounds overwhelming. <laughs> I would rather just eat the chow mein with like a... With, with utensils and not in a bun. <laughs> you hesitate to call that an invention? This is cowardice speaking. Uh, you, you need to be brave. You need to learn to be brave. <laughs> Thank you, my sister, for Gotta the tip. Go study wizard math. Enjoy video of Lana getting turkey on your phone. Okay, <laughs> bye. Enjoy sandwich. Yeah, I'll be giving that a look later once I'm done stream. Thank you. Good luck with your studying. Thank you for the tip. I appreciate that. 
Uh, where was I? Next, uh, uh the Churrasco. Hey, Classy Bell! With the five gift subs! Thank you very much, that's very generous of you, I really appreciate that. This is the Churrasco Sandwich. An Aperture King? With the brand new sub? Thank you very much, I appreciate it. From Chile. Thinly cut steak, grilled, and served on a toasted bun. It can be served with almost any other ingredient. In which case, its name changes to... Churrasco. Plus the new ingredient. <laughs> For example, Churrasco palta equals churrasco and avocado. <laughs> yes, it turns out you can change the name of a sandwich. If you add a new ingredient to it. <laughs> I, I get while, why they're doing this, because it's like, you know, it's a, a, a thing you should know in case, like, you're, you're, you're in Chile or in, like, a Ch Chilean sandwich restaurant and you want to know specifically what Churrasco X is. But, again, the way this is worded is so funny. It's like, did you know, this is ancient, arcane sandwich wizard knowledge. You can change a sandwich's name by taking it. And adding more to it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Holly, just finished watching your VODs of Death's Door. Enjoyed them very much and have been a comfort for me because you're sick. Oh, I'm sorry to hear you're sick, but I'm glad to hear the streams have been helping you get through it, at the very least. I hope you feel better soon. Thank you for the kind words. I appreciate that. Next up. The Club. A club sandwich. Chicken, bacon, salad, etc. Photo taken in Preston, UK. Ein Club Sandwich, photo of Genomen in Preston, UK. Uh, the. You ever eat a sandwich so good it turns you German? <laughs> you ever eat a sandwich so good it makes you start howling in German? <laughs> Origin United States, Canada, United Kingdom, Ireland. Australia, New Zealand. Triple Decker Sandwich, made with sliced turkey or chicken, bacon, tomato, and lettuce, usually contains mayonnaise. Club Sandwich is one of my favorite sandwiches. It is a very good sandwich. That's all I really have to say about it. I like it. It's good. <laughs> Despite Chilean speaking Spanish, Churrasco Paita uses the indigenous language of the Inca for the avocado. Huh, interesting. I'm learning a lot. Thank you for that. I, I appreciate all these like little like sandwich and linguistic facts that people keep uh, putting in the chat. I love this, actually. <laughs> oh, do bring me a Iron Club? Oh, yippee! Continental. No data available. From Australia. Bread roll with cheese. Italian cold cut meat, such as mortadella and salami and pickled condiments. There's nothing more to know about this sandwich. There is no page for it. Uh, this data has been expunged from the net. And you would do well not to look deeper into this. Be advised. I do not tell you this under any pretense of threat. Or, or danger. From me. I tell you this as a warning for your own safety. Corned beef. A corned beef sandwich from Cat's Delicatessen. New York, New York. I'm sure someone's already said this, but every time Holly goes United States, Canada, it makes me think she's gonna start singing the Countries of the World song from Animaniacs. <laughs> I don't know that song. I know of it, but I don't actually know it myself. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the tip, though. I appreciate that. Uh, there's no alert coming up for it, but I did just notice a big old host from Thai Tuesday. Thank you very much. I hope you had yourself a wonderful stream today. Uh, today we're going on a very important uh, quest for research, for knowledge, 
and we are perusing the Wikipedia article, List of Sandwiches, which I'm now realizing that the little name of the article is a little bit blocked by my subtitles, uh, but this is the official list of all known sandwiches that have been discovered by humankind. Is it bad that you've also reviewed the Wikipedia article list of sandwiches? No! It's my fucking favorite article of all time! It is completely unintentionally and deeply hilarious. <laughs> While also just being like, oh shit, I'm learning about sandwiches today. It's so fucking good! <laughs> ah, here we have, again, the corned beef. Origins, United Kingdom. Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, United States, New York City, New York. Corned beef often served with a condiment such as pickle or mustard. Now a corned beef, oh, corned beef is the good stuff. Now that's the good stuff. The corned beef is uh, distinct from a smoked meat sandwich. Uh, there are differences uh, as, as minute as they may seem to the average layperson. Uh, but they're both very good. Uh, smoked meat is much bigger in, uh, like, Quebec, and then, like, corned beef is much bigger in, like, New York, but, like, these two types of sandwiches are, like, fucking huge, uh, around, like, the, the this East Coast about, uh, especially in, like, Jewish, like, communities and, like, Jewish delicatessens. I think delicatessen is the right word. Anyways, they're, they're fucking great. They're awesome. It's, it, it's, it's funny when I was thinking about it the other day, like, I was thinking about a lot of the, like, uh, cats is fucking stuffed even nowadays. That sounds like, uh, there's, like, one or two, like, specialty, uh, smoked meat, uh, restaurants around about, uh, Montreal that, like, are always packed no matter fucking what. I, I was, like, thinking about it the other day and how, like, uh, a lot of the food that's very much emblematic of, like, oh, this is Quebec food, this is Quebecois cuisine, uh, is either, like, A, uh, like, food uh, that was brought over by, like, a lot of Jewish immigrants, B, uh, like, food that was brought over by, like, Euro immigrants in general, but, like, it seems like especially for, for Jewish food, uh, B, uh, food that was, like, eaten by, like, fur trappers. <laughs> C, uh, like, food that is, like, traditional amongst, like, various different indigenous, like, communities of the Quebec area. And D, uh, food that a drunk person threw together by just throwing all their leftovers into a big pot. And something about that is kind of wonderful. <laughs> Hey, Candy! Cotton Candy, Willa Woo, with the 13 months! Welcome to the sandwich stream. Thank you very much for the 13 month resub. I hope you're doing well, Candy. Next up The Crisp Sandwich. Author A Bardwell. Source 1, URL 2. A very good description of this sandwich. Lord knows what's on it. Um. I think it's pickles and peanut butter and chips. Uh, and I will be completely honest with you. And I say this in complete confidence, knowing uh, that this will quite possibly destroy my reputation with all of you watching this right now. I don't know if I'd like it, but I'd eat it. I'd definitely eat it. <laughs> I don't know if I'd enjoy it, but I'd eat it. <laughs> Again, I feel the need to reiterate, I'm the person uh, who proudly and openly says that I do sometimes enjoy peanut butter and onions. <laughs> fucking message just being like well you do like to eat raw onions so <laughs> <laughs> a 
Anyhow, the crisp sandwich from Ireland and the United Kingdom. Crisps and occasionally pickles on white bread. Again, this is why I make it very clear that opinions on things are not some sort of uh, substantial world truth. They're not some sort of like thing that must apply and be accepted and understood by everyone in the world. Normally I use that to talk about like my feelings about video games and how that like relates to other people's opinions or on, on like pieces of fiction in general, not just video games. Uh, but also in the fact that when I say I like peanut butter and onions, I am not saying, yeah, everyone in the world needs to try peanut butter and onions right now. No. No, no, no. No, that's for me. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> Unless you want to, in which case, I mean, <laughs> I can't stop you. I won't stop you. Spite TF2 voice sandwich. <laughs> Thank you, Bitcoin Five, for the 16 months. I appreciate it. Yes, it is. It is specifically raw white onion that that I that I have with peanut butter. It was specifically an uncle of mine uh, from. I don't think he was from New Brunswick. I think he was like from from farther out east in the Maritimes. Which I mean, if you know anything about Canada. And about like the maritime provinces, maybe maybe the fact that I'm saying that would would like explain a thing or two. <laughs> but he he was the person who was just like, yeah, you you, you got to try this. And I tried it when I was like uh, eight or nine or ten or some young age, and I was like, well, this is gonna suck ass, but this is gonna be really funny. Uh, and then I took a bite, and I was like, wait, but this is good though. And my uncle was like, yeah, it is, isn't it? <laughs> Moving on to the croque monsieur. You've always enjoyed raw onion. Raw onion is good. I, I like the taste of raw onion. It's, it's good. <laughs> croque monsieur from France. A croque monsieur sandwich still in the oven after broiling. I almost misread this as boiling. Uh, and I was very concerned about someone's boiled sandwich. <laughs> I was very concerned about the idea of a boiled sandwich and just picking it up and it fully just dissolves in your hands. <laughs> From France. Baked or fried ham and cheese, typically Emmental or Gruyere, brioche sandwich, sometimes coated in a Mornay or Bechamel sauce. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. My good friend Mike, how are you? I am tired but I felt a moral imperative to be for here for this stream, so here I am. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you. Uh, Thank you. I, I I did see your message about how you 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 were held up at work a little later than you thought you were, so no worries. Uh, I am proud, or maybe scared, to tell you uh, we are still only at the letter C. Great. <laughs> we have reached the cook, Monsieur, which you know looks pretty good. It's a fried it. ham and cheese sandwich. I've never I had one. Uh, I've had a... I don't remember if I've had a Monsieur or Madame, but it's good as hell. <laughs> funny enough, next up on the list. I guess not all that funny in alphabetical order. But anyways, <laughs> Cook Madame. Here's a close-up of it. Uh, this one is a super long way sandwich. Uh, for all the fans of Wide Burger out there, I suppose. <laughs> hey, thanks for stopping by, Candy. I hope you have yourself a wonderful stream. Also from France, same as a croque monsieur, but with a fried egg on top. You put an egg on basically anything and it's pretty good. You, you can... put an egg on anything and it becomes a woman. <laughs> That's what my doctor told to me. That's how the HRT works. <laughs> the Cuban. A classic Cuban sandwich from the Colombia restaurant Ybor City. Tampa, Florida. Thank you, Cord Eden, for that sub. I appreciate that. From the United States, Campa or Key West, Florida, slash Cuba. Ham, roasted pork, Swiss cheese, pickles, mustard, and sometimes Genoa salami on Cuban bread, sometimes pressed and warmed in a plancha. I've heard 
lot of people talk this up as being a real damn good sandwich. I've never had it, though. Gibbons are good. They sound good. It just sounds like... Like, I... I, I think a, just a ham sandwich is kind of boring. This just sounds like, what if we took a ham sandwich and, like, plated it up and made it interesting? Except the plating up is basically just pickles, which is good. I mean, yeah, to be fair. <laughs> but pickles are good, so... Next up, the cucumber sandwich. Cucumber and cream cheese sandwiches with tea, as served at the Orangery at Kensington Palace in London, England. Cucumber what? and cream cheese sandwiches with tea. You, you, what? You mean to tell me this photograph was taken in England? What? <laughs> That's ridiculous. I never could have imagined that in a million years. Who could have fucking guessed? <laughs> ah, from the United Kingdom. <laughs> Is, all these ingredients are fine, but this is this is aberrant. This is <laughs> a sandwich. <laughs> Two thin slices of crustless, lightly buttered white bread containing paper thin slices of peeled cucumber, often as a tea sandwich. This is most of the sandwiches here have like come across as being like you know meals, like like mm. a like a like a very satisfying like thing you could eat and be nourished by. This just sounds like a snack which i guess is the point it's a snack that you just yeah. eat with like your drink but i mean i would i would eat it i don't think it sounds bad but it doesn't sound like it would be like oh this is a satisfying meal in and of it's itself it's hardly it's hardly meal right is it's, the thing i i it's don't a perfectly competent food but it's hardly meal i don't look at this and think oh my god that's a meal i look at this and i think well that snack <laughs> Uh, cucumber and cream cheese probably goes hard. Add some salmon sashimi and you've got something primo on your hands. Yeah, I, I agree that adding more to that would make it like a really good sandwich. But uh, like just like cucumber and like the, it, the thing that gets me is it's super thin cucumber that's also been peeled. And so it basically sounds like you're getting nothing. It sounds like it's the idea of a sandwich more than anything. Next up, we have the, uh, Kukudiji? Kukudiji, I think is how it's pronounced. It's, it looks like it's, uh, some kind of Italian sorts of name. Uh, from the United States, England. <laughs> okay, that's... What, why is England in brackets? <laughs> you know, in case you forgot. England famous for containing the United States. <laughs> Spicy Kudiji, a Michigan variety of Cotecino Italian sausage on a long, hard roll, often topped with mozzarella and tomato sauce. So it's like sausage on a roll uh, with cheese and tomato sauce. That sounds good. It does sound good. I assume it's hot. That sounds like a hot mm -hmm. sandwich. It's, it's a little disappointing that there's no, like, image to go along with this. That sounds like it'd be a nice sandwich to see. Uh, Dizzy Miss Lizzie in chat says, I have to speak out in defense of cucumber sandwiches. The articles describing the pointlessly fancy ones, most normal ones are just cucumber slices with slices of cheddar or Wensleydale or something like that. I mean, yeah, like, if, if you give me a cucumber sandwich and it's like, it has the crusts on, it's got, like a decent bit of cheese and, like, the cucumber is, like, thickly sliced. Like, yeah, I'd be okay with that. I'd be like, yeah, that sounds good to me, personally. I'd eat that. I'd enjoy that. But the, the way it's described here just sounds so dire. <laughs> also, yes, to the one person that asked, uh, this is music from Crawl. This is music from Crawl. Uh, I have a couple different Crawl songs on this playlist that might come up. Uh, next up is the Grilled Cottage Cheese Sandwich. No image provided? From India. Cottage cheese, uh, i.e. paneer, green chutney, with some butter and extra cheese. I'd eat this. Paneer is fucking great. Uh, I wonder if the extra cheese just means extra paneer or if it's a, like a different cheese alongside it. Probably a different cheese if they chose to list it like that. Probably. Holly, I'm gonna draw your uncle holding a peanut butter and onion at you. What did he dress like? You are asking a question that I cannot tell you because I 
barely remember anything in my life that happened before, like, my last year of college. <laughs> for better or for worse. I am also not going to dox my distant uncle from from the Maritimes. <laughs> to the one person that said that? No, I'm not doing that. Thank you, Jurassicor, for that sub. I appreciate that. <laughs> Cutlet Sandwich Italian. From the United States, Italy, and Austria. Last name, first name. <laughs> Please. Mr. Cutlet Sandwich was my father. Call me Italian. Now this is a paragraph uh, accompanying no image, so buckle up, everyone. <clears throat> Especially popular where there are large populations of immigrant Italians, these cutlet sandwiches are made with breaded veal or chicken cutlets. They can be served with provolone cheese, long hots, aka chili peppers, or sautéed greens, such as spinach or broccoli rob. Sometimes they are served Parmesan style with tomato sauce and mozzarella and Parmesan cheese. Breaded cutlets such as schnitzels, coletta, or cotoletta, or escalope may have first appeared on the wider European culinary scene with the Napoleonic armies for conservation purposes. Napoleon offered a monetary reward to the person who developed a method to transport conserved food for a long amount of time that then could be consumed unspoiled. Although the breading of meat concept was not the winner, it was a culinary development that was quickly adopted in northern Italy. Excuse me. The original Viennese schnitzel of breaded veal, pork, or chicken, which originated in various forms beginning around the 17th century, was adapted to a roll sandwich in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, served with mayonnaise or mustard and lettuce. It did not transfer to American cuisine as its Italian relative did, but it remains popular today throughout Central Europe. Uh, Big Challenges Dan in chat says, the winner of Napoleon's grand food contest was canned food. Interesting. Uh, also, I'm just realizing that this whole time I was like, what the hell is Cutlet Sandwich Italian gonna be? I wonder what that could be. It's just, it's just like a, like a chicken Parmesan sandwich, which is like, that's the good stuff. I like that. I was expecting something different for some reason. <laughs> uh, chicken Parmesan is good. I think my favorite, like, of those sort of cutlets to have in, like, a sandwich is, like, uh, eggplant, honestly. For, for whatever reason, like, I would rather just have, like, a chicken parmesan just, like, on, on a plate with, like, a fork and a knife kind of thing. But but an eggplant parm... Oh, fuck yeah, now we're talking. Next up. The Dagwood. Xenoblade Chronicles the Hedgehog evokes fear in every friend you show, a fear that grows greatly when they see the view count, and you thank me for this power. What? Why? Why? What's wrong? It's, it's, it's a great video. Xenoblade Chronicles the Hedgehog famous video. It's a great video. <laughs> ah. The Dagwood Sandwich. A Dagwood Sandwich. The sandwich took 43 minutes to construct and partially toppled twice during construction. Perhaps this was an indication that you should not have been doing this. <laughs> the final weight of the sandwich was 5 pounds and 4 ounces, 2.4 kilograms. Contents of the sandwich include one pound of bread, whole grain, one pound four ounce chicken salad, uh, ten ounces of chicken, since six ounces grapes, four ounces of mayonnaise, nine ounces of sliced turkey, eight ounces of roast beef, eight ounces of pastrami, nine ounces of cheese, four ounces of cheddar, five ounces of Munster, seven ounces of tomato, four ounces of mustard, five leaves of butter. Oh, butter lettuce. Okay, thank God. Thank God. <laughs> and... Famously served in leaves, butter. Yeah! I was like, why so much butter? And also, why are you saying leaves of butter? What does it mean? <laughs> and one olive. The sandwich took just under two hours to consume. It's... This person made this sandwich to take this picture and put it up on Wikipedia. Right. They were like, oh... This awesome sandwich that's like five pounds and is going to be like my approximate caloric intake for the next two or three days. Um, <laughs> you want citations? I got the raw data for you right here. This Here's is, what you're seeing. This is the kind of field research that no one is fucking brave enough to do except for this Scooby and Shaggy like individual. <laughs> and the thing that gets me the most is like... Like, not just the specificity of it, not just, like, the description, like, oh, it took me 45 minutes to take, 
and like to build it, it almost died on me like several times, and it took over two hours to or under two hours to eat. N not just that, not just the single olive, but the fact that they had the gall to take this picture with a single apple <laughs> and a glass of water and a glass of nuclear yellow. <laughs> From the United States, multiple layers consisting of containing a wide variety of meats and condiments, named for Dagwood Bumstead of the comic strip Blondie. <sighs> Fickle familiar in chat says that's Mountain Dew Code Yellow. I don't know if that's a real thing, but I'm scared of the idea. It could be. <laughs> it could be, for all I know, and it scares me a lot. <laughs> Also, uh, there is a chain of, like, uh, like kind of fast food submarine sandwiches in... I don't know if it's just in Quebec, or if it's, like, also in, like, the east coast of Canada, or if it's in all of Canada, but they are called Dagwoods, and they, they don't serve sandwiches like this. They do, like, kind of Italian-style uh, sandwiches, basically, and they're, 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 they're good. They, they don't contain, like, a pound of roast chicken and, like, eight ounces of mayonnaise, though. <laughs> Thank you, Comrade Nix, for that brand new sub. I appreciate it. Next up, the deli. I just realized we're officially in the letter D now. Congratulations. We did it. This is deli sandwiches. Which, I don't know if that necessarily indicates the ingredients or the quality as much as it indicates where you're getting the sandwich. You're from Ontario, never seen a Dagwoods. Okay, they might just be in Quebec then. Noted. I can never tell just because, like, a lot of stuff that's exclusive here is very, very French, and a lot of stuff that's English here is from, like, out of the province. I was gonna make a joke when I heard deli sandwich, mm -hmm. but uh, my joke is the first thing that's in that subtext. <laughs> Great. From Germany in the United States. Sandwich usually ordered at a deli. <laughs> Choices include type of bread, toasted or untoasted, type of meat, cold cut, type of sliced cheese, vegetable fillings, lettuce, tomato, onion, etc., and condiments. <laughs> this would be... This is like if you have an article, like a list type Wikipedia article like this, of like, list of foxes. And it's every, like, specific genus of fox. Right. And then somewhere in the M section is mammal. <laughs> and it has a different picture of a fox. <laughs> Typically has fur. Typically four legs. has fur. And ears. <laughs> ears. Front Usually face stands on four of them. Generally not known to lay eggs. <laughs> 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 Fucking great. God, the, what, one of the ones that you missed earlier, and I'm sad that you missed it, is uh, a German one called Butterbrot, which is quite literally... Oh, I actually had the stream open when you were talking okay, about Okay, fucking that. great. Fucking That's great. Fucked up. <laughs> I can't believe the article is implying that Germans invented putting a little butter on that bad boy. I can't get over that. <laughs> ah, next up, the Denver. A Denver sandwich. Look good to me. That just looks like a like a, a good egg sandwich. From the United States. Sandwich containing a Denver omelet. Th there you go. Denver omelet. Uh, this doesn't specify what a Denver omelet specifically is. It just takes you to the omelet page. Omelets are good. This is a good looking omelet. I would put it in my mouth. It's occurring to me how many sandwiches are meal but you put it between bread. Yeah. That's... Like, we, we talked about this with chicken parm. Uh -huh. Like, chicken parm is just a meat... Like, a chicken parm sandwich is just a chicken parm that you put between two slices of bread. Right. That's that's kind of what the essence of a sandwich is, is you just, like, take a food thing and you put it on a bread for the ease of, like, portability, generally. Uh, and, like... It just works. It, it just fucking works. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes I would rather just, like, take the filling out and eat it on, like, a plate... Sometimes it's fucking great. Yeah. It is... It is a masterclass in human engineering. And I hope 
Someday that our scientists can finally uncover all of them. Denver, Denver omelet is green peppers and ham and cheese. Yeah, that sounds fucking great. I'd eat that. That's awesome. I love peppers in an omelet. I'm going to turn the song up a little bit. It's a little quiet. There we go. Uh, next up is the Donair Kebab, uh, which I already know is fucking phenomenal. Uh, one of my favorites. Uh, the good stuff. Holly, may I propose a new sandwich? Party cheese salad on rye. Uh, no. In fact, I'm calling Twitch headquarters and I'm going to get you permanently banned from the website uh, for crimes. Your days are numbered. Uh, origin, turkey. Donair kebab is meat cooked on a vertical spit, normally veal or beef, but may also be a mixture of these with lamb and sometimes chicken. This may be served wrapped in a flatbread, such as lavash or pita, or as a sandwich. Kebab... Oh. 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 If, if, if you've listened to any of Mira's streams, you heard her talking about how fucking good kebab is. <laughs> You'd... So you probably don't need to hear it again, but suffice to say, it's fucking great. Oh, it's fucking great. I don't want kebab. I I do too. There's like oh, only like one place nearby where I live that does it, and it's good, it but sandwiches. it's kind of like a, a ways away. Thank you, Nell Casting, for that five month resub. I appreciate it. Next up is the Donkey Burger from China. The Donkey Burger is a famous local specialty food in Baoding, China. Chopped or shredded savory donkey meat in a bun. Sold in Baoding, Hebei province as a street food, and also in high-end restaurants. I've never had donkey before. That's not a common thing uh, in, in North America at all, so... Never tried it. I know that, like, there was a big controversy at some point a while ago because like certain prepackaged foods like labeled as having like beef actually turned out to have like horse in it or something hmm. uh, I don't remember that and the issue was not like uh, the, the taste or health concerns or anything like that it was just like false advertising or something like that uh, I remember hearing about that so I'm probably entirely wrong here but like, that leads me to think that, like, a horse and donkey is, like, slightly beef-tinged in terms of taste, which is interesting. I'm not huge on beef, personally, but, I mean, hey. Meat. What I, I try does it. horse meat taste like? Okay. I need, I need to know. I need to know these awesome results. From Business Insider... <clears throat> Horse meat is widely reported to be a somewhat sweet, a little gamey, and a cross between beef and venison, according oh. to the International Business Times. While meat from younger horses tends to be a bit pinkish in color, older horses have a darker, reddish-colored meat. Interesting. I'm learning now so much about meat from Business Insider. <laughs> Thank you, Business Insider, for all the, the hit meat information. Business Insider uh, is the world's number 17 source for business info, but the world's <laughs> number one source for meat scholars. <laughs> this one is just called Doubles. This looks good. Sandwich sloppy style, I think. Post. <laughs> Fucking in, in my mind's eye, just visualizing this picture alongside Christian Bale. <laughs> Why Christian Bale? It's doubles. He's showing you them. <laughs> Fuck, I just got it! <laughs> I just got what you meant! <laughs> Thank you, Fandom Trash 16. Six sandwiches. <laughs> For the six month three sub, I appreciate it. <laughs> just like no no text, no captions, just like the, the Christian Bale doubles image with him pointing at this sandwich. Yeah! That's it. <laughs> that's, that's all it came up in my brain. Fuck. <coughs> Excuse me. From Trinidad and Tobago. Two flat fried bara, bread, uh, containing curried chickpeas or garbanzo beans. Yeah, I'd eat the shit out of this. Hell yeah. That looks good. That's slop. That's... The, the thing about chickpeas is that they take super well to being slopped. Uh, and you put that in, like, a really good flatbread? Hell yeah, I'd eat the hell out of that. 
there's a lot, baby. There's a lot of really good foods uh, out there that are just like we curried something, or we stewed something, or we otherwise slopped something, uh, and now we're putting it on or between flatbread, and you serve that to me, and 99% of the time, I will look at it and I will go, that's fucking great. I'm going to eat this right now and love it. We now move on to something a little more dire. <laughs> the donut sandwich. A typical donut sandwich with cheese. From the United States. Uh, I did just see someone in chat say, wait, Elvis has a sandwich? Oh, just wait. Oh, just wait. We're not even there yet. Just you wait. We're a donut sandwich. From the United States. A sandwich made with a donut instead of bread. Can be made with fried chicken, bacon, ham, sausage, cheese, etc. I... My only context for a donut sandwich being a thing uh, before this list, because I'm pretty sure this is a new addition to the list from the last time I read it. Um, my only context for a context for a donut sandwich is um, there's a video of a known known entity, known factor, Paula Dean, uh <laughs> making like burgers or something on one of the millions of shows that she had and then at one point like the person she's with and one of them is like oh instead of putting this on a bun what if we put this burger between a donut and as she's doing that paula dean just says something and i I don't even say something. I very vividly remember her exact words. And she says, and I quote, <clears throat> We're gonna be arrested. Fuck. <laughs> <sighs> Next up. The dynamite. Dynamite sandwich. At Woonsocket Autumn Fest 2007, Woonsocket, Rhode Island, United States. The sandwich was made and served by the youth ministries of St. Agatha's and Most Precious Blood Churches. Oh, and Most Precious Blood Churches. I, I parsed that as, like, blood churches, and I was like, what, like fucking Yarnum? <laughs> this is the Bloodborne sandwich? <laughs> That's what you get after you beat Vicar, Amelia. <laughs> you go up to the altar and they're just she was worshipping one of those. <laughs> this sandwich was made by the same people that made the exploding hammer. <laughs> <sighs> From Yarnum. <laughs> made of ground beef, tomato sauces, spices, and many onions and peppers. Uh, it is a popular food served at local family gatherings and fundraising benefits, usually made in large quantities. Yeah, that makes sense. That's like a an easy thing to make in large batches. You just make like a big a big like cauldron full of sloppy and ladle it into the the the, the different the, the different buns. I maybe shouldn't refer to it as a cauldron of sloppy, should I? <laughs> now that I think maybe about it. Maybe not. <laughs> you ever just say words and not think about it for a moment? Oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> Uh, apologies in advance, because I'm totally going to butcher the pronunciation of this one. This is, uh, Dear Ligens Natmad. Uh, I'm not sure how the, the A-E crammed together is ever supposed to be pronounced. Uh, from Denmark. Decorated, open-faced sandwich. Uh, Tintet Smurbrud, with name Dear Ligens Natmad. Uh, restaurant Ida Davidson, St... Kongsengade 70, Copenhagen, Denmark. Where's the bread? This is an open face sandwich. It's at the bottom. It's, it's, I, I mean, I'm assuming it's there. Uh, this, I, I looked at, like, the, the meat from the corner of my eye and saw the, like, you know, the sort of, like, uh, what's, what's the word? The sort of, like, I guess, striations, I guess, of, like, the, because meat is muscle. And so the different, like, pits and cavities of that. And when I looked away, I thought that someone had inscribed, like, mathematical formulas into this. <laughs> and I was like... My god, this meat has been branded with math. You're in, like, a Twilight Zone episode. God. 
a butcher who discovers like math equations. <laughs> I finally discovered it! The true equation of our universe! It's Sandwich! <laughs> From Denmark. Made with a piece of dark rye bread, a layer of liver poste, or, or liver pate. Okay. Uh, it's a pate and meat spread popular in Northern and Eastern Europe. Pate is good. Uh, I like it. Topped with a slice of salt beef and a slice of meat aspic. Topped with raw onion rings and garden cress. It's a good thing I'm not doing the aspic stream. I don't think I could handle that. <laughs> I would leave immediately. <laughs> I wouldn't play me out. <laughs> you know, sometimes when I do streams like this where it's like, oh yeah, if anyone wants to join in, like any friends want to hop in, that'd be fun. I think if I did an aspic stream, I would specifically say, no one must join for this stream. No one is allowed to see this stream. <laughs> no one must witness it. We have moved on to the letter E, and so we move on to... The Elvis. I want to say... I... I can't in good faith defend this sandwich. But I will say, this is a very undeserving depiction of an Elvis. Yeah. yeah. Usually, if you just look up pictures of Elvises on Google, you'll find way more flattering pictures of this sandwich. This is... This, this is bad. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to eat this. I see pictures of Elvises and I'm like, yeah, I try that. I see this, I'm like, no. This is kind of a trend in, like, a bunch of the images here uh, in this article is that a lot of them are just kind of... A lot of the images are just kind of bunk, kind of bobo. And, yeah. like, you know, that's... The description is even just... Bacon. As straightforward as it comes. Bread. Bacon. Banana. Butter. What? <laughs> The peanut is a whisper. Who the fuck writes that as butter, parenthetical, butter, parenthetical, peanut? <laughs> oh my god. God. From the United States. Peanut butter, banana, and bacon. That's I talked. It. Oh, sorry, you go ahead. I just said that's it. That's, that's all it is. And, and, and bread, of course. <laughs> I have talked about uh, the Elvis a couple of times on my own streams, and also on the, the stream that you did, Mike, when we went through uh, the Accursed List, never to be mm -hmm. spoken of again. Um, and, like, I have, we, we have a friend, uh, Nox, who is one of the, one of the mods here, uh, who on multiple occasions has uh, just been like, oh yeah, by the way, I'm gonna make and eat an Elvis now. <laughs> and, like, recorded footage to taunt us with. And so one time I decided, you know what? Fine. I want to try an Elvis. I'm going to eat and try an Elvis. And so I did. I got like some decent bacon. I got like a, a decent enough bread. Uh, I got peanut butter. I was going to say some good peanut butter, but I'll be honest, I just like peanut butter. So all peanut butter is good to me. Uh, and a banana, you know, slice that up, fry up that bacon, put it into a sandwich fry the, 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 the sandwich together. Kind of like grilled cheesing it. And so I ate it. And I'm eating it and I'm thinking to myself, I'm a little underwhelmed but not in the bad way. Because I was expecting this sandwich to be either completely life-changing or like one of the worst things I ever experienced. And I'm not really sure why I thought it would be miserable in retrospect. It was fine. It was okay. Like, I liked it. I ate it, and I was like, I get it. This isn't a bad sandwich. Uh, for the next 24 to 36 hours, my body felt absolutely no hunger. At all. I, I ate this, <laughs> like, in the evening one night for my dinner, and I was like, yeah, this is good. I like this. Uh, I went through basically that entire next day, never for a moment feeling hungry. And I was horrified. I was you scared. Like, you got a buff. <laughs> Like, it wasn't good or bad, you just got a buff and you didn't need to eat for a day. You you, you know how sometimes Balp will be like, Oh yeah, I eat food and it makes me feel stronger. That's how that made me feel. <laughs> and it terrified me. It's Monster Hunter food, exactly, Trish. Yeah. <laughs> it's Monster Hunter sandwich. <laughs> so to anyone at home who's ever just like, Oh man, I want to try like the food that they have in, in Monster Hunter. 
just make an Elvis. <laughs> I'm just imagining a Monster Hunter cooking cutscene <laughs> that's completely normal. <coughs> and then when it cuts to the hunter, it's just like, it's not even a giant sandwich. It's just a normal it's sized a normal Elvis size sandwich size sitting sandwich. in front of them. And they just eat it like slowly and daintily. <laughs> Moving on to egg. For this one, we have three different pictures. Here we have Eggmadder from Copenhagen, Denmark. Here we have Egg Salad Sandwich from uh, Jill Jelly Donut dot 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 whatever <laughs> <laughs> from Raleigh, uh, New Crap USA. And Eggs Benedict consisting of English muffins topped with Canadian bacon, poached eggs, and hollandaise sauce with their house potatoes in the background is served in Orange in Chicago, Illinois, according to their online menu as viewed on 2007-0529, Eggs Benedict at Orange. I'd fuck with that. From that Paul awesome. Goyette from Chicago, Illinois. I've never had an Eggs Benedict, but I've always wanted to. <laughs> Aquacycle in chat says, make an egg salad sandwich? Whatever! <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Origin global, such as United States and Canada. <laughs> Why specify? <sighs> Generic sandwich. This contains eggs, usually sliced hard-boiled eggs, uh, or egg salad, but may be made with fried or more rarely scrambled egg, topped with the local roast bread, locally called caviar. It's... Is that the generic sandwich? Is that the generic egg sandwich topped with the local roast spread caviar? That's a generic egg sandwich. Is is this person like a fucking noble? <laughs> Does this person live in a palace? <laughs> you know, this is the generic sandwich that we tend to have around here. One of the there's only one Wikipedia editor that is actually legitimate royalty, and they were <laughs> very keen <laughs> on putting this in the sandwich article. <laughs> this this specific bit was written specifically by a Russian czar. <laughs> <sighs> they they were transported through time, and their first immediate thought was, "Oh, I need to go on Wikipedia right now." Egg salad sandwich. A chopped egg mixed with mayonnaise. Eggs Benedict is an open-faced sandwich consisting of an English muffin topped with meat, eggs, and hollandaise sauce. Egg Spread. Polish version of egg salad, similar to a Japanese egg salad sandwich, excuse me, most of the times with addition of garlic and Polish pickled cucumber, excuse me, Polish pickled cucumbers mixed in. I mean, I like eggs. I'm not super keen on egg salad sandwich, but that's mostly just because uh, I have the unfortunate association in my brain that egg salad is bad because I've had a lot of bad egg salad sandwiches. Uh, it turns out you can make it so it's good. You can just make an egg salad that's good. Uh, and I'm starting to realize that. And so I kind of want to fuck with it more. But like, <laughs> you know, sometimes you have bad experiences with the food. And then for years, you're like, I never want to try this again. And then eventually you get over that and you're like, man. I was a fool for not getting on the ground floor of this earlier. I was a fool for not getting on the ground floor of eggs being a thing in our in our culinary history. Woe to be a Mesopotamian. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can put eggs on sandwiches. It turns out, you put an egg on stuff, it's good. Falafel. Pita falafel. Origin, Middle East, Israel. Deep fried balls of ground seasoned chickpeas topped with salad vegetables, hot sauce, tahini based sauces, and pickled vegetables, wrapped in or added to the pocket of a split open pita bread. I think. I don't know why, but like, something about how that. the silhouette of that sandwich, my brain is parsing it as a Metroid. Can <laughs> no, you see I it? Can kind of see it, yeah! There's like the different like circle shaped things that are like the like the the, the, right. the orbs inside of it. This it's bit got claws. here and this bit here is the claws. <laughs> That's the exactly it. The last falafel is in captivity. The internet is at peace. <laughs> uh, Samus, Samus, there's only one 
falafel sandwich left in the galaxy. You gotta go get it. You eat the sandwich and you get a hyper beam in real life. <laughs> I the, the thing about falafel is that when it's bad, it's pretty bad. Like, it's kind of dry and, like, chalky, and it's not a pleasant textural experience, and the taste is just kind of okay. Uh, when falafel is good, it is maybe my favorite food in the entire world. You have a good falafel, you're fucking set. Falafel can be fucking fantastic. It is one of my favorite sandwiches. It's good. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Next up, uh, we have Faru Pija uh, from Brazil. No image provided. You must use your imagination. Mortadella slices and cheese into a French bread with butter inside. Usually served split in two halves and paired with coffee or soda. So it's, it's, it's just a mortadella sandwich then, which sounds good. Mortadella's good. Mortadella is like bologna, but I, I like it better personally. You know how, like, a number of sandwiches up, there was a, a sandwich listed as being from, like, the United sandwiches. States, parenthetical, English? Right. That would be, like, they should have been consistent and say, Brazil, por- in parentheses, Portuguese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and have an article linked to Portugal. <laughs> God. <sighs> it's a historical event in Brazilian history. Why did they name a sandwich after it? I, I don't know, but that's interesting to know, huh? <clears throat> Next up on the list... Finger Sandwich. From the United Kingdom. Pretty sure they aren't allowed to put a picture of this one on Wikipedia. CT Sandwich. Oh, we'll see that later. <laughs> Next up, Fish Brochen. A fish brochen, sandwich with pickled herring, taken in a fast food chain Nordsee in Baden Baden, or Baden Baden, I'm not sure. Uploaded 2011 0107 from German Wikipedia. Man, that's just a fish in some bread. That's just, that's just that's a really, fish. They slop it in there. That's really just a fish in some bread. Uh huh. It's. I'm not arguing with it, but that's really just a fish in some bread. I, 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 I love the, I love the conceit. Yeah. Seeing a wonderful trend in these like German sandwiches where the name of the sandwich is quite literally just this in bread. This in bread. Uh Hiss all Hiss all in chat asking, is it cooked? I mean it's it's pickled, so it's safe to eat. It's fine. It's 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 definitely food safe. I don't think notable known sandwich would be here if it was like toxic and violent to eat. Happy to tell you a lot of German just works like that. It does, like, in general, linguistically. <laughs> which which does delight me. <clears throat> Origin, Germany, Belgium, and Switzerland. Crusty bread rolls filled with fish. Most commonly Bismarck or Soust herring. Raw herring soaked in a mild preserving liquid. It can be raw herring in a mild vinegar or Dutch brined herring. As well as vinegar, the marinade might contain cider, wine, or tea, sugar, herbs, spices, and chopped onion. And also onions. <clears throat> I like fish. I've never tried, like, a pickled fish. I've always wanted to. I don't so think I, I have this. either. I'd try it. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound bad. Like, as long as you don't hate fish, like, this sounds fine. It's You got some fish, you got some onion... It's, it's, it's in a bread roll. I'm assuming there's maybe a couple other things in there. Maybe some kind of maybe some kind of sauce, though I imagine the taste of the pickled fish is probably fairly strong, so. And also not terribly dry, given how it's, it's, it's a piece of fish, so. Our next one is Fish Finger. Fish Finger Sandwich. From the United Kingdom. A common British comfort food, notable for the fact that it encases breaded fish in more bread. <laughs> this, I mean, this is kind of the equivalent of just like, you know, you do like a, like a chicken parmesan or like a cutlet sandwich. That's just, you have breaded meat in bread. That, that's what this is. 
It's it's put it's, meal in bread. It's it's just you fry a fish, you make a sandwich out of it. Like again, like s stuff like this isn't like super fancy or anything. It doesn't have to be. It's generally like you know, like 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 working class food. It's 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 poor food, and like that's fine. I've I've had plenty of meals like this. It's good. It's fine. Fluffer nutter. Fluffer nutter. Yeah, like you put something in bread, and the conceit is now you can take it with you. It's fine. Fluffer nutter. From United States, Massachusetts. Peanut butter and marshmallow cream? Marshmallow confectionery spread similar in flavor but not texture to regular solid marshmallow. One brand of marshmallow cream is marshmallow fluff, which is used to make the fluffer nutter sandwich a new English classic comfort food. Huh. Do non Americans not know about this? I can't speak. For any non-Americans, except myself, I have never heard of this. I have not. <laughs> I think I have at some point. I haven't thought about it much. I'd eat it. I Con Conceptually, that's a nice sandwich. I would apprehensively try it, I think. Something about... Marsh it's a dessert. It's, right, not, it's yeah. not a meal. It's a dessert. <laughs> it's, it's, it, it seems like a sweet treat type of thing. Like, yeah. For, for some reason, just marshmallows in food outside of, like, I don't know, like a s'more or just you stick a marshmallow on a stick and campfire roast it or, like, in a in a hot chocolate just, like, seems weird to me. In, in baking, too, uh, that seems fine. But just, like, something about this just seems strange to me and I don't know why. Uh, which is... Why, why it's, it, it is kind of funny, you know, to just be going from, oh yeah, people take like bread and meat and stuff and put it in bread all the time. That's completely normal. Immediately to, what the fuck is a fluffer nutter? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that says more about me than anything. <laughs> Fool's gold loaf. Thank you so much for the sandwich stream. Also, big thanks to the person who said to add garlic powder to egg salad sandwiches. They were delicious. Feed myself and my parents. Mom even asked for seconds. Gonna make egg salad sandwiches regularly. Hey, hell yeah! As a general thing, honestly, you could just throw some garlic or some garlic powder in a lot of different foods, and it generally works very good. Garlic is good. Garlic is good. Garlic powder is good. Fool's gold loaf. What is that? That looks like raw ground meat. I know it's almost certainly not that, but it looks like raw ground meat. I have a memory of looking at this photo. I don't remember with who. Elvis. <laughs> hey, log. <laughs> that is what this is. This. It's I. I definitely saw this. I don't know if we looked at this on sandwich stream or not, but I have a clear memory of seeing this and reacting to the fact that it's just kind of in indiscernible meat in the middle there. It's terrifying, is what it is. Unknown meat. It's bacon. I, it, yeah, is it bacon? bacon? Okay. Okay. But something about smothering it in jelly and having it, like, yeah. pure cross-section like this makes it's, it look aberrant it, somehow. It, it is, like, the lighting mixed with, like, the dark, deep red of the jam mixing in here just makes this seem like completely raw, wet meat. Oh, this is a trick sandwich. See, if it's a deep red, that means it's good. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> this is, you know how they have trick weapons in Bloodborne where it's like one thing and then it changes to another form? This is kind of like that. It starts in the form of raw meat and then like, you take it out and it becomes like a delicious fully cooked bacon with like a fruit spread and then you can use it to like 20% extra damage to beasts. And you can turn it back into a raw meat at any time. And you can change flowers. And you can change flowers. And you can change Colorado! Consists of a single warmed, hollowed out loaf of bread filled with one one jar <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. of creamy peanut butter, one <laughs> jar of grape jelly, and a pound of bacon. In is, 19 that, <laughs> is that part of the recipe? Is that tacit? You have to have yeah. an entire jar? It must be. It yeah, it's must from be. a specific place. Oh, really? Okay. In 1976, Elvis Presley and some of his friends flew to Colorado to consume them. The using the word consume here makes it sound so bestial. 
<laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like a fountain of youth, you know. <laughs> it sounds like El- Elvis Presley and his dark archons <laughs> traveled across the country <laughs> to consume the raw energy of the fool's gold loaf. A pack of cruel sorcerers, red led by the Elvis Presley, and a pack of ravenous animals <laughs> made pilgrimage to Colorado to consume them. <laughs> Christ. <laughs> That's what, I, was, I was thinking whenever you got you all landed on the Elvis before, I was like, all right, well, that sounds close, but something about that seems wrong. <laughs> now you know. It's not how I remembered it. This is how I remembered it. <laughs> this, this is the King James Elvis. <laughs> As opposed to the New Testament Elvis. This is the monster on our food you consume to get feline done master. <laughs> <laughs> this is the real Monster Hunter sandwich! Fuck! Uh, next we have the Francesinha. Typical dish from the city of Porto. Oh no, this is a sandwich, sloppy style. This is a sandwich you have to eat fork and knife. They call a pie. That, that kind of is a pie at that point, isn't it? From Portugal. Wet cured ham... Uh, the, 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 the little symbol on the sea, that makes it a soft sea, right? Linguisa, I think. Uh, fresh sausage, steak, or other roast meat, topped with melted cheese, a hot, thick tomato and beer sauce. That does sound good. That does sound good. <laughs> El Fluffa, my friend Charlotte in chat, says it does look like they're threatening the sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but it's already bleeding. <laughs> they really should take this photo down. Uh, if, they, if they took down the British Rail photo, I can't believe they kept this up. They ought to be ashamed. This is an autopsy. <laughs> God. <laughs> this is a true crime sandwich. Uh, Francesina Povera. Or po- yeah, Povera. Also from Portugal. Bun with wet cured ham, linguisa and cheese, sauced with butter or margarine. Piri Piri, uh, which is a cultivar of capsicum uh, frutescens from the Malagueta pepper. Uh, and port wine, whiskey, cognac, or brandy. Uh, I guess the Portuguese just love like serving up sandwich sloppy style with alcohol sauce. Um, I'm all for it. Like, honestly, every time you land on a spanish or portuguese speaking country sandwich it's like all right well put it in my mouth okay it sounds good is the thing it i i never would think to like make like sauced up sandwich sloppy style like this but like it sounds good i would eat that next up really good sandwiches and bate papo are merely two sides of the same coin honestly if you can't handle me at my bate papo, you don't deserve me at my hot, thick tomato and beer sauce. <laughs> <sighs> beer sauce isn't alcoholic? Yes, I know. I, I mean that it has alcohol in it. I'm using it as, like, a joking shorthand. Un- unless you're, like, being, like, dash eyes upset at someone else in chat, in which case, come on now, knock it off. It's fine. It's not a big deal. French dip. French dip beef sandwich with a bowl of jus for dripping. Au jus is French for with its own juice. Jus is the juice itself. In American cuisine, the term is mostly used to refer to a light sauce for beef recipes, which may be served with the food or placed on the side for dipping. In French cuisine, jus is a natural way to enhance the flavor of dishes, mainly chicken, veal, and lamb. Yeah, it's it's just, you, you take the, the drippings and you make like a pan sauce out of it. That's... I don't feel like that's necessarily just a French cuisine thing, but... I mean, what do I know? I live in the French province. They got a word for it. They do. It's the word is just juice. The word is juice. It's it's just juice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we we got our own juice around here. Yeah. Everybody can have their own juice. A uh, new legal decree around the world: everyone must enjoy a juice. It doesn't matter what kind. As, as soon as humanly possible. It's your choice. Uh, origin. As United... soon as humanly possible. Right away. Right away. Chop, chop, get to it. 
Uh, it doesn't matter what kind. Right now. <laughs> Origin, United States and France. Thinly sliced roast beef on a baguette, served hot, usually au jus, with juice. I... I don't remember if I'm remembering wrong, which is a hell of a sentence now that I've said it out loud, but, um... I feel like I heard somewhere that, like, French dip doesn't actually have much of a French origin at all. Other than the fact that it's, like, on a baguette. I, if I'm remembering right, it is, like, very much, that's, like, yeah, just that's probably like the only thing. Invention. That's probably the only thing that makes it French is the, the French bread. Honestly. <laughs> Next up, fried brain sandwich. I don't know if they should have a picture of this one either. Here's yeah. what they look like. <laughs> <laughs> it looks it looks a bit funny. It it does. <laughs> it's got like the, the 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 popping out lumpiness to it, and then just like I'm assuming a plate of just like partly cooked onion. <laughs> Whatever. It, it's just it's looking like it was standing tall. Then they put it on the bun and just like splat. They yeah. hit it with a mallet. <laughs> it looks like they. Whatever this looked like before, they put it in a microwave and it somehow exploded, and this is the result. <laughs> oh I'm here for the brain sandwich. Welcome, Scorpy, just in time. Here's the what they look sandwich. like. I'm just going to turn your volume up a little bit on Discord. Uh, uh, there we go. That should be better. There's an article for brain sandwiches. It looks good. Are those the, uh, the stuff you put on top of cups so that they don't spill out? I, I don't know. Maybe beside the sandwich. I think that's like a whole slice of raw onion. Yeah, that's an onion. Did you I think, think that was I a lid? Plastic. I think it's plastic. <laughs> that's a fountain. <laughs> fried brain. Enjoy your fried brain the American way with your mayo, uh, tomato, and fountain drink. Cup. Yeah, plastic. <laughs> From the United States, sliced pork or calves brain battered and deep fried on rye bread or hamburger bun, often served with pickles, raw onion, and mustard. There are a lot of different parts of an animal I would eat. Uh, I have eaten intestine. I thought it was fine. Uh, I have eaten, like, uh, I had, like, a little bit of tongue once, and I thought it was okay. Uh, I've had, like, liver, and that was all right. It's not something you should eat a lot of, but, like, I, I think it tastes interesting. I don't think I would ever eat brain. Something about that just like weirds me out. Brain just seems like it's dangerous. That like too. I know, I know, I know it's just the raw brains that are dangerous, but it just seems so suspicious. S something, yeah, something about it just like leaves me with a pervasive thought that if I eat that, all I'm gonna think is I'm so full from prion disease. Yum. There's very little that separates you and a mind flare once you start eating brains so <laughs> the one thing separating us is the bit of mustard and raw onion to, to stop the little, top of our lid get a little mustard on that bad boy <laughs> to keep the lid on top to contain it <laughs> <sighs> next up is fruit here's a fruit sandwich oh yeah it's it's some fruit that's in fruit. a sandwich that's fruit. oh god i've eaten fruit sandwiches like putting apple on sandwiches is pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. This is just humorous to look at. <laughs> this is this what is, is a cream. Uh, this is a little Lord Fauntleroy dessert. I'm, I'm this is what you get if you're a good boy and you do all your your essay. I, I at first I thought the cream was like cream cheese, but it looks too like thin and bubbly for that. Is it just like custard? Is it whipped that, cream? It, it's I think it's actually whipped. pretty good. It, it's 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 like a whipped topping. So uh, whipped yeah. cream or like marshmallow spread, maybe. I think it's cream cheese. This this okay. like sounds good, but looking at this picture, all I can think is just this is a play school toy. This is a children's toy that looks like fake food. Yeah. From global, the entire world, such as United States. <laughs> they keep doing this. Oh, this, is, this is like guiltily presented as like well anyone could have done this i, I mean, mean I, I mean fruit and bread has existed it, it wasn't, you it know, wasn't strictly pe united states. people all around the world are doing stuff like this it's not just the united states i am in the united states though fruit often such as banana fig or pineapple served on bread often with mayonnaise in the united states so they could be being a bit misleading also because mm -hmm. 
What we do have around here is Miracle Whip. I don't know if that's an American exclusive. We have that here as well. Yeah. So, like, Miracle Whip is, you know, mayonnaise in title. Mm -hmm. And I could see, like, maybe you could fuse that together. If you have a, a sandwich with apple and cheese and a meat and mayonnaise, I can see that that goes places. Yeah, that's fine. That works. But, if if mm. we're looking at that picture right there and that white stuff is mayonnaise, mm, yeah, no, thank I, you. I don't know about that. I I'm the mayonnaise enjoyer. I'm the mayonnaise defender. I think it's good on um, with a lot of different things. I has I think it has a lot of like really good like culinary applications. I would not eat mayonnaise and strawberries. I, okay, that has to first of all that has to be whipped cream or some kind of aerated topping. It has so to it can't be. be it can't be mayonnaise. But it at the same time it made me imagine aerated mayonnaise, like as like a, a whipped spread and <laughs> I, I I feel faint. <laughs> you, if you, you let know, mayonnaise go bad it becomes sweet. So Honestly, whenever, <laughs> whenever you read whenever you read the descriptions for some of the sandwiches, I like in, in my head I'm imagining like a kid who's who's like devising a plan to eat a sandwich that they want <laughs> and they, they go on wikipedia and make a, and and like write up a story about a sandwich <laughs> and then show it to their parents <laughs> God. Like, See, it's 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 from everywhere in <laughs> oh, that rules. Also, everyone's I, doing it i hate that now i'm just thinking of like you know how there was a trend for a while where people with, like, uh, carbonation machines would, like, carbonate milk, and it would be a disaster for three million different reasons? Oh, I don't remember that trend. I don't remember that. I'm glad I don't. Oh, okay, it's for the best that you don't remember that then. <laughs> uh, anyways, now I'm just imagining someone trying to carbonate mayonnaise and having a bad brain time thinking about it. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, next up, we're moving to something that I think is good. Uh, the uh, Ftira. Which I believe I am pronouncing right, but if I'm not, uh, that's that's fine. I pronounce things wrong all the time. Ftira Mich uh, Thunfish in Marsax Lock, November 2014. This looks good. This is a very fancy way to play the sandwich, but this looks good. Is that salmon? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's let's read and see. From Malta, traditional Maltese sandwich. Made on a large round piece of Maltese ftira bread, topped with tomato paste, tuna, capers, and red onions. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. I have no complaints. Tuna sandwich, that's a good stuff. I almost made a tuna sandwich today. Instead, I had turkey. Tuna's good. Next up, the Gatsby from South Africa. Gatsby sandwich. Filled with calamari and chips for sale at the fish stop stall at Route 44 Market, Stellenbosch, South Africa. Oh, fuck. Yes, old sport. <laughs> God! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Deli style sandwich similar to the hoagie, often containing french fries, with other variations prepared with masala steak, chicken, poloni, Vienna. What is poloni? Oh, it's bologna. Okay. Hey, that's bologna. It's, you can't it's, call it that. They, they, spelled, they spelled bologna wrong as a joke. <laughs> Vienna sausages, calamari, fish, or char-grilled steak. Yeah. Interesting. Calamari sandwich, that's good stuff. That sounds fucking great. I've never had, uh, like, calamari in a sandwich. I have wanted to try a fucking po' boy for uh, years and years, and someday I'll get to try one. Um, this sounds good. I'd eat this. Uh, next up is the Gerber, which makes me think of baby food, so I'm a little worried. Uh, but this doesn't look oh, like that's... baby food. I know that's just oh, cheese. God. I know that's just cheese, but something about how it melted is oh, my God. really visceral. <laughs> Wrap, wrapped up. You, you know how the cheese dream looks like leather? Yeah. This looks like... Um... Flesh. It looks like flesh. Th this looks like before you process it into leather. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> this is the true, untanned variant. <laughs> tr truly, the truly the lying figure of cuisine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome to Skin Sandwich. Can I take your order? From the United States, St. Louis, Missouri. Half section of 
Italian or French bread with garlic butter, containing ham and Prevel cheese, topped with paprika, then toasted. <clears throat> See, this that's, sounds... That's the most fucked up ham and cheese sandwich I've ever seen in my life. Right! Like, it sounds good. You have the description here. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. That sounds, like, delicious. Those are ingredients to a sandwich I would love to eat. And they're like, okay, would you like to see our image example? Yeah, sure, I'd love to. I'm scared now. I'm frightened for my life now. I don't think it can be any older. I I don't think it can. I just, I just wonder reason. how... I just wonder how it got to look like that. Because, <laughs> like, I'm familiar with those ingredients. Right. I... My guess is that something about how this was positioned in the oven or whatever, where it was cooking, caused things to shift around by gravity, mm-hmm. which is how you see those, like, striations in the cheese. Yeah. And then they allowed it to cool and harden. And then it looks like this. I don't know... Yeah, they started twisting it. Like, that's what it looks like. <laughs> Someone in chat said this looks like Cenobite food. Yeah. I was going to say, this looks like a Dead by Daylight add on. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do want to eat it up, though. That looks it, like it, pizza. Yeah, it does look like pizza. Mm-hmm. It does look good. I would eat it. This is, this is the new uh, add-on icon for the new killer name of the chef. Oh, God. <laughs> he Wolverine turns you sandwich. into this. Instead of putting you on a hook, he puts you in an oven. Next up, the grilled cheese. United States and Canada. That's what I'm talking about, baby. The soup is inside the sandwich. We're celebrating (laughs) National Grilled Cheese Month. Recipe and more here (laughs) on Pithy and Cleaver. I didn't realize that there were such flavorful captions for pictures on Wikipedia. There are sometimes, and it rules. You you really do have to click through sometimes to get the good stuff. I Okay. Part of me thinks it's like is that a picture that they took from another website and yes. somehow preserved like the metadata of the the text it had on another site? That wouldn't surprise me. Because um, that looks like what's happening here. It, it it does specifically indicate that this is from the author Maggie Hoffman uh for the recipe of tomato soup grilled cheese, wherein the tomato soup is as they say inside the sandwich. Fucked up, but I'd eat it. Interesting. I mean, tomato soup and grilled cheese are two peas in a pod. Yeah, I, I, I just I have that shit together all the time. It's good. It's it's good for I need to cook something. I don't feel like cooking anything like big. Uh, I'll just make soup and a grilled cheese and it's good. Uh, from the United States and Canada, a slice of bread grilled with melty cheese. It's that simple. You like cheese? You like butter? You like toast? You're probably going to like the grilled cheese. <clears throat> Next up is Gua Bao, uh, which I've never had, but that looks good. Oh yeah, Bao? That's that's some sick stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've, I've, I've never had really Bao. Good. I have always wanted to try it, though. From China and Taiwan. A Fujianese sandwich consisting of a slice of stewed meat and other condiments, sandwiched between flat, steamed bread. <clears throat> I need to drink a water. Hang on a sec. Yeah, it it's kind of the same kind of concept as the steamed dumplings, you know? Yeah. It, it it does sound very similar in a lot of ways, which is why I've always been like, oh yeah, that sounds good. It's, I want to try that. It's Yeah, it's like a dumpling transmuted into bread that mm-hmm. you can use to make a sandwich. But like most of the really good Chinese places that I've found uh, around like whereabouts I live, like I've not seen any that like do bao, so I've never gotten to try one. Yep. There, there are these kind of cafeteria, but not really kind of places mm-hmm. around uh, metroplexes in the United States. Because I've seen it in Nashville and Dallas. Mm-hmm. Um, usually, if you go wandering around those kinds of places, eventually you will land on an Asian food stand that serves bao and dumplings and various other things. Mm-hmm. It's probably not the most authentic, but it gets it gets the idea down, and it's pretty damn good. Nice. Next up, we have guajolota. Torta de tamal. Uh, conocida como guajolota. That's it. I wonder what's in there. I guess we'll see. Well, guess we'll never know. It... 
at first glance, it does look kind of like a baby animal curled up for shelter, which is cute, but also, <laughs> but also interesting. <laughs> Someone in chat just said, in honor of the stream, they've converted their dinner into a chicken sandwich. Hey, hell yeah. Enjoy chicken sandwich. From Mexico. Mexico City. Uh, t oh, it's a tamale uh, in a Mexican bo bo bolillo roll. Very common morning street food in Mexico City. It is also called torta de tamal, which I, I guess makes sense. Yeah, a sandwich of tamale. That sounds good. Uh, next up is uh, Gedi, which is from Quebec, apparently. <laughs> this is just a lobster roll. The caption says this is a lobster roll from Maine. <laughs> yeah. huh? Someone totally added this in from Quebec. Absolutely. There's no article on it. <laughs> this, is, this is just a lobster roll from me. From our trip to Maine in 2008, a delicious made from scratch lobster roll from the Lobster Claw on Rest Street in Bar Harbor, Maine. They use only fresh lobster meat. Quote, no frozen lobster meat here. Unquote. Uh, they also make their own potato chips from scratch. I highly recommend it. Okay. Cool. <laughs> hot dog bread, usually not toasted, filled with a base of salad and mayonnaise that is completed by another ingredient, uh, from which the gaydi will get its name. It can be anything, but the main ones are eggs, chicken, and tofu. Some very popular versions of the Gaydzi are the Lobster Gaydzi and the Crab Gaydzi. So it's just... It's just you take a hot dog bun and you put, like, anything you want in it. You can also put lobster in it. This is... I mean, this is a thing I've had before. I've never heard anyone specifically refer to it as a Gaydzi. Or is it being a specific thing here in Quebec? This is the first I'm hearing about it. <laughs> I've never heard of this. <laughs> what is this? It's, it's, it's the little, it's little Quebecois uh, fourth grader that wants to try lobster. <laughs> we have got an idea. Mom and Dad, we, we have hot dog buns already. We could totally make it. See? It's, they say it's okay. It's it's like I said, Quebecois cuisine. Uh, thank you, Frums.xyz, uh, for the tip. Wikipedia has three modes: people trying their best, veiled advertisement, <laughs> and southern needless <laughs> nationalism. Uh huh. <laughs> thank you for the tip. I appreciate it. It's it's like I said. Primarily, the cuisine of Quebec consists of, uh, like you know, food from the various Native American tribes here. Uh, food from like people in the fur trade. Uh, food from, like, uh, European immigrants, primarily a lot of Jewish immigrants, uh, and food that a drunk guy slept together at four in the morning and said, you know, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is to me. <laughs> we also have another uh, one from Quebec that I've never really heard of, uh, the Griade from Canada. Sur Roi, Quebec. This one has no image. Sandwich au grillade is a sandwich of thick, unsalted flank bacon slices, usually grilled on a cast iron pan and dressed with yellow mustard, slices of raw onion, and tomatoes. Uh, it is a local specialty of the Surois, a small region of southwest of Quebec. Uh, page does not exist. Surois is not big enough to get its own page, huh? I've, I've never heard of this, which I, I guess makes sense given how it's a local specialty of a small region in the southwest of Quebec, but... <laughs> the kid Z one gives me the feeling of like some kid's mom made that once and then the kid found this article and was like huh this sandwich is not on here and just added it <laughs> <laughs> yeah god moving on to what I do know the Euro. yeah baby oh that looks good that's ultimate sandwich right there oh fuck that's a, that's a primo types of sandwich to me <laughs> from Greece and Cyprus. Tita gyro, or somaki gyro, depending on the type of bread used, includes meat roasted on a vertical spit with tomato, potatoes, raw, often red onions, and tzatziki sauce, wrapped in pita, or sandwich bread. There are a lot of cultures around the world that have a sandwich that's just 
We have meat on a big spit. It's spinning and roasting for a long time. We shave it off and put it into a pita bread for you, or some similar flatbread, and every single one of them is fucking great. And it's a fucking champion. All the time. It never fails. You, you, you get a sandwich like that, you win. Frame one. The good stuff. Uh, moving on to the letter H, we have uh, Hagelslag, or Vlocken. Uh, Vlocken, also called Chocolade Vlocken, is a commonly used sandwich topping in the Netherlands. Interesting. Uh, this, this looks like a sweet treat type of snack. Uh, people in chat are saying this is like fairy bread. I've, I've never heard of fairy bread. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But this does sound like a dessert. <clears throat> From the Netherlands. Chocolate sprinkles or flakes usually served on buttered bread. This is the second uh, dessert type of sandwich we've seen that was literally just like, okay, here's some bread. We put some chocolate stuff on top of it. And like, it sounds good. So. Moving on. To ham. Ham, tomato, cucumber. Raw onion. That's a sandwich. Global. Such as France, United States, United Kingdom. May be accompanied by cheese or salad. Condiments such as mustard, mayonnaise, or pickle may be present. Immediately followed by ham and pickle sandwich. I temporarily misread that as must be accompanied by cheese or salad. Damn, that's pretty, that's pretty strict for a Wikipedia article. Uh-huh. Immediately followed by ham and pickle and ham and cheese. <laughs> this is this is the bit that confuses me. Why not just condol consolidate it then into ham? Because you just said ham can have cheese, can have pickle. Why, why separate it? Well, ham is from Global, and ham and pickle is only from... <laughs> United, United Kingdom, Kingdom and the United States. Holly... <laughs> We can't we can't mince words too much because I've just seen something five entries down that makes me even infin like infinitely more mad. And the cheese is the United States global. Oh. God. Oh, ham and pickle, common lunch dish prepared in the British Isles, may sometimes be accompanied with cheese. Ham and cheese. I mean, this does look good. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good picture of a ham and cheese sandwich. <laughs> this, it's, this, like, it's like, it's amateurish, but it's not bad. Yeah. Some, it's just something, like, check it out. Look what I did. So, like, it's not a bad photo, but something about the lighting just makes me think, oh, this sandwich is being interrogated. <laughs> this sandwich is being interrogated. Uh, a common sandwich prepared with ham and sliced cheese. Additional ingredients may include lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise, and other... <laughs> Now this one seems like it warrants its own entry at the very least. Ham and egg bun. Chinese pastry, ham and egg bun. From Hong Kong. Sliced Danish canned ham with sliced scrambled egg sheet in a halved sweet bun. It, it's, it's egg and ham. Sounds good. I'd eat that. I just looked over at chat and I did see one person just go, Ugh! Which is really funny! <laughs> <laughs> specifically that was in response to but it got a chuckle out of me ham get real ham ham whatever next up hamburger a hamburger with a rim of lettuce on a black plate against a black background with a black and red napkin on a black and white dotted tablecloth this image was released by the national cancer institute an agency part of the national institutes of health Okay. <laughs> the National Cancer Institute, famous for making food articles. Famous for making and serving hamburgers to you. United States, Americans' national dish. Not America's national dish, but one American's national dish. There's some guy it's, out there. It's like a it's like a royal we. <laughs> Great. Ground beef patty, often with vegetables, sauces, and other meats. Usually on a round bun. A cheeseburger is also topped with cheese. It's it's a hamburger. I mean it's good. I think that's, everything that's you, hamburger. I think everything we could say about a hamburger has already been said by everyone in their life, so like it's 
It's burger. It's good. I had one the other day. It is truly a sandwich. Ham glizzy. No image available. What? Article does not exist. Wait. Just read it. <laughs> From Australia. <clears throat> Hot dog wrapped in a beef patty, deep fried, then covered with chili, a few french fries, and a fried egg. Citation needed. What the fuck? Look, Mom, Wikipedia says it's a real thing. <laughs> so we have to make it right now, 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 We now, have to make now. it. See, Please. it has the ingredients. The citation needed is from this kid's parents. All right, office, we need a, we need an article written up for Ham Glizzy. We need an article written up for notable gulpers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This article is sponsored by the Throat Goats of Australia. I was inspired by this stream and made a triple decker BLT for dinner. Nice! Also, I had exactly $3 left over from my budget for grocery shopping today, so you can have it as payment for the inspiration. Smile. Oh, you, you, you don't gotta do that, but I appreciate the tip all the same. Thank you. Moving on to something that actually exists. <laughs> the Harchong Guy Burger uh, from Singapore. It's a Singaporean fried chicken dish consisting of fried chicken wings and a batter with fermented shrimp paste. That does sound good. Ham glizzy appears to be vandalism. It only appears on the list of sandwiches and its derivatives. Holy shit! Yeah, who'd have thought? <laughs> who'd have thought? It, it really is just someone who came on and was like, yeah, this is real, so come on, Mom, we gotta make it now! Ah. <sighs> It is a sandwich of Harchong Gai, which is chicken fried with fermented shrimp paste. That, that sounds good. I'd eat that. Horseshoe sandwich. This... <laughs> this photo looks dire. We got... There's, there's, a, there's a burger under there. Uh, we got some stale bread. Uh... There's also a horseshoe in there. That's the part they don't warn you about. A whole metal horseshoe you can't see. Uh, we got these, like, really bleak-looking fries and a splash of crumb to seal the deal. Sure. I think the fries shitted. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! It's really embarrassing. We really shouldn't have put this picture up here. This is- this is- this is frankly foul. You- these fries need to clean up after, after themselves and stop making a public display out of this. Um, Len in chat j did just say that someone, I, I guess we have Wikipedia editors watching this right now, because someone evidently went into the List of Sandwiches article and did just delete Ham Glizzy. Wow. Real-time <laughs> extermination. Ham Glizzy has been expunged. Once we again, we are page? safe. You Can know what? The page? I... I want to do that afterwards in case there's other goof shit down here oh, okay, like, that, that right. might also be removed because like, again, like, please don't, don't vandalize Wikipedia. Don't, don't do that to be like, oh, it'll be so funny. I'll get seen on the stream and the streamer will laugh. No, I think Wikipedia vandalism fucking sucks. Don't do it. Uh, especially just to try and get attention here specifically. But like, if someone else already did something dumb on here, I kind of want to see it just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, the horseshoe. United States. Springfield. Illinois. Aren't there multiple places in the States called called uh, Springfield? I almost said Illinois. There's a couple of Springfields. Well, it's probably true for Illinois as well. <laughs> there is probably more than one Illinois. Uh -huh. There's probably a city called Illinois somewhere for whatever fucking reason. That wouldn't surprise me too much. Thick sliced toasted open face sandwich. It usually contains hamburger patties, or ham, but other meats such as deep fried pork tenderloin, grilled or fried chicken breast, and fried fish fillets can be used. The meat is topped with french fries and covered with a cheese sauce. That- that's a cheese sauce? That- that doesn't look like a cheese sauce to me. It doesn't look- white cheese. I, I- I guess? It- it doesn't look like anything particularly good. Like... 
this just looks like someone heard about a putsin and was like, well, what if we tried to make a sandwich kind of like that, but they, like, made it... At least in this specific photo, they made it look unappetizing. Like Slop derogatory. Right. There's there, there there's a good type of slop sandwich, and this is, unfortunately, this example does not seem like a good example of it. Like, I, I would theoretically eat a horseshoe, but, like, the horseshoe sandwich, not the, like, not the metal thing you put on a horse, but, like... This, this photo's not doing it for me. This is a sad slop. Speaking of sad slop, next up is the hot brown! That's what I do in the toilet after a sandwich! <laughs> oh. <laughs> hot the, brown sandwich. Love the, the little leaf. Like the, not much there. brown. Yeah, the, the single sprig of, like, cilantro and the, like, the parmesan they put on top of this. Uh, or parsley, whatever it is. Uh, from Kurt's Restaurant, Bardstown, Kentucky, USA. From United States, Louisville, Kentucky. Open face. Hot brown, high velocity. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Open face with turkey and bacon. Topped with Mornay sauce and baked or broiled. Hang on just a sec. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, topped with Mornay sauce and baked or broiled. Variation of Welsh rarebit. Which I think is another thing on this list. It's a spoiler for later. I think they specifically call it a rarebit because it doesn't have rabbit in it actually or something like that. But also this just seems like it's kind of a different thing because the Welsh rarebit does just seem like it's... They put a meat and cheese on top of a, a, a bread and then and then melted it. And then it has a sauce. Hot Brown is a really unappetizing name, though. <laughs> Ugh. Next up is Hot Dog. I want a hot dog! I want a hot dog! Wookie Wookie! Hot Dog on Toasted Bun with Kimchi, Mustard, Mayo, and Ketchup. That's such a non-standard hot dog for this Yeah! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it looks good, but, like, if you're... If you're exemplifying what a hot dog looks like, this isn't it. Mm -hmm. It's it's like a small dog, and also it's got kimchi on it. <laughs> I'd eat it, but... <laughs> uh, from United States. A hot dog is a food consisting of a grilled or steamed sausage served in the slit of a partially sliced bun. It can also refer to the sausage itself. The sausage is used as a wiener or a frankfurter. Again, it's like the hamburger. What the fuck can you say about a hot dog? It's a hot dog. It's 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 good, I suppose. You, you can eat them. Hot chicken. From United States, Tennessee, and Canada, Quebec. I've this, had it. This one I can verify is like a... I've had it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard about I hear about hot chicken constantly over here. This 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 is like legitimately a Quebecois thing. It's good. It's coarsely shredded sli or sliced chicken, sandwiched between two pieces of sliced bread, covered in gravy. The classical version is topped with green sweet peas. That's that's what it is. It's good. I also had a hot burger. It was was that just like I a burger? I think that's just when I think that's, that's just the same when they make thing, a burger hot. It's a burger. <laughs> Wait, that's Is that is that a, is that a over the burger? That's a Quebec hot chicken sandwich? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, well, that's so, pretty much it. That's so weird that there's only one listing for both. Nashville hot chicken is a completely different thing. Like, is it? It like, there's nothing in common besides the French fries in that oh. picture and chicken. And chicken. Yeah, that's from Saint Hubert. That yeah, that it is just like straight up from Saint Hubert barbecue, <laughs> which is like a, a, a oh, chain oh, that does oh, chicken. Oh. Ring, 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 come on, tell you, put, 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 Great. Next up, the hot turkey with three sources, but no articles. <laughs> really need to make sure that we're all agreed on what a hot turkey sandwich is. Hey, where's the bread? It's it's slopped down. <laughs> hey, 
Okay. A hot open turkey sandwich with corn and mashed potatoes and gravy and bread at a Friendly's restaurant in New, Jer- in New Jersey. <laughs> I mean, what am I saying? The bread's on the side. They just missed. They haven't, <laughs> they haven't made the sandwich yet. <laughs> I, that's true. I just noticed there's bread on the side. <laughs> it's, an, it's an open turkey sandwich, not an open face turkey sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it's an open concept turkey sandwich. <laughs> A hot open turkey sandwich. <laughs> it's true, they did say hot open. <laughs> it is also very funny seeing multiple people in chat just being like, this is not something I have ever seen at Friendly's. What the fuck? <laughs> it looks like food from Matilda. <laughs> that Danny DeVito eats the, on the, the orphan, table. The orphans are for te- forced to eat this. Oh my god. <laughs> States. Often open faced, sliced turkey on white bread drenched in turkey gravy, often served, I almost read that as severed, with mashed potatoes. These are sometimes served at Hofbrau style restaurants. There's a Hofbrau style. Cafeteria style food service derived from the German term Hofbrau, which originally referred to a brewery with historical ties to a royal court. Huh. That's incredibly funny that they describe it in that way. It's like, Okay, these are served in the cafeterias, where you get all the pieces separate. They're they're not together. Whenever you, get you have to make it yourself. You have to invent it. We're, we're too busy cooking it. You've got to learn engineering yourself. <laughs> ah, Indian taco. Interesting. From the United States, seasoned beef or beans, topped with lettuce. Diced tomatoes, cheese, and other condiments on it. Oh, it's Indian as in, like, Native American, because it's on fry bread, not as in, like, involving India. Okay, interesting. Often folded. Interesting. Uh, Wild Beast in chat says, are y'all still doing the sandwich list? Yes. 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 Uh, Other people in chat are corroborating. Ham glizzies are real. Originally known as ham dog. A ham, ham dog. Ham god? Oh, ham dog. <laughs> ham dog, not, not damn god. <laughs> a ham dog is an Australian sandwich that consists of a shaped bread bun with a beef patty cut in two and a frankfurter placed in between two halves, which is then topped off with cheese, pickles, sauces, tomato, lettuce, and onion. Uh, it, it looks like this guy. It looks like a sushi noko. Oh. Th- it's shaped. It's it's the sushi noko sandwich. It is a sushi noko sandwich. Sushi noko meal. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I can't say <see> this. <laughs> well, there you go. That's 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 the ham glizzy. <laughs> Next up is. Oh baby. Oh baby. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Fuck, YouTube's oh, down. I hold up for this one. God damn it. Okay, YouTube's down. I wanted to find the video that someone made after my stream uh-huh. when we got to Italian beef and I we for some reason we made a joke about replacing Neo X Death with a Italian beef sandwich God, and someone yeah. did it. I remember that. It was really good. I wanted to link that video, but YouTube <laughs> is entirely down right now, so I can't. Uh it's okay we can link it some other time (laughs) send it to me when you remember i love that video the italian beef (laughs) someone in chat just said this one should be named the hot brown (laughs) 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 Uh, from italy and united states chicago illinois thin slices of seasoned juicy roast beef often garnished with a giardiniera or Italian sweet peppers on a dense, long, Italian-style roll. This looks wet. This looks wet. This is wetted beef sandwich. That is a very wet sandwich. This is the sloppy steak sandwich. I, it could be good. It, it, it might be good. I don't know. They're good. This, this image scares me a lot. <laughs> Next up is Italian. From United States. <laughs> Italian salumi, copa and mortadella. 
prepared on a long bread roll or bun with meats such as salami, mortadella, and capicola, along with cheese, tomato, olive oil, salt, and black pepper. <laughs> That's a salumi. It, 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 I mean, it looks good. Not much to say about this one. It's a... It's a, it seems like a staple in, in the North Americas. You can buy it, you can put it in your mouth. Next up is jam. Yep. Oh baby, that's jam. Yep, that's jam. It's definitely jam. From the United Kingdom, that's the only place in the world you can eat jam. Buttered bread with fruit jam slash conserve, normally eaten at lunchtime or as a quick snack may also be eaten at breakfast or for tea. You, you can eat it whenever you want, though. There's no rules. This was written by a hobbit. <laughs> you can only have a jam sandwich at second breakfast. This was written by a bear. <laughs> uh, I mean, jam's good. Jam on toast is good. Put a little butter on that bad boy. The good stuff. I had... Some jam this morning. Jambon beurre. A classic jambon beurre, French ham sandwich. In the foreground and other classics, jambon emmental, French ham and Swiss cheese sandwich, and rosette cornichon, French salami and gherkin sandwich. In the background. <laughs> Sir, <laughs> the, the, the famous <laughs> jambon beurre surrounded by its contemporaries, other, <laughs> other notable sandwiches. <laughs> Such as the Jambon Elemental. <laughs> From France. French baguette with butter and ham. Also known as a Parisian, it is the most popular sandwich in France. Huh. I mean, I guess it makes sense. I mean, it's... It, it sounds fine. You, you, if you get a good quality butter, you get some good ham on that. Good bread, yeah. It's, it's simple, but it sounds good. Next up is the Hibarito uh, from the United States, Chicago, Illinois. A Hibarito sandwich. The fillings include grilled chicken breast, tomato, alfalfa sprouts, cucumber, lettuce, and red onion, held together by two flat pieces of starchy fried plantain. Photo taken at the Dish Cafe in Goleta, United States. Photo taken with uh, a Fujifilm <laughs> Fine Pix E510 digital camera. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know. See, okay, it's from a Flickr link, so this is absolutely just the metadata taken from the site. Oh, almost certainly. That wouldn't surprise me at all. I, I mean, like, if, if they are just, like, straight up taking it, like, wholesale from another site, they might as well just put in all that metadata, you know? Yeah. Meat, cheese, lettuce, and tomato between flattened fried green plantains instead of bread with garlic-flavored mayonnaise. I've never had a plantain before. I haven't either. I still want to try one of these. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're like related to bananas, right? I think. It's a highly flexible banana-like individual. Ah, so talented. <laughs> Next up is Juicy Lucy. Ye gods. <laughs> what, by the gods? <laughs> what, by the gods? What, by the gods? No, do not commission sandwich. I hate commendation. Una Juicy Lucy abierta uh, mostrando su interior de queso fundido de Matt's Bar, Cedar Avenue, Minneapolis, Minnesota, Estado Unidos. Oh, that's Lucy from Minneapolis, Minnesota. Cheeseburger with the cheese inside the meat patty rather than on top. Oh, so that's, that's the... the Juicy Lucy is what you call it when it like you, you bite it and it gushes like molten cheese at the back of your throat. Ugh. I don't like that it's called Lucy. <laughs> I don't like that at all. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> I'm I'm really not a fan of uh, the cheese burster, where like you bite into it and the cheese just like lunges out at you like that and oozes out. Like I would rather just have it on the top. <laughs> You know what I really want? I, I wish I, I like eating cheeseburgers, but I really wish there was a high risk of me burning myself. <laughs> burning my I, interior. I, I, I sure wish that there was a chance of me biting into a cheeseburger and just eviscerating my the inside of my mouth. Nothing would make me happier, except maybe if we named it after a hotted woman. Oh, that would just be the cheese on top. 
That'd be the cheese inside. Fuck! <laughs> 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 Next up on the list, Kanopka, which has uh, no article, at least on English Wikipedia, maybe on the Polish one. Uh, no image either from Poland. Any type of bread with all kinds of additions. What? <laughs> Any type of bread <laughs> with all kinds of additions on it. Like meats, cutlets, sausages, and all varieties of cold meat, cheese, eggs, vegetables. It can be with butter, goose fat, or other soft spreadable sweet version. Kanopka consists of butter and jam slash honey, sweet cheese, cream, and sugar. The open version Kanopka consists of only one slice of bread or closed Kanopka with two slices. Most popular are Kanopka Zimazlemi Zinka, sandwich with bread and ham, uh, Kanopka Zisherim, Sandwich with butter and cheese. Uh, I'm totally butchering the Polish pronunciation. I I know that. Kzjemenjodem uh, with butter and jam slash honey. Kanapka uh, viosena. Spring sandwich with spring vegetables and possible additions of ham and or hard boiled egg. Hey, I have tremendous news from Google Translate. Yes. Kanapka is just Polish for sandwich. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Just the bit you described earlier of oh here's a list of foxes and one of them is just mammal. It just <laughs> someone in Poland really needed to be sure. <laughs> By the way, in Poland we have these little things called sandwiches. <laughs> and maybe you've heard of them. sandwich. And maybe you've heard of them. <laughs> I also typed it wrong when I first searched it and I thought I it said did you mean Kurapika? Did you, in fact, want to look up images of Kirapika? God, the Hunter Hunter sandwich exclusive to Poland. <laughs> ah, next up is Katsu Sando from Japan. Katsu Sando? Sando fried... no Katsu. Sando de Panda. I think about that video too often. Deep fried pork cutlet served as a sandwich on a Shinkansen train. Breaded deep fried pork cutlet, tonkatsu. What Again, kind of bread is that? Uh, that's like Japanese white that, bread. That's just white bread, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Apparently, like white bread in Japan tastes different, which intrigues me, because I assumed that white bread would just taste the same everywhere because it's homogenized mm. white bread. I'd try it. Yeah, I know they got like all kinds of different breads in Japan as well. Like there's a. Uh, the, 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 the thing that's like, I don't remember what it's called exactly, but it's like milk bread or something like that. I've always wanted to try that. But yeah, again, all around the world, people are taking meat. They're breading and frying it. They're putting it between bread so that they can make it portable. It's good. Oh, oh yeah, there wasn't... Hey, if Kanapka can be on here, then Honey Butter Fuck Toast can be on here. <laughs> Honestly, it could. Uh, honestly... I think you could make a solid argument for Honey Butter Fuck Toast being its own type of open face sandwich. Like, if, if, if you can have jam on toast as an open face sandwich, Honey Butter Fuck Toast is absolutely an open face sandwich. I tried it once and it was good. It really is fuck. Next up is Kabuli Burger uh, from Peshawar, Pakistan and Afghanistan. Uh, no image provided. Uh, not even in the, the article itself, it looks like. A flatbread wrapped with chips and sausage, seasoned with salt, chili powder, and curry sauce or ketchup. Sounds good. Seems like there's a lot of places that have, like, a, like a sandwich or a flatbread wrap with, like, sausage and, like a, like, a chili and curry powder in there. Sounds good. All over the world, people are enjoying that stuff. Kaiser's Jagproviant. From Austria. Finger sandwich. Which just leads to the tea sandwiches again. <laughs> With ham, pickles, eggs, and cheese. All around the world, people are eating little sandwiches. I love that Sugar Ray song. <laughs> God! Uh, 
wonder if anyone in chat doesn't like sandwiches. I imagine if people didn't like sandwiches, they would have tuned into the stream, realized it was just a stream about sandwiches, as I said it would be, and then it would have gone, Man, fuck this. I'm out. Yeah. I'm unsubscribing. Oh, what's Holly, t what's Holly Hollow to stream? Oh, fuck. God damn it. God, fuck this shit. Man, I'm so excited. How dare she? I'm so excited to go on Twitch.tv and watch notable streamer Hollow underscore Tones. Uh, I'm so excited to see another one of her streams. I sure hope she's going to be playing a video game. I would just <clears throat> fucking hate it if she was doing a stream about sandwiches. I would just scream and cry. That person's probably out there, but they're not. They're not here anymore, uh, and I can respect that. Next, we have the Kaoji Pate uh, from Laos. Similar to Vietnam's banh mi, it is a street food prepared using pork liver pate, stuffed with pork or Lao sausage. Uh, usually refers to a popular type of Lao sausage made from coarsely chopped fatty pork, seasoned with lemongrass, uh, galangal, kefir lime leaves, shallots, cilantro, chilies, garlic, salt, etc., etc., etc. That sounds cool. Sliced papaya, carrots, shallots or onion, cucumber, cilantro, and sometimes jiao bong or chili sauce. Uh, also called Whoa. luang... Propang chili sauce, sweet and savory loud chili paste. That sounds uh, good. Red coloration, you know it's good. That's that good stuff. That's that good stuff you love to see. Oh, yumma yumma. Uh, it would be nice if we had an image of this, but like it is another just like baguette sandwich, so it would just kind of look like a, like a banh mi or similar. Uh, next we have uh, Coco Retsi. The vendor mixes the chopped innards with tomatoes and green... Describing it as innards feels so visceral. <laughs> like, like this is uh, an animal. Uh, our special today is the innards sandwich. <laughs> You'll love what's inside of it. <laughs> with tomatoes and green peppers, then cooks them on a large griddle with oregano and serves it in a warm baguette. <clears throat> From Anatolia and Balkans. Lamb or goat in... Oh, okay, so it is... It is innards in the sense that it's lamb or goat intestines. Yes. <laughs> okay, that, that that does make a little more sense. Okay. Uh, containing seasoned offal. I had intestine once. It was pretty good. I had it in, uh, in a soup. Hmm. It didn't have too strong of a taste. It had an interesting texture. That definitely isn't for everyone because it was very chewy, but I liked it. Yeah, it's that stuff is quite chewy. And it seems... It's not even like a... I wouldn't even say it's like an extreme flavor at all. Mm -hmm. It's just it's it's just kind of like, well, what's the point? It's yeah, like, it's it's too much effort, not enough reward. I, I, I feel want to like... play games with my food. I'll get some escargot. If I want to play games <laughs> with my food, I'll boot up Cooking Mama. I I I feel like it's like, it's it's good in like soups and stuff because it, it I feel like it kind of like soaks up the flavor of that in in like a way. Holly, I just joined. Does no backseating still apply to sandwiches? Look at the tags for the stream. Did I tag it as no backseating? Yes, I did. How can you backseat a list of sandwiches? I don't know. Don't find out. One of you would find a way. <laughs> and then you would get banned for it. <laughs> Next up is the Coton Butter. With just a whole raw onion behind it, unpeeled. <laughs> it's a great snack to go with your sandwich. From Germany. Buttered bran bread with smoked pork sausage, kotenwurst, fresh onion rings, and spicy mustard. I know that, like, okay, you know how, like, food photographers will do that thing where they, like, take a picture of a burger next to a nice looking tomato, so you get the impression of, like, ah, ah, tomato is an ingredient in the sandwich. You know, right. it's just, like, a presentational thing. N nice. Something and about fresh. this. Something about this being presented as like a very amateurish, normally lit shot, but with just a whole onion in the background is like, look, right. you get to enjoy the succulent taste of onion in this sandwich. Oh, it makes me want to build. <laughs> I got a sec. I got to I got to get my picture of builders up on screen. Uh, I have it set to my starting. Uh, there we go. <laughs> builders eat this. Builders eat cotton butter sandwich. <laughs> the fucked up thing is that it's making me want this sandwich more because I do I'm a fiend for raw onion I eat that stuff up it's good it's good it's good uh, we already read the description so next up is the Lieberkäse from Austria Switzerland and southern Germany 
Leberkassemmel ist ein traditionelles äh, Fleischgerk der österreichischen und bayerischen Kutsch. I won't pretend for a second to know what any of that says. And I know I pronounced it all very bad. <laughs> From Austria, Switzerland, and southern Germany. Meatloaf-like dish, which, despite the name, may contain neither liver nor cheese. It is commonly served on a Kaiser roll with mustard and mayonnaise. So it's, uh, like a meatloaf sandwich, kinda. I mean, that's that's good. I, I Sometimes you have a meatloaf and you just want to eat it in a sandwich, that's good. And it's, it's 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 a different kind of meatloaf. It's similar to bologna sausage, apparently, but I try it. I try it. Next up is lettuce sandwich. These are Shanghai-style lettuce wraps from Auburn Ale House in Auburn, California. This picture was originally posted at my Flickr account, and here's a link to the Flickr account. And there's also a wet nap there, I guess, if you want to take a nap. Uh, from the United States and United Kingdom. Uh, thank you, Curb, for that brand new sub. I appreciate it. And also thank you, Lord Cakespy, for the sub. I miss calling that one out, but I appreciate it. As a German, for not knowing German, my pronunciation is really good. Oh, huh. I'm surprised. <laughs> but thank you. I appreciate that. A lettuce sandwich is a wrap with lettuce substituted for the bread, or a sandwich with a filling consisting primarily of lettuce. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. You can't just you can't just lump those under one fucking category. Right, those those seem like they 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 separate ham from ham and cheese and ham with pickle, but then lettuce sandwiches. Oh well, you know it could have lettuce in it, or the lettuce it's, could be the wrap. What's outside. a lettuce sandwich? It's, oh, it's when you put stuff in a lettuce or put a lettuce in stuff. <laughs> it's God. lettuce. What more do you want? Anyways, this is what hot chicken is. Okay. <laughs> Next up, we got Limburger, which is, you know, Limburger cheese. It's a it's a known type of cheese. It's a known quantity. <clears throat> From the United States and Russia. They are typically prepared with buttered rye bread, Limburger cheese, sliced onion, and mustard. Pictured as Limburger cheese and bread. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say, like, oh, okay, it's supposed to have more ingredients, because right. this is just a picture of bread and cheese. The, the like, hey, I'm not complaining. The sandwich normally consists of multiple ingredients. Pictured here is not the sandwich. <laughs> Pictured here is some of them. We gave That'd you be a little like... bit. He gave you a little bit to get your imagination going. <laughs> Here's a teaser, an appetizer, if you will. If you want to enjoy the sandwich, you'll just have to make it yourself, won't you? The, we the Wikipedia page for hamburger just has like a bun and a piece of lettuce. <laughs> It has it's like, here's some of the... I mean, that's kind of what the lettuce sandwich one is looking like. Yeah. <laughs> that's a wrap. It has stuff in it. No, it doesn't. Look look, look closely. The the wraps have not been created yet. Oh, and I'm, right. I'm, I'm, I'm that's suspicious, true. I'm suspicious Christ. Of the, I'm suspicious of the pieces of lettuce that they were given at Auburn Ale House. They look, uh, look a, a bit small to be putting things into. <laughs> they really do. They really do. I think I just I'm, saw that, like... That it's slaw. Maybe I just saw that like slaw in the middle, and I was hoping to God that that was just like the ingredients of one rep. No, you're right. It's just God. it's just sitting there. <laughs> Next up is actually lobster roll. That's the same picture that they used earlier. That's the uh -huh. same photograph. There, there is at least one other case of that near the bottom of the list, which I'm very excited to get to, because Great. what I also noticed that I had a moment of like, wait, what the fuck? <laughs> it's the same picture. Lobster roll. Origin, United States, United States Northeast, uh, Canada, from the Maritime Provinces, United Kingdom, England. Lobster meat tossed with either mayonnaise, cold, or butter, drawn butter, hot, stuffed into a slit opening at the top of a grilled bread roll or hot dog bun. Lobster rolls is pretty good. I'm not, like, super keen on lobster. Like, I think it's, it's, it's good, but it's... I, I don't ever think it's really worth the price. It's so fucking expensive nowadays. Uh, when it apparently used to be super cheap because, like, hundreds of years ago, like, apparently they didn't know, like, what to fucking do with lobster, so it was, like, super cheap street food. And now it, people are like, oh, well, we've decided actually now it's gourmet, so it, it costs a lot of money. Ain't that just the way? They used to feed lobsters to prisoners in some place or another, I mm -hmm. remember. 
-hmm. Yeah. But they were like even less cop. They were they comprehended it even less. That it it's like there were there were layers of discovering lobster. They just found these creatures and they're like, damn. I guess we can't take the shell off. <laughs> eat it like eat it with the shell off. <laughs> oh God, that sounds painful. <laughs> first first guy to pull the shell apart and eat the. The first ape to pull the shell apart and eat the, the juicy meat inside, everyone else is like, oh, that guy's onto something. Hmm, I think this guy might have an idea is the thing. <laughs> Anyways, lobster rolls. If, if, if I do have to engage with lobster, I think lobster rolls is maybe my favorite way to go about it. They're good. Next up is lox. And here's a lox sandwich. I've, I've never really seen just like a sandwich sandwich of it. I usually see it in like a bagel. Yeah. Uh, from the United States. Wait, no, I think this is a bagel. This is just like a very sorry looking bagel, but I mean, it's a bagel all the same. Uh, locks on a bagel with cream cheese, thinly sliced onions, capers, and sometimes sliced tomato. I mean, locks is delicious. This is a sad bagel you probably get at like a, like a supermarket, but like, again, par for the course for some of the other photos we've seen here. Lox on, like, a bagel is fucking great. It is one of my favorite salmon dishes. Uh, I am still looking into, like, stuff about moving uh, to another part of the country. And um, I am very deeply going to miss the bagels, what they have here. The bagels in Montreal are, like, some of the best in the fucking world. And it's going to be so sad not having easy access to them anymore. <laughs> Next up is the Luther Burger. Picture of a Luther Burger and fries I made at home. It is comprised of lean beef, beef bacon, Swiss cheese, and a grilled Krispy Kreme donut. <clears throat> we have example two of a donut sandwich on this list. Even the concept, even the concept of a grilled donut is very strange to me. It. It weirds me out. The texture looks like a hamburger bun fused with a bagel, and that 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 is causing my fight or flight reaction to go into overdrive. But I have seen at least one person whose opinions I trust say that they enjoyed it, so it it gives me pause, but I'm willing to hear it out. <laughs> hamburger or cheeseburger on glazed donuts instead of a bun. Again, my only context for this prior to this list is the one episode of some Paladine show where she does this and then says, We're gonna be arrested. <laughs> it does feel like food to eat when you are drunk or hungover or something. It does kind of feel like that. It, it gives me the same sort of feeling in that regard as Putin does. Thank you, Noodle Wizard, for the 7 month resub. I appreciate that. Next up is uh, Mallorca de Jamón y Queso. Casalta Ham and Cheese Mallorca. Seems neat. From Puerto Rico. Similar to Ensaimada, covered with powdered sugar. Oh, that's powdered sugar. Huh. Yeah, it's similar to, you know, Monte Cristo. Monte Cristo is. Well, hopefully you will know after you scroll a few more down. <laughs> <He's> hoping. <laughs> I mean, I've had like meat with like sweet stuff with it before. Like uh, a fucking classic here is like ham and maple syrup. So like, it doesn't seem bad. I try it. It's just I am taken aback by oh yeah, you just dumped powdered sugar on top of the sandwich, didn't you? <laughs> Thank you, trashiest gal, for that two month resub. I appreciate that. Next up is Marmalade, which they don't have a picture of for some reason, even though I feel like it would be the easiest fucking thing in the world to just, like, get a piece of toast with Marmalade on it and take a picture we're of getting, it. We're getting into a session where they're just not giving a fuck anymore. They don't even include the word sandwich. <laughs> I mean, there's quite a few of them where they don't include the, the, the word sandwich, so it's kind of inconsistent in general. Uh, but yeah, Marmalade from the UK. White bread, butter, and orange marmalade. Popularized by the Paddington books by Michael Bond. No one knew what marmalade was before Paddington showed up. No one before cared. Paddington rolled around. No one cared who he was till they put on the hat and raincoat. 
everybody was aware, but nobody thought to combine butter with second butter. <laughs> God. <laughs> Everyone was aware, but no one was a bear. Marmite from the United Kingdom. Some prefer cheese with their marmite. Here is two slices of cheese on an extra large slice of bread coated thickly in marmite. I wonder what that... What does it taste like? Uh, it's got kind of like a... Like a deep, like... Savory, really intense taste to it, apparently. Uh... Marmite spread I've, thinly with butter and margarine on toast bread. Yeah. So, like... I've, I've had it, like, once, and I can't describe it to you. I want to have it. The big thing that I hear a lot from people is that uh, first-time Marmite goers, like, make the fucking mistake of, oh, well, it's like a spread, so I gotta put it thickly, like peanut butter or jam, on this piece of, on this piece of toast. No, 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 no. No. You don't do that. What you do is you butter up your toast... And you put a thin, like a very, very thin layer of Marmite. Uh, and then like you like, if that doesn't feel like enough to you, then like next time you try it, you do a little bit more. Like you're supposed to do a little bit because it has a really, really super strong taste. Uh, Marmite is a savory food spread made from yeast extract. Uh, someone asked what, what Marmite was. That's what it is. It's, it's, it's yeast extract spread, which is apparently, it's apparently pretty strange, good. Strange but, purple slop. Yeah, it's 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 definitely like an acquired taste, but like I've heard some people say that it's it's very good. You just have to eat it right. <laughs> uh, it's funny. I was watching uh, a stream from one of the Warframe devs the other day, and for some reason the topic of Marmite came up, and they were just like, you know what they need to do is they need to take Marmite and they need to mix it into butter and sell it, like, pre-sold, like, mixed into the butter, so that you just spread that on the toast and you know exactly how much is supposed to be in there, like, like, solution-wise. Alright, but how do we make it fuck? <laughs> how do we make Marmite butter fuck toast? Next up is Martino. From Belgium. Yeast extract spread tastes like dark beer that's hyper concentrated. I guess that makes sense considering how like yeast is used in the the process of beer making. It's it is presumably a byproduct of it that. It is part yeast. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine eating a beer toast. Strong. The Martino from Belgium. No image, but we do have one source, so it's allowed to stay. A demi baguette with filet américain or filet américain steak tartare, which is like raw raw steak, right? Yeah. Uh, with pickles, chopped onions, tomatoes, Tabasco, and mustard, or alternatively, Martino or Worcestershire sauce, and topped with anchovies. Some variations have lettuce and slices of boiled egg added. I must I... say, this is a vicious sandwich. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever be brave enough to try uh, tartare. That that sounds too scary for me. I, I don't I don't want to risk eating a raw meat and plenty of it. Wait wait wait, raw meat, plenty of it. You crack an egg on it. Add in some salted anchovies. This is the hangover cure that David Lynch's character was talking oh, about in that one episode shit. of Twin Peaks. <laughs> Holy right. shit! He was talking about a Martino. Holy shit! Holy shit. He had a, a variation of a martino because he said to crack an egg on it, whereas this has put a boiled egg Right. On. So I, I suppose that's not quite the same, but my god, I'm having a fucking brain explosion right now. <laughs> god, I gotta get around to watching Twin Peak one of these days. Next up is the meatball. Mmm. Meatball sandwich with Asiago cheese. That's also, like, that is definitely a meatball sandwich, and that does look good. That is not the picture I would pick for a meatball sandwich. This this seems like a very sort of, like, dressed-up low-sauce meatball sandwich, and also yeah. the fucking caption just... Mmm, meatball sandwich. <laughs> God... <laughs> Fuck. The cheese being on top is very funny to me. <laughs> From United States. Meatballs and marinara sauce with melted parmesan or provolone cheese on a long bun or section of Italian loaf. 
might include Italian-style accompaniments such as bell peppers, basil, or Italian-dressed lettuce. A meatball sub, honestly, one of my favorite sandwiches. It's good. It's good. Uh, Medianoche. Roasted pulled pork and ham with uh, manchego cheese, pickles, and roasted garlic mayo. The salad is more of an afterthought. The sandwich is excellent, though. <laughs> the salad is a mere afterthought. Oh, it, it does say mere afterthought. Fuck, I misread that. <laughs> it was even more condescending than what you read. Fuck! <laughs> this, this caption is written by the fucking food critic villain from Ratatouille. <laughs> Before he went full cruelty, I guess. Roast pork, ham, mustard, Swiss cheese, and dill pickles served on sweet bread. Sounds good. Sounds fine. Next up. Yeah, Cuban sandwiches are good in general. Yeah, every single one I've seen on here that said it's from Cuba has just been kind of like, oh, shit, yeah, I would eat that. Holy shit. <laughs> Next up. The melt. A tuna melt sandwich on a plate with french fries is served by the 101 Coffee Shop at 6145 Franklin Avenue in Hollywood, California, USA. According to their online menu as viewed on 2009-07-17, uh, they serve tuna melts oh, with, quote, shop. fresh dill, celery, and a touch of lemon, with a, quote, choice of french fries, salad, potato salad, or mashed potatoes, included in the purchase price. <laughs> tuna melts. <laughs> Just having to having to quote the choice of side and tuna melt. <laughs> <laughs> Just single tuna melt by itself. <laughs> God. Oh, I remember this place. Have I been to this place? Sorry, I got distracted by the diner <laughs> that they mentioned there. No, I don't think I've ever been here. I mean, I've, I've seen this place before. I don't think I've ever been inside, though. Mm -hmm. it, it is permanently closed. It is gone. You cannot go there anymore. Oh, shit. The f the last known uh, artifact the last known lifted <laughs> from one one coffee shop before it was destroyed. God, lost to time forever. <clears throat> also, I just noticed people have been given a bunch of bits, and there's a hype train going. I just realized. Thank y'all for that. That's very generous of you. Ah, uh, but the melts from the United States. Generic sandwich containing a filling and a layer of cheese, grilled or fried until the cheese is melted. I, I typically, when I see a melt, it's not just oh you put whatever in there and melt the cheese. It's like it's like a tuna salad or a chicken salad or something like that to that effect. Uh, I'm not a fan of the tuna melt specifically because I'm not super keen on like fish with cheese. Uh, but I mean, I, I've, I've, I've tried other kinds and I thought they were okay. The real shit, the real shit is the patty melt. Ooh, what's that? Yeah. It is a hamburger patty in a melt. Oh, that does sound good. And it's usually got uh, grilled onions, too. Oh, fuck. That sounds good. Oh, oh, I'd eat that. Oh. Next up. Oh, I do see a Monte Cristo down there. We'll get to that soon. There Next is. up is the Met. Oh, sorry. You were saying something? Oh, no. I was just saying there it is. Ah, we finally found <clears> it. <throat> but first, we have to go through the Met Brochen. Well, it is this. Uh, it's looking very raw. <laughs> this looks like a geode. I was just about to say, this is a meat geode. <laughs> oh, they Hopefully this. I'll find a, a rare crystal. They're adding this to Minecraft soon. <laughs> From Germany. Open sandwich, consisting of a sliced bun topped with mitt, seasoned minced raw pork without bacon. Frequently with a garnish of raw onion rings or diced raw onion. I again, I, I feel iffy about eating raw meat, but, like, it's one of those things where it's, like, people have been eating this in various places for years in the world, so, like, evidently they're doing something right if it's not instantly killing them, but also, I don't know. <laughs> people have also been doing tightrope walking for a long time, and a, a good deal of them seem to be alive. <laughs> I, just can't, I can't believe that image... That, that might be the prize winner for worst image on the entire page. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite Clip, foul. Like, it looks like it's been almost completely eaten. <laughs> it's like the 
the the unmistakable evidence that someone this wasn't just cut open this was like bit into right multiple times <laughs> someone, someone bit halfway into this raw meat sandwich and was like you know that would be a great time to take a picture of this someone had their like way it, with it like it looks like it it was taken it looks like it was almost completely eaten it looks like it was on eaten on a frisbee it looks like it was taken outside at sunrise. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the first light of day. Perfect time for a mint broxen. This sandwich has had such an eventful life. <laughs> uh, next up is the Mezcla. Again, uh, no image, uh, but multiple sources, so this is legitimate. Uh, Newt After Dark says, to be fair, that's just how mint broxen looks sometimes when you get them. Ah, so they have that pre-eaten look to them. <laughs> it's it's the style. It's in vogue. Next up is the mezcla from Puerto Rico. A tea sandwich made from blended spam, cheese dip, sometimes cheddar and cream cheese, and pimento peppers and other spices on white bread, often served at parties. Okay, so it's like a... It's like a chicken salad or a tuna salad, but for spam. It's a spam salad sandwich. I've hmm. never tried spam. Spam is good. I I didn't. I never saw the point of it until someone pointed out that it's just like, no, you just cook it with soy sauce and eat it with eggs, and it's if like, you, oh. If you fry spam, it's pretty nice. Yeah. I've I've heard a lot of people be like, yeah, it gets a bad rep, but you can like do a lot of good stuff with it. So it's like it is one of the cheapest foods imaginable. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll give it a try someday. Yeah, spam mus- spam musubi is like the the peak peak use of spam. Yeah, that's that's the one that I hear a lot. What 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 is it exactly? I, th- I think it's, it's basically, a Hawaiian thing. Yeah, it, it's just kind of like a a sushi but of spam. It's like a, yeah, a sushi, a sushi with fried spam. Yeah, it's like sushi with a type of rice and bound with a seaweed. I'd try that. That sounds good. Uh, next up, we have the. Uh, Mitraillette, uh, I think is how you pronounce that. Apologies if my voice does sound different. Uh, I realized I've been like sitting for most of the stream, and I really ought to like stand up for a bit. So I'm like a little bit far away from my mic now, but not like super far. Uh, but if my voice, like the acoustics, sound a bit different, that's why. Apologies, uh, <laughs> apologies for hoarseness. We're at the M portion of the list of sandwiches on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> we are deep in it. We are like. Uh, just a little over halfway through, maybe closer to two thirds, honestly, uh, because some of these are pretty short, uh, and some of these we don't have much to say about them. But here's the mitraillette, which is, um, you know, you've got uh, caramel, you've got caramel cheese and cotton candy flavors. <clears throat> Take your pick. Wow, you've... that is what? What is that? This is uh, the seasonal pre-chewed <laughs> gum sandwich. <laughs> Pepto Bismol sauce. You're right. Uh, tubby custard and magma. <laughs> I was thinking tubby custard. It's like, but the thing is, it looks like tubby custard mixed with something. Here, here, here's the thing that scares me the most about this, and I'm not going to click on the the article to learn more because that's funnier. But here's the thing that scares me the most. The description is just French fries and fried meat. With sauce on a demi baguette. Sauce what is, unknown. What is the sauce? You know, the world will never know. You know, honestly, like I feel like this could be, this could be the new. What kind of friend are you? Like you show somebody, <laughs> you show somebody the top image with the pink. What do you describe this image for me? Oh, it, it, <laughs> what it, is this? It's. it's Bubblegum sauce. Oh, it's Pepto Bismol. Oh, it's Tubby Custard. <laughs> which which friend are you? <laughs> I'm the Tubby Custard friend. It's the it's the litmus test for perception in human beings. The the mitraillette is a sandwich that says much about the person eating it. Uh, apparently, the translate the literal translation of mitraillette is submachine gun. This is the submachine gun sandwich. Okay. <laughs> It's okay. the gift that keeps on giving this meal. Thank you, the people of Belgium. Thank for you, making Belgium. one of the most vexing things imaginable. Honestly. They peaked when they made french fries, and so they figured, well, 
it's all downhill from here. We might as well like we might as well bottom it as soon as we can. But they like fucked up and made something better. Next up is Molette or Molette. I'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce that exactly. I, I never am sure about like the typically, pronunciations for 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 Spanish, especially typ- with like no accents. Typically with Spanish, the double L is kind of a like a Y. It's a Y. Oh, so it's Molette or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm learning so much about Spanish today, which is really funny because I expected to be teaching people about sandwiches <laughs> from Mexico. Open sandwich consisting of a bollillo roll topped with refried beans, cheese and peppers, and grilled. Okay, so it's beans on toast. It sounds fine. Refried beans are good. I fucking love refried beans, honestly. I kind of want some right now. I mean, not right now. Now it's 1047 at night, but like soon. Yeah, it's perfect time. (laughs) Time to take a five hour break from stream to make some refried beans. Next up is the Montadito, which links to a different sandwich called the Serenito. That worries me. They're cheating. They're putting it higher up on the list. Picture of a Montadito of salmon. That's that's salmon on a crouton. That, that's that, nothing. <laughs> that that does just look like a hunk of salmon and also <laughs> like a single bread crust. <laughs> A, a, a little bit fell on the bread plate. Quick, snap that, snap that picture. It counts. It counts. It's legal. It's it counts. From Spain. Look at the and, description. From Spain and Portugal, small, usually grilled, and may contain a variety of fillings. <laughs> Again, it could be fucking anything. Just that it's, it's impossible small. to say. Scientists are still discovering new Montaditos every day. Every day, our bravest men and women are out in the field. They're digging deep in the topsoil. They're finding new Montaditos, and they're so small. <sighs> Some bars offer a variety of 200 different types of these sandwiches. Citation needed. <laughs> this, this will appear on Balp's Tiny Food Hour. For sure. Next up is the Monte Cristo, which every time I see it, I want to say Monte Carlo, which is a different, a different Monte entirely. Uh, and the it's Count nice. of Monte Carlo. Yeah. Mostly when I think of Monte Carlo, I think from the gun from Destiny. <laughs> 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 because it's the gun that lets you punch more, and I like punching things. From Fuller's Coffee Shop. United States, Switzerland, and France. Sliced ham and cheese, usually Emmental or Gruyere, between slices of French toast and batter fried. In some regions, it's sprinkled with powdered sugar and served with jelly or jam. In other regions, New England. It is served savory with French mustard and no powdered sugar. So it's essentially like a a croc monsieur, except it's made with French toast and powdered sugar. That they, sounds good. They, they, yeah. they fucked it's, it up in the yeah, best it, possible way. It's crunchy, it's got sugar, you dip it in raspberry jam. Yeah. Very nice. That just sounds like a hot new take on breakfast lunch, and I'm into it. It is, yeah. it's great. It, it is It is brunch material. I <laughs> I think the only place that I've ever had a Monte Cristo at is called Binnegan's, which I don't <laughs> even know if, I don't even, they might have killed Binnegan's at some point. Poor I haven't Binnegan. seen one in a long time, but uh, that was that was the homeland of the Monte Cristo in my eyes. Nice. Next up, one of my favorite sandwiches, a local classic, the Montreal style smoked meat. Yeah, this is this is a picture from Schwartz's. Schwartz's is uh, if here's here's my hot tip: if you're going to Montreal and you want a smoked meat sandwich, uh, here's what you do: you go to where Schwartz's is, and you look at uh, like what the lineup around there is. Uh, is the lineup tolerable for Schwartz's? Go to Schwartz's. It's fucking great. Uh, is the lineup far too long for you? You don't want to stand around in line all day? Across the street, I don't remember the name of it, across the street and not too far, there is a literal other smoked meat restaurant you can go to. And Gortz's. they're also fucking great. Go there. Gortz's. <laughs> <laughs> God. Um, uh, first of all, this this picture looks great. 
The mm. sandwich looks great. I'd absolutely eat it. That <laughs> mustard looks radioactive. Like the, <laughs> it is, it is so saturated. Like I don't know if they did something to this photograph or if it just naturally looks like that. We it's need, dangerous. We need the yellowest mustard we got. Uh, I don't know why people are posting Lola's. There's no Lola around here. Did, did I think happen? it's actually it's actually cup. Oh, it's a, uh, it, a it's, false it's, cup sighting. Cup detected. Cup detected. Warning. 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 <laughs> cup is logs, cat. Man, oh, now I just want a smoked meat sandwich. Sandwich made from cured and smoked brisket with yellow mustard, usually on rye bread. It's fucking good. It's fucking good. It's good. It's uh. You know, similar to uh, earlier on the list, we had the uh, the, the corn, not, not not corned beef. Was it corned beef? Yeah, corned beef. Similar to that. Uh, I love the movie ticket that's by corned beef. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's similar to it, but it has enough differences to it that it's like, you know, it's, it's definitely worth trying as its own thing. It's good. Next up, the mortadella. Uh, it's just mortadella in a sandwich. Dripping a little. <laughs> this sandwich will sweat in your presence, so please be ready. From Italy. Any sandwich containing mortadella. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> it's mortadella. Next up, the mother-in-law. And I will be honest, seeing this like tiny thumbnail from far away... Uh, it literally just looks like a whole lobster with its claws, like, either pressed together or removed. Uh, it is not that. It is evident. hard to parse. It is, like... This also looks like geological in structure. Looking inside of it, like... This is another an, rock type an ancient An ancient hot dog found deep below the Earth's surface. <laughs> Thank you, Hulk Hogan's Pasta Mania, for the 14-month resub. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hot dog bun containing a sh Chicago-style corn roll tamale, topped with chili. We're making sandwich. Oh, hell yes, hell yes, hell yes. So, hell so wait, that actually, yes. that actually sounds pretty good. Yeah, so it's another just type of tamale sandwich. It's just, it's just a tamale and a hot dog bun. Yeah, like and chili. Th that does sound good. This is the second instance of we just put a tamale in a sandwich on this list, and like the first one, it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Doc brings up a good point. Chicago has tamales? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is news to me. Chicago, you know, it's famous for its tamale scene. <laughs> Maybe it is. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't I mean, know either. I mean, in, in the big cities, like, as long as you're not in that, that weird kind of mid south east coast area i feel like any big city is going to have at least some kind of representation of that kind that's true i unfortunately i don't think quebec does and every day i'm sad about it i went to like visit a friend uh over in washington state on the west coast and we went to like a little hole in the wall mexican place and i had my first ever tamale there and it changed my fucking life they're good as hell they're fucking good they're fucking good. They're fucking good. I want to eat them. Uh, Chicago's unique style of tamale, a machine-extruded cornmeal roll wrapped in paper instead of corn husks, which is typically cooked in a hot dog steamer, according to hmm. uh, Alamander Miscellany in chat. Interesting. Huh. I feel like you're losing some of the charm by cooking it in paper instead of a corn husk, but, you know, I mean, it hey, does sound if, good. if it's easier to make and it still tastes good, I mean, I'd eat it. Next up is the uh, Mufaletta. Mufaletta! At Central Grocery, New Orleans. This is a real, uh, hey, check this out kind of picture. <laughs> Bro, come peep the sandwich I got. Bro, check, check out the sandwich I just bought. Took a bite already. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hold back. I take a bite. From the United States. Originated in New Orleans Italian American community, this contains meats, <laughs> cheeses, and olive salad. <laughs> it contains stuff <laughs> and ingredients and olive salad. I spent 20 minutes looking into it. I couldn't figure out what kind of meats. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, they won't tell us. I kept I kept asking the lady at the counter, and she kept telling me she would call security, but security isn't a meat. 
So what gives? Listen, it has meats, cheeses. What more do you need to know? It has meats, it has cheeses, it's about five ninety nine. Are you buying or are you leaving? Apparently YouTube's back up. It was down? Uh, it was or... down, I checked it, and it looks like it's down, like, specifically for people in, like, the Los Angeles County area, which is really bizarre. It's still huh. up for me. No, that's the thing. It's like, yeah, I, because I was like, oh, YouTube's down. But then someone in chat earlier said, like, YouTube works for me. And I'm like, really? And I looked it up and, like, it's specifically, according to Down Detector, so could could be fake. But, like, it's almost entirely localized to, like, L.A., S Southern California, Nevada area. Baffling. Very baffling. And I heard, and I saw somebody else say that it worked fine when they used a VPN. So I don't know what the <laughs> fuck is happening. Jeez. I guess one of their ingest servers or something just, like shit the bed or something. Next up on the list, we have reached letter N. Non. And here is a vegetarian non burger. Yeah, baby. From India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. Vegetables or beef on non bread. Uh, non bread is fucking delicious. It is well, I think you can put a bit more bread. beef on it. I mean, yeah. You can basically put whatever you want on it and call it a sandwich. Yeah, yeah, you're 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 inventing the sandwich whenever you have the naan at your disposal. Right? Yeah, like it's cool. just it 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 defines what the bread is that you use, which is like a meaningful distinction in and of itself. So it deserves to be on the list of sandwiches. But like, <laughs> it's it's funny that it's like, oh, you know, you put vegetables on it or beef, and then like they don't specify anything else. Well, actually, uh, the, the the funny thing is like. They say beef specifically, and I guess like it might be different for like Pakistani. But mm. you know, if you're if you're sitting down at an Indian place, you know, you're getting chicken or like mutton, right? Or yeah, lamb. There's, there, there's like this one Indian place near uh, where I used to work, where like they do like really good uh, like curries and stuff that you can get on like a on like your lunch break or whatever. And they also do, like, takeaway as, like, these, like, wrapped non sandwiches, like, wraps kind of thing. And you can get, like, their... They have, like, a, a chicken they do for it. They also, like, do one that's, like, you can put butter chicken in it sort of thing. And, like, it's good. It's delicious. Uh, I don't think they offer a beef one. Yeah, you'll get just about everything but beef at an Indian place. Mm -hmm. I don't often see a lot of... There, there are, like, a lot of Indian places uh, in, in Quebec, or at least around like, the Montreal area. Uh... And, like, beef is never, like, one of the big things uh, on, like, the menus. Like, there's a lot of chicken, there's a lot of vegetarian options, there's, like, there's, like, shrimp and stuff. And I, I think that might be, like, like, uh, January in chat says, like, a lot of Hindus don't eat beef. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's part of the religion. Mm -hmm. So, like, it, it, I guess that makes sense. Like, yeah, they don't, they wouldn't serve beef there. Uh, but it, it is funny that it specifies that here. Uh but, you know, it, 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 it is also a thing in, like, Pakistan and Bangladesh, so it might be related to that. Uh, next up is the, uh, and again, I'm going to pronounce this so, so poorly, the uh, Oblogene Schlebiki. I don't know the specific, like, accents on, like, the, the consonants in, in Czech, uh, so I don't know how to pronounce those. This is... <laughs> it's an army! <laughs> yeah! This is a There's two of them. This is a platoon of little guys ready to go to the dinner war. <laughs> yeah, they got their sword and shield and everything. Salute. They I may am... not. Some of you will not survive. I am literally standing at attention, saluting these brave boys. Respect. <laughs> these are the only troops I respect. <laughs> Typical snack of Czech Republic. From Czech Republic. Type of open sandwich served as an appetizer or snack. It doesn't really specify what's on it, but I guess you can you you can get what's on it out of this picture. I think this one's pretty easy to reverse engineer. Yeah, it's you know, you got ham, you got Except a, for you that got indeterminate egg. slop. That's probably that seems to be in there. Chicken question mark? Tuna question mark? The whole long not... pickle slice. Some pepper. Yeah, that's snack. Uh, next up, open faced. Mm-hmm. You know, 
That that thing that we've been uh, specifying is like a type of sandwich that you can have throughout this whole list. That thing that uh, at the top of the list they did say, oh, you know, uh, in the case of an open sandwich, there's only one slice of bread. The thing where multiple of these have been an open-faced sandwich consisting of only one slice of bread with, with fillings on top. The thing where in Germany, where they specifically apparently invented taking bread and putting butter on it. Hey, Holly, can you do me a favor? I can do you so many favors, my friend. Just just to cut ahead a little and make sure, can you scroll down to S and see if the word sandwich is in there as a listing? Sandwich loaf is on there. Okay. <laughs> I, I was... Okay, we're fine. But... All right. <sighs> tuna, guacamole, sauce, and cherry tomatoes, open-faced tuna sandwich. <sighs> that's just avocado. I don't think that's guacamole. Does this say guacamole? Did it? It said guacamole sauce. Oh. That's just avocado. That That is just kind of pulped avocado. I mean, which is good. Origin. Nordic. Such as Sweden, Finland, Norway, Denmark, Iceland, and Estonia. United States. <laughs> I like I know that like a lot of different Only two and... places in the world you can get an open face sandwich. Yeah, like I <laughs> I know that like a lot of like Nordic countries do have a lot of like traditional open face sandwiches that they eat. But like the fucking way this is worded just makes me think of like, oh, you know, that thing that the Vikings like invented and discovered and founded, which was then lost to time until the United States. Holy shit. Hang on, sorry, there's a landmine at the end of this entry. Okay. <sighs> Consists of a single slice of bread with one or more food items on top. See also pizza. <laughs> I mean they're not wrong. <laughs> I mean, we're kind of, we're getting into the nitty gritty here with lists of sandwiches, but you know, I'm not a Wikipedia editor. I don't, I don't know these things. Pizza, that famous thing invented in the Nordic countries and the United States. Famous type of sandwich, pizza. <laughs> that famous sandwich that the Vikings invented and always had with them, the pizza. Wars were fought over this. God. Norway was built on pizza, and by God, it'll die on pizza. <sighs> Next up. <laughs> Maybe one that won't get me quite as pedantically exhausted. <laughs> Is the pambazo. Pambazos, shredded meat on a bun soaked in chili sauce, generally sold on the street in Mexico. These were ordered for sale outside the Plaza de Toros in Mexico City. That does sound good. <laughs> Fuck. Holy shit. Sign. Sign in chat just saying, My ancestors are smiling on me, little Caesars. Can you say the same? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> ah, from Mexico. Made with panbazo bread dipped in a red uh, guajillo pepper sauce and filled with potatoes and chorizo. Oh, that sounds that great. Doesn't, that doesn't look like it has potatoes and chorizo. It, I, Those I, just look kind of like buns. Yeah, I think this might just be the bread and, like, the meat is on the side here. Ah, okay. Another another deconstructed sandwich. Mm -hmm. A little imagination <laughs> is needed to bring the whole sandwich into bring. This 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 is just a sample. You have to you you have to go there to really experience it yourself. I wouldn't want to take that away from you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just a concept of like somebody going and not really knowing what any of the stuff is and just takes pictures of all of it and <laughs> tells you the best. Check out this weird shit I saw in the street. Someone going to like a street vendor, just taking all the pictures of it and just being like, oh my god. Is this meal? What is that? Hamburgers? <laughs> what are you doing over here? This must be the sandwich. I mean, look. <laughs> they got Don't you the see the bread? And, and look, on the inside, they've got red stuff. So that's a sandwich, right? <sighs> Next is the pan, pan bagna. Uh, the pan bagna is a sandwich that is a specialty of the region of nice France. <laughs> nice. I know it's not actually pronounced nice, but I'd like to pronounce it that way. Uh, the sandwich is composed of a circle formed white bread around the classic salade niçoise. Or niçoise, I'm never sure. Uh, a salad composed mainly of raw vegetables, hard-boiled eggs, anchovies and or tuna, and olive oil. The name of the sandwich comes from the local Provençal language dialect of Nisar, 
in which pan banya means wet bread. It is often misspelled as pain banya or pain banya, uh, which, while correct in French, is not the spelling used in Nisar. Uh, the pan banya is a popular lunchtime dish in the region around Nice. That's how you actually pronounce it. It's not nice as much as I wish it was. Where it is sold in most bakeries and on most markets, the pan banya and the Salad Nichoise are strongly linked to the city of Nice, where they have been, over time, developed out of locally available ingredients. Neat. I've actually, uh, I went to France once, and I actually was in Nice for, like, a day. It's, like, a mm-hmm. really, really beautiful city. But yeah. gotta, gotta tell you, the joke of just, like, every single sign saying the word nice <laughs> doesn't stop being funny at any point. Yeah! <laughs> Just, like, a bunch of signs, like, written in French, and then you just, like, get, like, to a very big sign that just says nice. I wonder if there are any people, like, from that area who, like, you know, go to school, uh, learn English as a language, and then come back home and look at the signs of their, like, hometown and just be like, Man. Oh, fuck. That's great. Bet there's no 69th Avenue? Oh god, there needs to be. There needs to be. There truly needs to be in this day and age. They've gotta. Round bread, uh, bread banya, topped with green salad, tomatoes, hard-boiled eggs, tuna, anchovies, cucumbers, fava beans, artichokes, green peppers, radishes, onions, basil, and black olives. That's oh, so Jesus. much. That's a lot. This, this somehow has more ingredients of it in terms of amount than uh, the Dagwood did. The Dagwood just had more, like, volume-wise. Condiments may include garlic, vinegar, olive oil, salt, and pepper. Served. Chilled. Yeah, we just kind of took the whole pantry and we just dumped it inside the sandwich. We, we really did a number on it. Take a fucking bite, though, man. I tell ya. Panini! Italian sandwich. Unspecified. <laughs> Wait. That's not a panini. Wait. Hang on. Why isn't it grilled? <laughs> oh wait, hang on. Am I just misunderstanding what a panini is? Is a panini not Maybe? Okay. Hey, let's read. From Italy. In Italy, panino is the word for a sandwich made from bread other than sliced bread. Uh, in which case Italians call it trem- tremisino. Thank you, Shekria, for the nine month resub. I appreciate nine. that. Examples of bread types used are ciabatta, rosetta, and baguette. The bread is cut horizontally and filled with deli ingredients such as salami, ham, cheese, mortadella, or other food and is sometimes, sometimes pressed by a warming grill. Ah. Uh, in the United States, UK, and Canada, the term panini is used to refer to a long pressed and toasted sandwich. Uh, there is widespread availability and use of sandwich presses, often known as panini presses. I see. So, uh, like, in Italy, it's not specifically... Um, like it's a, not implicitly grilled. Yeah, but, but in, like, Canada, that's kind of the understanding. Kind of like how... Uh, in, like, uh, United States and Canada, you say pickle, and what comes to mind immediately is pickled cucumber, whereas, like, that's not necessarily what that means uh, yeah. as, as like, the default. It's just, you know, our, our, our sort of shorthand for that. Interesting. This is, honestly, a really sort of interesting deep dive into linguistics, uh, <laughs> as well as sandwiches. <laughs> Pastrami on rye. Thank you, Toby.web for that 12-month visa. I appreciate it. Pastrami on rye. Pastrami also very similar to Montreal-style smoked meat. Uh, not exactly the same. The distinguishing, like, factor there is, like, important. And, like, like, it's, it's, it's enough to, like, make the distinguishment, like, meaningful. Uh, but they are very similar in a lot of ways. There's nothing... <laughs> That's just a photo of some people's hands, like, <laughs> and sandwiches. Uh-huh. And there's nothing there's nothing in it that implies this, but I'd like to imagine that they're really impressed. <laughs> they're just like, like... The guy in the, like, the guy in the back is, like, poking it, or the uh-huh. person in the back is poking it in disbelief. The person in front's like, wow, look at this. I, I like look to what's Im- in here. I like to imagine there's someone just off, off camera that's, like, petting it gently. <laughs> wow. This is amazing. Wow. Also, yeah, this is totally a jazz solo cup. Uh, United States, New York City, NY, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Iceland, and Estonia. A sandwich made famous in the Jewish coaster delicatessens of New York City. Okay, I was using the right the right word by calling them delicatessens then. Nice. Anyways, pastrami's fucking good. It is. The patty melt. 
Here we go. Uh. Woo. <laughs> Patty melt sandwich. <laughs> On a plate with french fries and garnished with tomatoes, lettuce, and pickles. As served I by- I promise, I promise they're better looking than this. Oh, I believe you. I mean, given <laughs> given the quality of so many of the pictures we've seen on here, that yeah. would that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, you could go to Whataburger right now and get one that's probably gonna just beat this one's ass. Yeah. Yeah, but this one is from Dinah's Family Restaurant at 4800 Fremont Boulevard in Fremont, California, USA. Patty Melt at Dinah's Family Restaurant. And it's well, a, a problem. And it's a W. It's a W colon Patty Melt. A it's a whoop Patty Melt. <laughs> When you woo! Hang on, I can bring it up on screen. <laughs> Great. Fucking awesome. Consists of a hamburger patty, pieces of sautéed or grilled onion, and cheddar or Swiss cheese between two slices of bread. It, it sounds like there's like quite a bit of onion in this too. Which, I mean, I'm into. I fucking love onion. There's a reasonable amount. Hell yeah. Yeah, Doc, I fucking love the Dreadmore soundtrack. I got that on, like, regular playthrough on, like, most of my, my, my playlists what have video game music in them. It's good tunes. It's good listening. It's it's good sandwich music. You you, you sit down, you crack open a cold Dungeons & Dreadmore soundtrack with the boys, you chow down on a sandwich, you have a good day. Next up is the pea meal bacon sandwich from Canada. No picture, but it's pea meal bacon, which is a type of back bacon in a Kaiser roll. I've Why never heard of this. Meal? I don't know. It's wet cured, unsmoked back bacon made from trimmed, lean, boneless pork loin rolled in cornmeal. But. Ah. But why is it called pea meal if it's cornmeal? I mean, it looks good. It does look good. It's apparently, uh, like a big thing in Ontario, which ah. explains why I've never really had any of it. Next up is the peanut butter and jelly. There it is. A peanut butter and jelly sandwich made with Skippy peanut butter and Welch's grape jelly on white grape. Okay. Gen <laughs> gen genuine question. <laughs> what? <laughs> just the just the specifying the brands. <laughs> yeah, okay, that is pretty funny. Genuine question though. Mm -hmm. Do people actually eat like PB and J with like grape jelly and like enjoy it? I don't think I ever have. Like, it is I'm sure always, people do. It has always been strawberry jam for me. Yeah, I usually use, like, strawberry or raspberry. It, it has I'm, always I'm seeing been a lot of yeses. Jam. I'm seeing a lot of yeses. I think there's a, a plenty of people who use grape jelly. Huh. Like, raspberry, I can see. I kind of want to try that. For some reason, the taste of grape does not, in my brain seem like it would go well with peanut butter, but a lot of people evidently are saying they they, they do it and enjoy it, so it's like... I'd imagine it yeah. tastes good. I've never tried it. I usually just pick maybe, raspberry maybe or strawberry. Maybe it doesn't taste bad, yeah. Huh. Maybe I'll have to give that a try someday. From the United States. <laughs> I like Wolf Moth in chat saying, if you mix spreads at all, you are a beast of the realm. <laughs> What brand, is, yeah. grim indictment. <laughs> <laughs> what brand is the white bread? It is almost certainly Wonder. It is almost certainly Wonder Bread. Nah, it'd be it'd be more square if it were Wonder Bread. Oh, is it? I, it I don't actually the, know what Wonder Bread looks like. I just know it's like. I mean, it looks like that. American that brand. is that is the exact type of bread that Wonder Bread is. But I think like shape wise, different. Mm -hmm. Here in uh, Canada, the the big. Uh, the big white bread, at least in my area, is uh, palm bread, P-O-M. And oh. um, it is, I learned, to my absolute glee and delight, uh, a subsidiary of the Bimbo family of brands. Wonderful. <laughs> the good stuff. Bimbo think... is, like, really common over here. I'll just see trucks with Bimbo plastered on them <laughs> driving around all the time. <sighs> I think their bread tastes like dog shit, but, I mean, it's, it's, the, big, it's the big name brand around here. Yeah. <laughs> Jam is often used in place of jelly, also known as a PB&J. PB&J may also be served with fresh fruit rather than jam, with thin sliced apples, pears, or bananas. I... I ain't never heard of that. 
I, but this, it I sounds mean, all right. I've had peanut butter and banana sandwiches. They're delicious. I've had peanut butter and apple sandwiches. They're delicious. I've never had a peanut butter and pear sandwich. It sounds good. I would not consider that to be the same category as a PB and J. The, the 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 jelly is very specifically like a preserve. It's 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 different. It's a different texture. It's a different consistency. It's a different flavor profile. Like I I feel like that is like deserves its own sort of distinction. Like stretching stretching the definition of a peanut butter and jelly. Peanut and butter <laughs> and banana. And ye- <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have enough room in the article. Had to uh, consolidate. And yet fucking a ham sandwich is considered legally distinct enough from a ham and pickle and ham and cheese. <sighs> List of sandwiches. <laughs> Next up is a pebete from Argentina. Uh, el pepete de jamón y queso con tomate que desayune esta mañana. I couldn't tell you what that says, but I think I pronounced it kind of okay, maybe sort of not great. But uh, what I can tell you is that this small thumbnail from far away, um, every time I look at it and glance at it, I think it's an isopod. I keep thinking this is an isopod. Oh, I can see that. Like, this looks like the segmented body and limbs. It looks like an isopod to me. Yeah. Also, yeah, PB and J is a fucking it's a it's a workhorse of a sandwich. Not 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 sorry, not PB and J, like that is too, but peanut butter and banana is fucking great. I used to do that a lot for, for school lunches and like college lunches. Uh, and then whenever I had classes where someone was like allergic to peanut butter and I couldn't eat that, I would sub that in for like uh cream cheese and, and jam, which is also pretty good. Uh yeah, this is from Argentina. Simple Argentine sandwich, traditionally filled with cheese, cured meat, tomato, and mayonnaise. Pebete actually refers to the bread used for the sandwich, a soft oval bun with a spongy inside and a thin toasted crust. It's it's interesting how, like, several of these sandwiches are kind of like, you know, like, you could just kind of do whatever with the, with the, 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 the fillings, but the distinguishing factor tends to be, like, the, the bread, which is neat. I, I like that that's, like, something that they, they document here. Also, Ogrish94 in chat describing it as more like an 11 a.m. snack, (laughs) (laughs) which is a wonderful way of describing a type of sandwich. Oh my god, next up is Pepito. Oh my god, Pepito. Pepito is back home! Oh, fucking... (laughs) Me and the rest of, like, the RTVS crew set up a fucking bot in our, like, private uh, friend like group chat just to like alert us whenever the pepito account posts that pepito is out or back home you have to know well, well no it's 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 a bit more than that it's it does, yeah it, yeah um I, I, the channel is currently named pepito the bouncer mr j right and because you can kind of guess what that <laughs> you can infer what three twitter accounts were getting a direct feed of uh-huh. Uh, it, it, isn't it also set up for, like, other channels for the, 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 the Friday night and the Have Fun Fridays? Those post to main. It's not in that channel, though. Right. It's, it's in a different channel, but it's still the same bot, I think. Yeah. It is the same bot, but I think we have designated that one channel as a, a consolidation of those three Twitters specifically. Uh-huh. <laughs> Every day I go, I get a wonderful update about Pepito, and sometimes if I'm lucky, I get to see the video of my bouncer. I... I... I just realized saying that makes me sound like fucking. It, it sounds fucking nothing. It's it's. <laughs> <there> was... <laughs> my, my my bouncer and my squeaker and my keeper, <laughs> my kafuku. There was. <laughs> I I don't remember what it was, but like ages ago, Scorpy typed out a sentence that was like the video of something, but video and of had no space, so it was the video. <laughs> And so I think constantly about just, oh, yes, it's the video of my bouncer. <laughs> God. Oh, thank you, Glass Turf, for the 13-month resub. I do appreciate that. Hi, Holly. Hi. Hi chat. It's funny that I'm eating a sandwich and just happened to stumble upon here. Oh, hell yeah. I hope you're enjoying your sandwich. Sandwiches. That's a fun yes. coincidence. They didn't even realize that sandwich stream was now. They just kind of stumbled in here with a sandwich. 
It was fated. Love to see it. It was meant to be. I've just realized I've eaten two sandwiches today. Wow. My God. Good day for it. Great fucking day for it. The pepito is a steak sandwich that is common in Mexico and Venezuela. In Spain, it also usually contains aioli. I... Probably because it's 11.21 p.m., I totally misread aioli as topsoil for some reason. And got scared for a second. It's been, it's been known to contain topsoil. <laughs> in Pepito Spain. Pepito is a small black cat in Spain who has been seen rooting around in topsoil. <laughs> the good news is that he's back home. <laughs> as of about four hours ago, Pepito is back home. Thank fucking God. I'm so full from topsoil! Yum! Uh, next up is pepper and egg from the United States, Chicago, Illinois. That seems like another Ooh. sort of omelet sandwich. Ooh, that's <laughs> a, I mean, it looks good, but that's not a not an especially flattering picture of an omelet. Right, like it's an omelet sandwich. I would eat that. I know those are good. I've made those and eaten those. Mm. This is a bit of a dire image. <laughs> it it reminds me of the kind of food I cook, where like. It never comes out looking particularly photogenic, and I'm okay with that. I made it for me. No one else has to look right. at it. Right. I didn't make it to be, like, fucking viral on, on Twitter or whatever. I ate it for my goddamn breakfast. <laughs> so it doesn't need to look good. So this this feels extremely just like a Wikipedia editor made, like, a, a breakfast or a lunch and was just like, you know, I should add that to the list of sandwiches article. Which is probably, like, why a lot of the pictures on here are like that. <laughs> from chicago illinois scrambled eggs and grilled bell peppers served on french bread i mean peppers and, and eggs is good peppers and scrambled egg is good peppers and omelet is good <clears throat> pepper and egg italian italy and the united states in areas where there was a concentration of italian immigrants sauteed italian long hots sliced not diced in olive oil garlic is optional uh, coated with scrambled eggs and cooked until the eggs are firm. Seasoned with salt and pepper and parmesan or other hard-aged cheese, such as romano or pecorino. Uh, then the mixture is stuffed into an Italian-style roll or between two slices of Italian bread. This may also be served with sliced tomatoes. That sounds good. Uh, Long Hot's uh, Wolf Moth came up earlier in uh, another sandwich entry, and it's like a type of pepper. It's 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 the type of it's pepper. long. It's hot. Let's call it long hot. Where's where's the Italian? The Italian is specifically the long hots, which are like a, a an Italian type of pepper, uh, like an Italian American uh, immigrant thing. Uh, it sounds like, and also I guess the fact that they're using Parmesan and Romano and Pecorino, which are Italian cheeses, and then Italian bread. I I I think the distinction uh, here between pepper and egg and pepper and egg Italian is that. Pepper and egg Italian has been made by an Italian. <laughs> I think that's the distinction. Someone in chat did just say Pepito is out. Is he? Is he? Let's, let's check the feed. I my God, just... he is out. My God. That wild son of a gun, he's out. Stay safe out there, Pepito. <laughs> Everyone wish Pepito good luck. I had a dumb idea for a thing that I want to potentially integrate on my stream someday. I don't even know if it's a thing you can do, because I don't know if there's any sort of, uh, like, integration or API for, like, uh, some sort of, like, OBS source that could be updated based on, like, a Twitter post happening. But I love the idea of just, like, whenever there's a Pepito update, just having, like, a big bar go across the screen like a news ticker, just saying, like, Breaking news! Pe Pepito is out! <laughs> That would never be good. explaining it. Holy shit, Freya says you can totally do that. Okay, okay. I need, <laughs> yes. to, I need to look into how to do that then, because my god. I want that so bad. <laughs> Just a browser source that's constantly checking Twitter? That'd be great. Uh -huh. <laughs> Next up, we have the Pilgrim. A Thanksgiving sandwich made with turkey dressing and the cranberries sauce okay so it's the thanksgiving oh this is leftover the sandwich. Th this is the gobbler the the thanksgiving leftovers. right this is this is the one that makes he who shall not be named uh act act a fool it it makes him act up it makes him return to the old him it makes me act a fool i love these i mean they're good roast turkey cranberries or cranberry sauce and cheddar cheese 
Uh, so Canadian Thanksgiving is in October, and it was this, like, passing weekend and Monday. Um, and I completely forgot about it, and so did my family. So we, like, didn't do anything for it. Like, none of us were feeling up to it anyway, so, like, we didn't. Um, but, like, I, I, I don't, like, feel bad about it or regret it, because, you know, it, it ends up being a lot of work, and, like, it's good, but it is, like, a ton of effort and work that you have to put in. But, like... Man, I am gonna miss those leftover sandwiches that will never be. <laughs> Damn. Do you guys eat the same shit we do for Thanksgiving? Basically. Okay. It's it's basically just like you know you you roast a turkey, you got your mashed taters, you got your stuff, and you got your various like uh, vegetables. Your cranberry or, sauce. Your cranberries, yeah. Some your 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 various vegetable casseroles. Same holiday, just a month apart. All right. It's it's makes sense. It's basically just the same thing, but like for. Whatever reason, we just celebrated in October, and I've never really been sure why. It's probably got something to do with, like, the months when, like, uh... Like, 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 immigrants and colonialists came over to, to Canada. But I, I, I don't know, honestly. They were a month early. <laughs> uh, next up is... Pimento Cheese from the United States. Uh, no image. Common food preparation in the southern United States, a spread or relish made with cheese, mayonnaise, pimentos, salt, and pepper, blended to either a smooth or chunky paste. Regional variants incorporate additional ingredients. Also eat, eaten in the United Kingdom, see tea in this, in this list, excuse me, and in the Philippines. So, is this This just, is just, this is an ingredient. Right, this is an ingredient for a sandwich. Uh, like... Is, is it just a sandwich with just this? Or is it just describing, well, you can make this and put it on a sandwich, which I mean is like, yes, you you can, but, but... But, like, is there more to it than that? This is a great fucking song to come up for, for this existential crisis I'm having about pimento cheese on a sandwich. You can have just pimento cheese on a sandwich. I... I don't think I would want to. <laughs> I think I would want something else to go with that. Next up is uh, pistolet, which is uh, a word I'm pretty sure for like a small type of pistol. Uh, the second gun-named sandwich we've encountered on this list so far. Right. Was, wasn't there also one that was just, like, the, the exploder or the bomb or the dynamite or something? Some of these sandwiches are violent. Ah. <laughs> Reminds you very heavily of the tier list of colors where you got frequent repeats of 255-0255 fuchsia. My god, in in so many of these lists, there really are so many things that are just, like, it's the same thing listed again, but with, like, a minor distinction that probably doesn't really matter outside of uh, preconceived cultural notions of it, I suppose. Although, I guess, I don't know how that would apply with colors, but... It's a, it's a very cultural article, this one. It is, and I, for better or for worse, I kind of love that <clears throat> it is. It rules. <sighs> Pistolette. Stuffed and fried bread roll, sometimes called stuffed pistolet, in the Cajun areas around Lafayette. This also refers to a type of submarine-shaped bread about half the size of a baguette that is popular in New Orleans for Vietnamese banh mi and other sandwiches. Type of small breads. Uh, next up, we have the uh, Pieskavika. I believe I pronounced that kind of okay here in sandwich form. Cajun food is really good. I, I, I'm hoping to be able to eat more of it someday. Understandably not a huge thing here outside of, you know, the area where Cajun food was I born and raised. Ted Lego Batman, the video game, 2008. Hey, cool. Congrats on 100%ing Lego Batman, the video game from 2008. Thank you. Congratulations. Hubris. And thank you, Hubris Unleashed, for the resub. I appreciate it. Cajun food is good. Cajun stuff rules. And this sandwich is from the Balkans. Patty dish, popular in the Balkan region of southeastern Europe. A sandwich utilizes uh, the Pieska Vika patty and bread. Curious what that is exactly. Spiced meat patty mixture of pork, beef, and lamb. 
one of the national dishes of Serbia. Neat. Next up, the po' boy. I have wanted to eat oh, a po' boy. Oh boy, baby. I have wanted to eat a fucking po' boy for goddamn years, and I still have never gotten around to it. Maybe one of these days. God, it looks so good. It's it's the kind of sandwich where it's described to me, and I think about it, and I go, yeah, I know I'm going to love that. <clears throat> I want it in my mouth. Put it in my mouth. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Shrimp po' boy from Krabby Jack's restaurant in New Orleans, Louisiana. Photo courtesy of Jason Perlow. Krabby Jack's is a great name for a restaurant. From the United States. Thank you, Mayo Life. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you once again for having that emote. Thank you for not only having the, 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 the Captain Picard feminist sex emote, but for posting it here. <laughs> I have I have been watching through uh through like Star Trek TOS with uh with, with male wife and some of our mutual friends, uh, like every now and then. And I am so excited for the day we finish that and move on to TNG, so I can finally see Jean-Luc Picard ready to have feminist sex. <laughs> anyway, the po' boy. Crusty long roll split and filled with cold cuts, roasted beef, or fried seafood. The New Orleans analog to the sub or hoagie. Nice. One of these days, I will fucking devour it. Next up, the Polish boy. A Polish boy sandwich from Freddy's Southern Style Rib House. Oh, no. What do they do to that sausage? They 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 gave it some serious color. They 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 grilled the shit out of that. It, it might still be good. Sometimes you get that real deep color on it, and it's still good. Sometimes it is just brown or burnt, though. Oh, it's kielbasa. Okay, that makes sense. Oh, so okay. Dark. So it's just normal for sausages like this because they're like smoked, right? Okay, that that makes more sense. That that makes more sense. From Cleveland, Ohio, kielbasa sausage in a bun covered with French fries, barbecue sauce, or hot sauce, and coleslaw. I wonder if it's called the Polish boy as like a nod to the po boy, but you know it's Polish because of the because of the kielbasa. That's cute. It also looks good. I I like I like sausage. I think sausage is a good thing. I want to eat a sausage. There are a lot of pea sandwiches, aren't there? There sure are. Uh, I think my, my strength is failing me. I think you'll have to tackle the rest of this on your own. No probalo, my friend. Thank you for sticking around for as long as you did. Of course. Godspeed. Thank you. I need a big drink of water. <sighs> Thank you again to Log and Scorpy and Mike for stopping on by. We got some more sandwiches to go through. We have gone through two-thirds of the sandwiches. Maybe a little more than two-thirds. Maybe closer to three-quarters. We're close to the end. Porchetta. A porchetta sandwich from La Festa Italiana in Scranton, Pa. I, 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 I don't know what the PA means. <laughs> From Italy. A sandwich made of roast pork with Italian type spices such as rosemary, garlic, fennel, and others in varying proportions. It is popular as street food, usually sold from white trucks throughout central Italy. It was transplanted to America in the late 19th century by Italian immigrants and is known as the roast pork sandwich. Very popular. Uh, in the northeastern United States. In America, it is often served with provolone cheese and... Greens. Which may be spinach or broccoli, Rob. W why are those in scare quotes? Those being in scare quotes scares me. 600 people watching a 5-plus hour stream of the Wikipedia list of sandwiches, you are a powerful individual. Listen. I know what I'm about. I know what I like. I know... Uh, what I want to put out into the world, and I... The word makes my skin crawl, but I'm gonna use the word anything. My brand is powerful and people enjoy it. 
my brain is reading Wikipedia sandwich list. <laughs> At one point, uh, I almost started up a podcast with a couple friends that was literally just going to be like, we would look up a random menu from a restaurant, read out what the food on the menu was, and just like comment on it. Never ended up happening, uh, but it's it's still an idea I think about sometimes. This is kind of that, but with Wikipedia. But you know, <laughs> next up we have the uh, Porilanen from Finland. This is what you get from Finland. The hands are included. Half-inch slice of thick sausage, usually with diced red or sweet onion, sliced pickles, ketchup, mustard, and sometimes mayonnaise on white bread. Yet another uh, Western Europe, North, Northern European, rather, uh, slab of sausage on a sandwich type of meal. And I mean, it's good. It's that good kind of meal. The pork chop bun from Macau. Pork choppin. All one word. Uh, it does just appear to be like a whole pork chop in a bun. I, I, that, I'm pretty sure that's still a bit of bone there. Uh, I mean, hey, that sounds good. It's that pork chop sandwich. It's, it's got the bone in, which means that, like, they cooked it real good, and it's got that bone in flavor going into it. Why does this music sound so dire for this sandwich? Welcome to the list of known sandwiches. What do you do with the bone? The same thing you do with bone in meat. For any kind of meat. You, you eat around it. You, you, you eat around it, or you, like, take it out at the start eat the bits off of it and then get rid of the bone. Sometimes you eat the marrow. It's, it's... <laughs> that's what you do for the bone for most foods that have bones in it. Left for an hour and we've only made it to pee? Uh, you're, 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 you, you're looking at it in the sense of uh, how many letters we've got when you, you gotta be looking at it in the sense of how far along we are on the scroll bar. We are like three quarters of the way through. Oh yeah, shit, Doc, I'd be down to have you on. Hang on. Uh, do I have you added on Discord? Uh, I could just like send you an ad and like I can I can do a DM call with you. Let me get that sorted real quick. Uh, I will send a friend request. Hell yeah, let's do it. Not a fan of bone? That's fair. Uh, I think that the like bone adds like good flavor to meat when you're cooking it that way. Okay, I have to commit uh, the ritual. Hang on. Uh, uh, I have a picture that I send to everyone I add on Discord, and I have no intention of stopping. Uh, okay, I will start up the call. Hang on just a sec. Hello? How are you doing? I'm doing about as well as anyone can be, given that they've been reading a Wikipedia article out loud for about five hours. Uh, hey, I've been there. <laughs> I understand entirely. <laughs> I am a little tired, uh, but I fucking love this article. It's extremely funny, and uh, it's fun to share. Uh, welcome to the stream, Doc. How are uh, y'all doing? I need to get up a screen share for you. Uh, although I suppose you could also have the article up on your own, but this this is easier. Uh, I have it set to 1080p, 15 frames a second. Oh wait, no, that's I'm sharing Discord. Uh, <laughs> that's wrong. That's wrong. No, I gotta share. I gotta share list of sandwiches. I'm gonna be honest. I really enjoy the concentric image that I will not share. The <laughs> it got really scary for a second just seeing him pile in like that. Thinking about uh, him. Ah, uh, him. So here we are at Pork Chop Bun from Macau. Popular dish in Macau, the bun is extremely crisp outside and very soft inside, containing a freshly fried pork chop. I've never actually had just like a pork chop sandwich, but I mean like, a pork chop is good. And that I sounds like a good bun. 
a center cut pork chop sandwich is a perfectly cromulent sandwich. It's some good stuff depending on what you put on it. Ah, oh, hell yeah. Especially if you get that, like, like, like in this one here, you got that good color on it, that good crust. Oh, mm -hmm. man. If you get them nice and dry, the surface of a pork chop can crust up almost unparalleled on any piece of the pig. Oh, fuck yeah. I, I think, like, I'm, I'm not super big on meat in general, I find, outside of, like, uh, poultry and, like, fish, mm -hmm. but... I, I do really enjoy pork chop. Pork chop is real good. The pork roll sandwich. Taylor ham egg and cheese sandwich on a hard roll. I've I've heard Taylor ham before. What does that mean? So it's a it's a processed ham product that ah. is then yeah processed ham product pretty much sums it up by itself. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's spam adjacent sort of thing. Yeah, but pretty much it's. Mm -hmm kind of the same thing as also one of the you know the emulsified big thick italian sausages yeah it's kind of like that but hammy mm -hmm. pork roll does sound like a combat maneuver that's true <laughs> depending, yeah depending on where you are in new jersey you, you call it something different ah pork roll still is the predominant term in south jersey but in the northern part of the state it is taylor ham it is grilled pork <laughs> they've been roll. at war for years i guess <laughs> The great pork roll is a military maneuver in the Civil Wars of Jersey. <laughs> Grilled pork roll served several ways. This can be served with a fried egg or a fried egg with cheese. Variations include serving with grilled pork roll and cheese or just grilled pork roll. Although classically served <laughs> on a... <laughs> I do like all the variations, you know, several ways, such as with egg, without egg, with a bit of cheese... With egg, but no cheese. With cheese, but no egg. <laughs> or with no cheese and, if you want to get wild with it, no egg. <laughs> Can I get no roll? Can I just get the... Oh, well, sorry. Depending where I end, I'd mean no ham, too. Oh, God. <laughs> Here's your meal, sir. It's a bucket of air. Please take a bite. Logan Thrives says, You've been talking about sandwiches for five hours. Yes! <laughs> And I will continue to do so until I am done. <laughs> Although classically served on a Kaiser roll, bread variations include bagels, English muffins, or other breads. You could eat this on whatever. I could see that being eaten on whatever. It's pretty common. It's kind of like, it's bacon and fried ham adjacent, so it's a breakfast sandwich. Yeah, you know? that, that makes sense. I... I, I, I was seeing all of like the different variations with egg and cheese, and I was just like, yeah, this this is just, you get this as a breakfast. I see. I see. Uh, also, Taylor Ham, sometimes a burger topping. Huh. In, in Jersey, too. Yeah. I was about to, like, say that's surprising, but then, like, I realized, no, that makes sense. Like, that's, that's like, kind of like putting the bacon on it. There's a place not too far from where I live that, uh, it looks just like a local burger place that also does, like, a burger with a slice of like fried ham or back bacon on it and like that's good so mm -hmm. like i get it it's good all right i i need you to bring up this uh the image on this next one because it's pretty great poor tenderloin <laughs> <laughs> holy shit wide motherfucker <laughs> you have to eat so much of this before you get the bread at all <laughs> Oh, half God. of this is a sandwich and the other half is a mistake. This is the wide boy 64 of my dreams. This is... Mm -hmm. This is a Shaggy and Scooby-Doo type of meal. This is you feed it to sure. a cartoon animal and they eat it in one gulp and get scared of ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you could have folded it up. It's gonna be okay, you know? <laughs> or just cut it into three slices and then stack them. You know, part of the sandwich, in theory, is it, it's, like, portability and ease of, like, a movement and, like, locomotion. I feel like that's completely, a, <laughs> completely negated here. Try pulling here. this out of a pocket. <laughs> this is like a clown sandwich. They reach into their pocket, like, all right, all right, I'm pulling out my sandwich now, and they're just pulling out this super long pork tenderloin for an hour, and everyone at the children's party is clapping. You gotta dig around in there for a while before you find the bun to be able to actually hold it. God. Also, yes, Len, you can DM me some sandwich news. I'll, I'll give that a look in a sec. From the United States Midwest, thin, tenderized, deep-fried pork loin, typically served on an, undersi on an undersized bun on purpose! <laughs> oh, that's on purpose! <laughs> How do you hold this? I don't think you do, Candy. I... 
I think you just kind of marvel at it and then, like, tentatively take a bite, sadly, like a deer in the woods. <laughs> this is 100% intentional! Oh my god! <laughs> I, I can just imagine the look on, like, Benjamin Tenderloin's face, the invention of pork tenderloin sandwich, as he made this. And everyone was looking at it like, did you, like, have a bun that was too small? And he just smiled serenely at them. Lord. Where do you start? <laughs> the fucked up thing, though, in spite of all of this, I would... Oh, I, I would eat this. I, I am not bold enough to say I would eat this. I would attempt to eat this. I would want to oh, eat this. I when you get down to it, it's basically a katsu sandwich, right? Like, it's a pork katsu sandwich. I mean, it's yeah, it is. It's a deep-fried piece of pork that uh, is put onto... The only thing is that, you know, the portions are messed up. Because the Midwest, the, all the portions are messed up. Right. <laughs> Ancient curse of the Midwest. Swamp Ghoul did this to them. Next up, we have prawn roll from Australia. A prawn roll, i.e. a sandwich made out of prawns... Shrimp. Lettuce and hard-boiled egg. I mean, I like shrimp. I don't know if I would necessarily want shrimp and hard-boiled egg together, but... Sounds, like, strange. Not bad, but strange. This is one of those elementally targeted, I can't eat this kind of sandwich. <laughs> Got egg, shrimp, and shrimp on this. Probably also mayonnaise, if I had to assume. Australia's oh. strongest scientists specifically came together to make this sandwich to hurt you, Doc. Yeah. Cooked shrimp in a small sandwich roll dressed with remoulade, Thousand Island dressing, or cocktail sauce. Sometimes garnished with boiled eggs and lettuce. That okay, only sometimes. Sometimes. It, it It does just sound like someone had like a shrimp cocktail ring and just like threw it and some other appetizers into a bun. That's like the... That's... The cooking process to, like, a quarter of all sandwiches, right? Probably at least a quarter? Honestly, probably. The, pro that math is probably correct. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, not going to disrespect sandwiches in general by saying it's more than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Our next sandwich is Pregnant from Portugal. Mm -hmm. uh, Prego no Prato at Café Viana Braga. Uh, it looks like it's been encased in a prison of bread. Uh, which could be good. Could be good. A prego yes prato is uh, a very different sandwich. <laughs> We're not allowed legally to talk about that one tonight. These... Gotta go to Emperor Craig's Dolphin Cove 3D for that one. <laughs> God. These steaks flavored with onions and red wine are called prego. Nailed. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes, they make themselves. I have to laugh at them. I have no choice. <laughs> because a small meat mallet is typically used to nail the garlic slices into the steak. The marinade is red wine based and includes onions, the aforementioned garlic, chilies, bay leaf, parsley, oregano, ground black pepper, and olive oil. The steak is grilled and placed in Portuguese rolls uh, called carassas. A reduced marinade based sauce is drizzled over the meats. I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd eat this easy. It, it sounds great. It, I'm, I'm not super huge on steaks. This sounds like a good steak sandwich. <laughs> Prego equals nails. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to eat it, though, is the real question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought you weren't supposed to have a marinade of red wine when you're pregnant, but I'm learning so much today. <laughs> Next up is the Primanti. A sandwich from Promonti Bros Restaurant in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This looks like a mess. This looks like everything else you ordered kind of fell together while you were taking it, like, home in the bag. And then you just put some bread on top of it. And, like, I don't mean that in a derogatory way, necessarily. It could I be good. I am concerned by when I do grab the two slices of bread to see exactly how much filling I'm going to be able to retain. Oh, no, this is, ab it's much. <laughs> this is absolutely a fall apart type of sandwich. This is absolutely mm. a bring a fork to pick up the leftovers type of sandwich. <laughs> From United States, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Selection of grilled meats topped with French fries, coleslaw, and tomato on Italian bread. Okay, yeah, that sounds good, if a little bit of a, a, a messy one. 
It's kind of just French fries added Italian sandwich when you get down to it. Mm -hmm. Our next one is Prosperity Sandwich, and I won't open up the picture for just a moment. We'll get to it. Uh, from the United States, St. Louis, Missouri. Ham and turkey topped with broiled cheese. Sometimes includes bacon and tomato. So, so this is... A hot brown, but with with uh, ham involved. Right, right. And, like, this is what I mentioned earlier, where, like, sometimes some of the pictures here are just, like, pictures used in, like, previous entries. Like, there was one that was like, oh, here's the super special local Quebecois sandwich. And they just used the picture of a lobster roll from Maine, which was also used in the entry for lobster roll. Uh... <laughs> Fair Prosperity enough. Sandwich, which I checked when I went through the list the other day and realized, oh shit, they got new entries in here. This would be fun to stream and share. Um, is just the hot brown picture from earlier. It is just oh, the is... same hot brown picture. It's not a good looking hot brown either. <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's... It kind of a... sucks. It looks real bad. <laughs> it's like, that's it. What is this? It's like melted process. What does this melted Velveeta look to it? It's supposed to be bechamel. What's going oh, on? Oh god! Here? It it looks like someone took a plastic lemon and melted it. Mm hmm. Ah, oh, there is nothing prosperous about this hot brown. <laughs> Next one is pudgy pie, which sounds like it would be like an item in Neopets or something. From the United Oops. States. You serve your Neopet too many pudgy pies. They have an alternate sprite that is of the animal fat. And oh no! Love that, <laughs> and they just, you know, there's an entire ring of people trading those ones specifically. God. You have to keep it. Uh, upkeep it. You know. <laughs> it has no effect at all other than that, and people are shelling mm. out millions of Neo points for this. <laughs> it's kind of like how people love looking at fat cats. Uh huh. <laughs> Debatably more ethical because there's no actual animal being hurt here. Now you think that. Oh god, oh god, how deep does this go? <laughs> <laughs> also, yes, uh, out of peanut butter, I have heard about uh, the shit, what has been going on with regards to Neopets lately, and it is uh, a wild goddamn mm. ride, isn't it? It's, it's kind of wild that this is only the second wildest thing that has happened to Neopads, given that they're the previous connection to Scientology. Oh, God, yeah. Every now and then I remember that, and I'm just kind of like... Oh, oh yeah, huh. <laughs> <sighs> Sandwich made in a pan with margarine on the outside, specifically <laughs> margarine. Uh, and either savory with pizza sauce and other fillings on the inside, or sweet containing pie filling. The term pudgy pie is sometimes used to refer to pie irons, a gadget used for campfire cooking. Okay, so it's just like we we, we made a pie out of out of some bread. Yeah. Interesting. It's just it's whatever you got there in Right. We, we put it, it's just a way to cook it is, yeah. what it, is what it is. We 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 got some bread, we got some innards for some sort of pie. We can just plop it together. It works. It works. Also, yeah, chat. We don't. We don't need to go like super in depth. You can look that stuff yourself. Yeah, yeah, like like you can you look can, it up yourself. It's it's very well documented all around the internet. Uh, we we, we are here to marvel at sandwiches today. <laughs> Just you know, keep 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 that in mind. Pudgy pies are always made on campfire irons. In your experience, interesting. I I guess it is meant to be like a like a like a like a campfire thing like oh we go out camping we have some bread for eating other things we plop stuff inside of it that seems like decent campfire cooking next up is the pulled pork uh which is very good i am i am a big fan of the pulled pork depends on the it strongly depends on who made it because bad pulled pork is garbage oh god yeah and absolutely it, it is it's eating wood dust, is yeah. what it tastes like. It's 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 kind of like falafel, where uh, a good falafel is genuinely like one of my favorite foods of all time. Uh, a bad falafel makes me want to cry. Mm -hmm. there, gotcha entirely, yeah. There is that disparity, uh, but it is worth it for the, for the high moments. Pulled pork is a form of barbecue. <laughs> Something about that is so quaint. It is a method of preparation in which pork is cooked using a low heat, long cooked method. The meat becomes tender enough that it is weakened, con that its weakened connective tissue allows the meat to be pulled or easily broken into individual pieces. That, that's Originally pork? posted to Flickr as a, a prepared pulled pork sandwich. <laughs> yeah, great. I missed that. 
barbecue sandwich in which pork, usually shoulder, is smoked slowly at low temperature until the meat becomes tender enough that it can be pulled or shredded with two forks. Uh, the pork is served on a bun and often topped with barbecue sauce and vinegar or mayonnaise-based coleslaw, depending on the region. Every time I read barbecue sauce, I think about uh, one of my friends who has a pet in Warframe that he named Barbecue Source. And every time we play together every couple of years, we'll go on a mission or whatever, and then into the corner of my eyes, I'll just see a warning saying, Barbecue Source is down! Barbecue Source has died! <laughs> oh, oh, barbecue Source, no. Poor sweet Barbecue Source. <laughs> the Queen Alexandra's Sandwich. No image. Uh, you, you must use your imagination. From the United Kingdom. Chicken, mayonnaise, boiled tongue, and cress. So when they say boiled tongue, tongue of what? That's... I, I feel like that's an important distinction you have would have to make, yeah. Like, uh, I have had tongue, like, once in my life, and it was, like, grilled, and it was delicious. Like, a lot of people are understandably like, oh... Like oh well well that's that's that seems weird like that's 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 a weird part of the of the body why why would why would you eat that like the tongue is a muscle it 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 has a lot of movement it's like super tender it's 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 good if you can like cook it good this it is boiled a... and unspecified yeah, bold that it's unspecified for sure tongue has kind of a weird texture if you're not used to it that's fair it's... yeah. It, it's it's very tender, but it's also like a little tiny bit spongy almost. Mm -hmm. and it's really tasty is yeah. the main thing though. There's there's a lot of you could almost call it like micro fat sort of just made all the way through it is the thing. Mm -hmm. It's even more marbled than like any cut of meat, uh, meat would be normally. It's it's, it's good. It's good. Boiling tongue, unspecified tongue, uh, along with mayonnaise and crescent chicken. Uh, it, it doesn't inspire confidence in me. It, it doesn't inspire confidence. <laughs> I worry about this sandwich. I am I'm not a, with the tongue. I am not a bad enough dude to eat Queen, Queen Alexandra's sandwich with tongue. I am not ashamed to admit that. <laughs> Next up is Rachel. Oh, hi, Rachel. How you doing? <laughs> the caption. Mmm. Mm. Hot pastrami makes it a Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Safety Cat, for the 18 months. <laughs> Please enjoy your Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> this is Rachel. Uh, also, we have begun the R category. A Reuben with pastrami instead of corned beef and coleslaw instead of sauerkraut. Roast turkey is sometimes Reuben. used as the meat. It's not a Reuben anymore, then. It, it, <laughs> it's it, kind of the two important parts of a Reuben. It's, it's kind of a completely different sandwich at that point, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> uh. This just makes me think of like, oh, this is, uh, this is my sandwich. It's called the Handy Andy. Uh, it's like a ham sandwich, but the ham is replaced uh, with, with turkey breast, and the bread is replaced with uh, fried chicken cutlet. <laughs> like it's yeah. it's something completely different now. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's the sandwich of Theseus is a is a very very complicated <laughs> oh, question God. to ask. How many parts of the sandwich can you replace before it's just an alternative version of the previous sandwich? Does the sandwich have a soul? Does the sandwich have some sort of uh, non physical eternal component to it that persists even when the components of it are like changed out? Do you? We could do this for hours. Next is the Reuben. <laughs> you know, the Reuben, where the Reuben ingredients aren't replaced with the Rachel ingredients. I just realized that's why it's called the Rachel, because Reuben is also a name. Fuck. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it just hit me right now. Oh, that's actually kind of clever. <laughs> From the United States, Omaha, Nebraska, or New York, New York. Corned beef, sauerkraut, Swiss cheese, topped with Russian or Thousand Island dressing on rye bread. Creamy coleslaw replaces the sauerkraut in some places. I Sounds like it makes it a Rachel instead, though. <laughs> God, yeah! It changes it into a Rachel! <laughs> I am not 
super keen on creamy coleslaw. Uh, yeah, I'm more of like a vinegar coleslaw type of motherfucker. Uh, Absolutely, yeah, same, 100%. I want, want like, I, in fact, I don't want mayonnaise on my sandwiches at all. If I can help that's it, fair. I. I want, if I am going to get a coleslaw on something, I want it to be vinegar and maybe, basically, I just want pickled vegetables, if I'm going to be honest. Honestly, that's my thing. It's, it, it's it's good as the thing. Yeah. <laughs> I like that people are trying to quantify new types of, of Reuben where you swap out one ingredient for another. We've got the Rochelle, <laughs> we've got the Ross. <laughs> <laughs> We're learning so much today. Oh, I think I did get a DM from uh, my friend Len with some horrifying sandwich info. Uh, Matto was going to mention this and realized he would get shot by the mod, so I am an intermediary. And this is a link to a Twitter post, uh, uh, so I'm going to open it up, and I hope it's not something horrible. Every new word here is like getting smacked. The Sopranos' big pussy, Bon Pensiero, stars in Deli Meat Halloween ad campaign as the Gabagool. Oh my god! Awesome. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, this, this this is one sentence and it feels like a book. <laughs> Thank you. Did you hear Big Pussy's the Gabagool? Unbelievable. <laughs> Big Pussy unleashed this Halloween Gabagool ravaging the nation. Hide your sandwich. <laughs> Thank you, Maddo, for wanting to link that. <laughs> God. Uh, thank you, Len, for sending it to me. Next up is roast beef. This is from Arby's. Doc, have yep. you ever been to Arby's? I have. Here's the thing about Arby's. The mm -hmm. roast beef sucks. Uh-huh. Their turkey's great. Oh. Their turkey is genuinely very good. If you ever go to Arby's, go for the turkey instead of their uh, their beef. Interesting. Every time yeah. uh, I've been to the United States, uh, no matter who it was I was like going to see, no matter where it was I went, for some reason the the thing would come up where like we either walked by an Arby's or drove by an Arby's or saw an Arby's or heard about Arby's somewhere in some way, and I would always say, "Oh, huh, you know, I've never been to Arby's. Maybe we should go to Arby's," and they would always very firmly, very politely tell me, Holly, we're not going to Arby's. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. It's, it's, Arby's is extremely mediocre. Uh -huh. <laughs> it, most of the time, it's, it's not genuinely bad, but there is a million better options uh -huh. than going to Arby's always. <laughs> that, that was, that was basically... The, the feeling I got from it, it is, it is, it is very much the should have stayed at home type of meal. Mm -hmm. I just saw someone in chat say they like the horsey sauce. What the fuck is horsey sauce? <laughs> okay, horsey sauce is a condiment at Arby's. I don't remember exactly what's in it. I think it's just an aioli when you get down to it. Hold on. I like that it's called horsey sauce. It might be uh, a it's horse horseradish. Thing. Yeah, it's a horseradish, mayonnaise, and sugar mix. Ah. It's just a pretty standard sandwich sauce. I mean, I I would I would try that. I could just make that at home. I could try that. I I don't have to go to the Arby to get to get <laughs> to get the horsey. <laughs> ah. The origin of roast beef is global, but also United States. <laughs> there are okay, so many I times where that comes up, and it still baffles me. In, the, in this case, at least, the the specific roast beef sandwich on the onion roll and stuff is a very United States thing. I, I suppose but that makes sense. They're also yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. Sliced roast beef, or sometimes beef loaf on bread. Beef loaf? Excuse oh, like me? meatloaf. Oh, meatloaf. Okay. But, like, specifically just with, like, beef sort of thing, I suppose. Mm -hmm. A variant of this sandwich is the roast beef special, a.k.a. deli sandwich. Which is sliced roast beef, Thousand Island dressing, salad dressing, and coal slaw served generally on rye bread. What? No mention of the onion roll? What the fuck? The onion roll is kind of a big part of a roast beef sandwich. Disappointing. I don't think I've yeah. ever had uh, a roast beef on an onion roll, but again, that seems like a specifically, like, USA thing, so. It is, yeah. It sounds also, good, though. Also, I don't call a meatloaf sandwich a roast beef sandwich. It's a no. completely different thing. Right, meatloaf right. is very distinct. 
Like, a meatloaf sandwich is good. A meatloaf yeah. sandwich feels very, very different from a roast beef sandwich, given how it's made, you know, out of ground beef instead of roast beef. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit, Pepito is back home. Oh, hell yeah. Good work, Pepito. <laughs> Fine work, Pepito. Stay safe in there. One of my favorite things about that account is that sometimes you'll just get like a chain of posts where it's like, oh, just constantly coming back home or constantly going out without any like reference to the other or or just like long periods of time without updates because the Twitter feed fails to mention that the camera is only set up on one door in the house. There are other doors the cat gets out through. (laughs) (sighs) Next up is Roti Bakar from Indonesia. Whoa. I mean, it looks nice, actually, like, it's, visually. It's, it's a pretty sandwich. I wonder what's in it. I do think, just from the, what it looks, it's just a, it's bread that's just been, uh, like, coated in other stuff. Toasted white bread with a filling such as butter, jam, chocolate spread, cheese, or other generally sweet fillings. Okay, so it, it's, it's like a sweet sandwich that then, like, dress up kind of like that, then. Interesting. Uh... According to someone in chat, little context, this is a country with no toasters. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. I didn't know that about Indonesia. I also don't know if that's true or not, because it is just said by one person in chat. So it could be true or false, but, you know, interesting all the same. (laughs) I just absorb information without considering whether or not it's true or not. Mm -hmm. I I will not repeat this information until I find out later. I I absorb information from a Twitch chat and immediately think, okay, you're lying to me, but thank you. Uh, next up is the Roti John. Uh, yeah, Funny Official says they think they've definitely seen toasters in Indonesia, so... Who knows? It could be true or false. It could be bad or good. The Roti John. Roti John. Served. That's it. That's how you do it. There, there you go. There it is. The only way you can do it. It's got to be on one of those novelty, uh, like, menus that are also covered in inf- information mm-hmm. as a piece of paper. Or one of those, like, wrappings that just has, like, in different languages, like, enjoy, hello, yes. bonsoir, over and over again. <laughs> Just completely different words in different <laughs> languages. <laughs> just really fucking up with no, not caring at all. I mean, you don't read these languages. How is you know? <laughs> And then one day, one person that can comes in and the jig is up. (laughs) From Southeast Asia and Malaysia. Basic ingredients are eggs, chopped onions, sambal paste, salt and pepper, cooked as an omelette with the bread added on top before it's fully cooked. Oh, so it's like a a savory French toast kind of thing. Yeah, I guess so. That sounds good. Many variations include canned sardines, chicken, beef, or mutton. Garnished with mayo, chili sauce, and cheese. Yeah, I'd eat that. Nice. I've, I've always sure. wondered. Oh, sorry, you go ahead. Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, the Roti John would also just mean, like, John bread as mm-hmm. well, as far as the name goes. <laughs> this is John's goes, bread. It's, like, it's some kind of variation of Reuben, then, because it's got a name for it. Name there. Mm-hmm. I think more sandwiches should just have names. Like, this is my new sandwich. It's called the Holly. I'm not legally allowed to tell you what's on it yet, because I haven't decided. Mm-hmm. But yeah, for like a while, I've just kind of been idly thinking to myself, man, someone's had to have invented like a like a savory French toast at some point or like something similar. And I've like never thought enough to search for it. But, but here we are. Now I don't have to. It's been presented uh, to actually, me. Actually, scrolling up again on the uh, the Monte Cristo sandwich. It oh, yeah. That yeah, a that's local true. Version of the Monte Cristo that is a fully savory thing. That, that is that's true. The, that's the version of the Monte Cristo that I've ever had because I live in Mass. So nice. I've never had any version of them, so I don't know if I would like it or not. But it sounds good. <laughs> uh, next up is the Rojia Mo from China. I I I realize no one can see this, but I'm fucking nodding it emphatically at this. Yeah, I'd eat that 100. percent Yeah, that looks good. Oh, that's meat and peppers on a on a piece of Chinese. So here's the thing. Chinese steamed buns and stuff like that are mm-hmm. wonderful sandwich breads. They're oh, the good incredible. stuff. Yeah. I I still desperately want to try Bao someday, but I've, I've never like found a place around here that serves them. Yeah. Which is kind of wild to me because there's like, there's a lot of really good like Chinese restaurants around like the, the Montreal area. Like there's like a, 
there's a ton of restaurants like that. Like, there's, like, it is, like, a super multicultural area, and, like, the food you can get there, like, definitely, like, represents that. I've somehow never stumbled across a place that serves, like, bao yet. It's probably somewhere, but I've not seen it, and, and I, 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 I want to find it. I want to eat it. <laughs> Anyways, this is stewed pork, chopped finely, stuffed in mo, a kind of flatbread. Yeah, I'd eat that, no question. That sounds great. Oh, one last look at it. I'm waving goodbye sadly to it, knowing I can never reach into my screen and eat this. <laughs> Apparently this one's chicken, though. That that description is disagreeing with this Yeah, uh, this, this is image. a chicken version of it, isn't it? Actually, it's, it's garbage now. Get this out of my face. This is... I can't, can't stand, stand this. It. It's, it's going completely off screen. I am scrolling away from it. Good fucking bye. <laughs> Next, we have the uh, Rui Sleipa from Finland. Finnish rye bread sandwich. Uh, slab of pink meat, probably pork. Uh, boiled egg. Uh, tomato. I think that's some onion, maybe. Uh, some kind of sauce. Not a barbecue source, though. Definitely not a barbecue source. Uh, and that rye bread. Rye bread's good. Rye's all right, yeah. A sandwich made of traditional Finnish dark rye, buttered. Oh, it's butter. With Ooh, lettuce. Okay. Hard-boiled egg, pickles, tomato. Choice of cheese and meat, typically pork. Known colloquially as the winning combination. <laughs> You, you should have just re uh, launched with that, because I'd be way more interested in the winning combination. <laughs> this is the sandwich of champions right here. You eat this stuff, you're set. <laughs> Good to go. And here we have the Runza from the United States. Uh, this shot doesn't really show what's inside of it very well. Um, kind of a sad image, yeah. We, you, you've got a bit of yellow nugget. I think that might be onion. There's there's some brown slop in there. It could be bad or good. Who's to say? <laughs> Traditionally, I'm pretty into brown slop on a sandwich, though. So I, I I'm I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt. It's it's generally a good thing in a sandwich. Yeah. Bun filled with a mixture of usually loose meat, cabbage, and cheese. The fillings are baked inside the bread, similar to a collage. Popular in the Midwestern United States, especially Nebraska. That, that sounds pretty all right. Yeah. I don't like appre I don't appreciate this sandwich slut shaming the meat, but I mean, hey. <laughs> Any meat is good meat. It can do whatever it wants. It's an it's it's an adult. Exactly. I've I've never had one of those like. Uh... Actually, no, that's not true. I have had one of those. You take like meat and stuff, put it in the bread, and bake it that way. It was. Um unspecified meat bread that I had once at, in like high school at a friend's house when we like got together to have like a big land party and also play uh, Warhammer 40k. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, it's pronounced Kolachi. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I, again, uh, I am very bad at pronouncing most things, so I do appreciate when people kindly tell me how they're actually pronounced. <laughs> the only equivalent of this that I've ever had was a Poroshki. Which is excellent, for what it's worth. I love me a Poroshki. Ooh, what's that? It's, um... It, it's kind of a breadier pierogi, honestly. It, it's a Russian uh, variant or mm -hmm. Ukrainian. They're really good. I do like pierogi, kind of so a, I would eat that. Yeah, just kind of like a, you know, bready bit that is filled with uh, ingredients of various kinds. Mm -hmm. The good stuff. Yeah. We have reached... The letter S. We are close to the end. Probably uh, the final real uh, one you gotta get through. Mm hmm. Our last big push. What is the best flavor of cough drop slash throat lozenge? Uh, I don't know. I've only ever had like two. <laughs> I, Luden's cherry. I, Moving on. I, I had like the Hall's honey ones. I'm like, you know. I don't mind the taste of this. It helps my throat feel better. I'm just going to keep buying this. I don't need to try and try others. I found the one that works for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's such a funny thing in my brain for some reason to try and, like, quantify the best flavor of, because it's like, you you just get those when you got a sore throat. It's not a candy. <laughs> the thing is that they kind of are, though. I mean, yeah, I did get... I don't think mugged is the right word. Um, 
this was in high school. Uh, I got, like, some kid who was in, like, the final year of high school was, like, saw my locker open, like, shoved me aside and took, like, a packet of hulls and ran away. And it was like... Okay. Why, though? It's hulls. <laughs> Why did you do that? My high school was weird. I'm... Of all the things that... Oh, don't tell me. <laughs> don't get me started. Uh, the, the thing... <laughs> Of all the things that you could have gotten stolen from, I, I guess it's maybe probably the, would have been the best option out of that locker, I'm assuming, right? I, I mean, I'd rather that than, like, you know, an expensive textbook or, like, a wallet or, like, my bag or anything like that. Like, yeah, mm. sure. I didn't even need those anymore. I just had them in my, my, my locker just in case I got sick again after, like, having, like, a, a yucky throat for, like, a week prior. Like, I, I wasn't even really going to use them. I was confused more than anything. <laughs> It just kind of reminds me of, like, there was another high school incident where, like, a dude, uh, like, older than me, much larger than me, uh, like, ran to me in a hallway, like, fucking picked me up and, like, pinned me against a locker cartoon bully style and was like, you know what? I'm fed up with you. I'm gonna kick your ass. I, I don't, I can't stand seeing your face here. And I was just like, what are you talking about? Who the fuck are you? And he literally stopped, stared at me, like, slack-jawed, and was like... Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I thought you were someone else. And just put me <laughs> down and was like, uh, uh, listen, here's like five bucks. Don't tell anyone, okay? I'm sorry. And I was just like, <laughs> huh? Congratulations on your, uh, your, <laughs> I guess I'd describe that as like a snick cartoon situation. <laughs> live, not cartoon, live action thing. God! <laughs> Four young teens targeted uh, drama. I passed a real life Fallout barter check somehow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anyways, we're here to talk sandwiches, aren't we? We're here at the 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 Sabish. The Sabish. Iraqi Jewish pita sandwich, popular in Israel. Main ingredients: fried eggplant, hard boiled eggs, onions, Israeli salad, hummus, and tahina stuffed in a pita. That that sounds good. I do like me an eggplant. Do you like I, me I have eggplant? to. There's always that just gotta get the eggs out of this and then I'm down. I need it. <laughs> I'm sure you could ask him to take out the, 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 the boiled egg in that. Probably. Pita stuffed with fried aubergine, sliced hard boiled egg, tahini sauce, and Israeli salad, among other ingredients. Chopped salad, finely diced tomato, onion, cucumbers, and bell or chili peppers. That, that sounds good, yeah. I. I like me a nice pita stuffed with a bunch of, like, flavorful veggie-adjacent things. This one is called the Sailor? What, why is it called the Sailor? Are those split hot dogs? I think, they don't look like other sa sausage. I think they might be. I th okay. I think they might be, and I don't know... I don't really know how that makes me feel. <laughs> I'm tempering my expectations for the, for the description here. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. United States, Richmond, Virginia. Hot pastrami. Grilled knockwurst. Uh, oh, okay. Type of German sausage. Uh, so it's not quite a hot dog, but it's similar, I suppose, in appearance. Uh, melted Swiss and hot mustard on rye bread. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank ground you, Final Robo, for the resub. Ground veal, ground pork, fresh garlic, stuffed into hog casings. I mean, still going. that that does sound good, yeah. Uh, I I do enjoy glancing over at chat and seeing Fungish post and just saying, of course it's fucking Richmond. <laughs> 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 I don't know what that means, but I trust you. <laughs> the... I mean, this is just pastrami, but also we we, we, we put a, a sausage on top of it, which is like... One it, of the 5,000 variants of pastrami sandwich with right. grilled cheese and uh, Swiss cheese and mustard. It, it doesn't sound bad. I'm just kind of puzzled more than anything. And why is it called the Sailor? Is it... Is it because, like, they stick a fucking toothpick in it and it's like a mast and the sausage is the sail and it's like a boat? Is, is is that it? Was it popular among sailors? Is it a name that means nothing? I will never know. I can go on an I, article here to learn more. I'm not, though. <laughs> I really, really hope it's the first thing you said, because that's the funniest. Uh-huh. <laughs> the 
That's what I'm desperately hoping it is. <sighs> if you don't go looking for it, then in your mind it can just be that. So who cares? I'm going to live in beautiful, blissful ignorance today. Uh, next we have the Sandwich de Milanesa. Oh, hell yes. That does look That's, good. Oh, there's grilled onions on there. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, the good stuff. Oh, the good stuff. Also, yeah, uh, the, the sailor does look a little bit like a garbage plate in sandwich form, doesn't it? A little bit. Sandwich de Milanesa from Southern Cone? Yeah, Southern Cone. Okay. Uh, like Argentina and Uruguay. Type of sandwich eaten in Argentina and Uruguay. Mainly a large schnitzel with lettuce and sliced tomato, sometimes with added sliced boiled egg and mayonnaise. Usually, but not exclusively, the bread is a white baton of a short baguette type of bread. Pictured as a san sandwich de Milanesa from Tucumán. Looks good. Yes. I Again, I'll skip the egg on it, but it looks like that's an optional ingredient, so mm -hmm. I'm like, good. I, I literally don't see the egg on here is the thing, so it's like... <laughs> that's either a cheese or that's just a very drippy, like, fr like very lightly fried egg. I can't mm -hmm. tell. A fried egg would be good on this. I, as, as an egg enjoyer, I would eat that. Uh, but again, you could just very easily kind of go, no egg, please, thank you. There's, there's plenty of other stuff here to enjoy. Sandwich loaf. <laughs> Sorry. The... Go on. A vegan sandwich loaf that I, Travis Nygaard, created February 11th, 2007. It was made with mock egg salad on oatmeal bread and covered in soy cream cheese dyed pink for Valentine's Day. So that's what was on that sandwich earlier. <laughs> Pink dyed soy cream cheese. This is... I'm assuming this was for a party and not just for like one person because man, what a waste if it was just for one guy. <laughs> okay, who in the world is going to be making a special Valentine's Day sandwich cake just for one person, though? <laughs> I, you know, Travis themselves. Nygaard, would. <laughs> you know, fair enough. They do refer to themselves as they, Travis Nygaard. <laughs> <laughs> the Travis Nygaard hold up in his palace, in his moon base that isn't on a moon, enjoying <laughs> the final sandwich. <laughs> Just put a little. Uh, that's also verde on that. I bet it'd be great. Just slap that Wait, shit hold on, on there, my does man. That say it's, does that say it's from Trader Jose's? It does say Trader Jose's. Oh God. Oh hell yeah! I've never seen that. Before. <laughs> God. Sandwich loaf, United States. What is mock egg? It's it's like a vegan substitute for egg that like is has a lot of its like sort of textural properties and probably. I assume probably similar taste. I, I'm willing to bet made from aquafaba. If I had to assume, that's yeah, that wouldn't probably, surprise me. It fries up to have a sort of similar texture to egg, mm -hmm. I think. So aquafaba is the 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 it's the substrate from like bean water juice. in yeah bean juice basically. Yeah, I've I've always been curious about like doing something with it, but every time I open up a can of chickpeas, I just kind of look at it and I'm just like, nah, I'm just gonna drain this and fry these up actually. <laughs> <laughs> Alternating layers of bread and filling, frosted to resemble a layer cake. It's a smorgasbord, though, but a United States style. Ah, That's all. The cake of sandwiches. <laughs> Truly for a king. Sandwiches de miga, or mija. I'm not. I'm not sure. Oh, so tasty, so light, so nice. Sandwiches de miga. A good commercial. I'd watch it. <laughs> this does look like an image from an advertisement for this type of sandwich, doesn't it? Just And that's a caption from the advertisement. God, this really was someone's failed marketing plan that they like posted on their Flickr instead and then got ported to Wikipedia. Great. <laughs> from Argentina. Hang on a sec, I need a drink. Made with single, double, or triple layered, buttered, very thin white bread, with crusts removed. Toasted, or untoasted, containing thinly sliced meat, as well as eggs, 
cheese, tomatoes, green peppers, lettuce, olives, and sometimes other vegetables. Similar to the British finger sandwiches for afternoon tea, but the bread layers are thinner. It really feels like this is trying to get as stacked as possible in as small of a as, as small of a package as possible, you know? Let's pile up as much of the good stuff as we can and then put it directly in the presser. Just just unleash the fucking sledgehammer on this guy. I want this to be so dense that it like just covers your hand, but it just pushes it down to the table because it's that heavy. <laughs> We've made a yep. sandwich so packed and so thin, it will cause a localized black hole in your area. Light cannot escape. The sandwich is de miga. <laughs> the sandwich has its own gravitational well. <laughs> God. And the fucked up thing is, I think I would try it. Oh yeah, it sounds good. Salt beef bagel from the United Kingdom. Salt Beef Bagel, bought on Brick Lane, photo by user Edward, taken 27th of November, 2005. I've not had salt beef, but I mean, it's beef, so... Oh, it's corned beef, there we go. Uh, served in a bagel, sometimes with English mustard and pickles. Otherwise, what, it's just corned beef in the bagel? That's it? Yep. Okay, whatever. And, like, it sounds fine, I'd eat it. I don't know anything about England's bagel scene, and uh, I worry this might be a case of bad bagel. That that bagel looks pretty sad. It that, doesn't look dense at all. It that, doesn't have that. Cr doesn't have much blistering or anything. Yeah, this is a sorry excuse, a sorry showing of a bagel. Quite frankly, it's mm -hmm. it's it's fucked how you can like live somewhere that has some of the best bagels in the world, and then suddenly the rest of the bagel world just kind of looks like swill. Yeah, it's it's. I, I kind of wonder if maybe I would have been better off living uh, in ignorance and just not knowing what I was missing bagel-wise, but... I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd still eat it. I'd still eat it, even if there was... Even if it, like, as long as it wasn't a miserable bagel, I suppose, I'd probably still eat it. Yeah. Next up is sausage. That's a sausage, baby. Although, more specifically... That's the next sandwich, but the next sandwich doesn't have a picture. So that's going to be interesting. <laughs> oh, that's going to be great. Italian sausage sandwich I bought in San Francisco from Billy T. Fred at English Wikipedia. That's Billy T. Fried. Thanks. Oh, shit. That is Billy T. Fried. I completely misread that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm trying to fix it. <laughs> Miserable Bagel would be a good username. That's true. From the United Kingdom and Germany. Sausage, on a roll or bread, served with a variety of sauces and toppings. Two things required: sausage and bread. Go, go nuts. There go you go. Wild. Puzzle solved. You did it, bud. Go to town on that hoagie. Next up. Now, meanwhile, though. <laughs> oh God, you were right though. Sausage, pepper, and onion sub slash hoagie from Northeast. This is United one of the States. king of sandwiches. I love these things so much. Sausage grilled with green bell peppers and onions in a long roll or half a baguette. Cheese is sometimes melted on top of the sausage and vegetables. Condiments can vary from marinara sauce to mustard. This shit is very simple, but it fucking rules. It's good. It's a hot, good. A hot Italian sausage with onions and peppers and a, uh, and a spicy brown mustard is mm -hmm. one of the best sandwiches in the world. And I would, I will eat one of those basically any day. One of the simple pleasures of grilling up a big pack of sausages uh, for, like, a meal is knowing that the next day you can get yourself a nice bread, uh, cook up some good, some good vegetables, put that motherfucking sausage in there. Oh, baby, that's meal. Oh, buddy, that's meal. Nothing beats the taste of food on a day. That's meal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ain't that just the way, though? This next one is the Schmitter. Uh, which I almost misread a shitter and desperately had to course correct for that one. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Sorry. I shouldn't look forward. I, I don't want to do this sandwich dirty. You know, it could be good. Yeah, it's, <laughs> we have to respect the Schmitter. It's not like it's a, unfair. It's it's an unfortunate name. Uh, only unfortunate because of my preconceived notions of misreading shit and poo into things. <laughs> because it's mm -hmm. funny to me. But this does look good. 
That looks like another variation of uh, Swiss cheese and stacked smoked sandwich. Mm -hmm. From the United States, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Schmitter is a steak... Beef. ...sandwich, but not a cheesesteak. It was developed at McNally's Tavern in Chestnut Hill in the 1960s in response to a favorite sandwich of a friend and co-worker of the proprietor's husband. It is named after Schmidt's beer, with which it was served. The filling consists of grilled beef steaks and onions topped with grilled cooked or koto salami, American cheese, and tomato. It is topped with a sauce consisting of mayonnaise, sweet pickle relish, ketchup, and Worcestershire sauce served on a Kaiser roll. You know how you get those uh, ingre like recipes that have like a full, th you know, three pages of text before they start talking about the, re uh, the recipe? Oh god, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> that was kind of the equivalent of this on this, uh, on the <laughs> sandwich the Wikipedia page right here. <laughs> we needed a full backstory behind this sandwich, I guess. I, I know you're enjoying hearing about different sandwiches around the world, but what you need is the lore behind this one specific United States beef sandwich. What you need is the thrilling history. Oh no, I just saw what was next. Oh no, yeah, I just saw yeah. what was next. <sighs> Sealed, crustless, from the United States. Smuckers, we got on crustables, baby! <laughs> Thank you for the clown horn. <laughs> ah, Smuckers, uncrustable cut. Day twenty-six of one hundred project. I wish I knew what that meant, but I'm not clicking that Flickr link. <laughs> <laughs> the 100 Project sounds like it's a... That is definitely a doomsday project of some kind, and I really hope that didn't go through, or we won't be able to know for... How long ago was 100 Day, you know? Who knows? I am choosing to believe it involved 100 Days of Uncrustables and was a tragic and delightful failure, saving the lives of everyone. I hope so. I can only hope so, unless uh, the alternative is that it's still ongoing and we have a possible fallout situation going on later. Three days remain. Oh no. The filling in this sandwich is sealed. <laughs> that sounds so, so intense. Sealed between two layers of bread by a crimped edge and has the crust subsequently removed. A popular variety in the United States is a peanut butter and jelly. This type of sandwich is mass-produced by the J.M. Smucker Company under the brand name Uncrustables. I have had an Uncrustable once in my life, uh, because it was like, well, we need something quick to eat. I just happened to have this around. Do you want it? Yeah, sure, I'll eat it. I ate it. It was... It was a Smucker sandwich, I suppose. And then it was just kind of like, all right, we're going shopping at Costco now. Let's get a Costco hot dog and churros instead. So. Ah, <laughs> uh, that dollar seventy-five hot dog. Yes, absolutely. Immediately forgotten in the in the glee that was Costco hot dog and churro. Mm -hmm. Apparently, they do churros in like a couple places in Costco's. Not where I live, but. Yeah, I, not where I live either. But I have heard that for sure. It was good. I enjoyed it. I quite liked it. The was... only times I've ever had an Uncrustable is that they are occasionally sold at work vending machines for, mm -hmm. you know, like, quick quick meals. Yeah. And that's the only time I've ever had an Uncrustable. Sometimes you just need something cheap to put inside of your body so that you can not die or feel like you're not dying for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. We are now immediately going from uh, put this in your body to avoid dying to put this in your body to feel divine shawarma. Yes. Yeah, shawarma I can get into. Absolutely. <laughs> Something about the grip of, of this on this picture and, like, the reflection is just making me think of those, like, pictures of, like, gripping food with force. But, <laughs> but like, it's not even that forceful. This is, like, a fine hold on a shawarma, but it's making me think of that. <laughs> hold, hold, sam uh, hold wrap firm like shawarma as opposed to gentle like hamburger, you know? <laughs> Listen, when you hold shawarma, you must be gentle. You do not squeeze like gun. We will practice later on sack of grain. <laughs> From the Levant, Arab world, and Middle East. Flatbread with meat, traditionally lamb, cooked on a vertical spit. 
Additional fillings include vegetables such as tomato, cucumbers, onions, and pickles, and a sauce, often yogurt or tahini based. Shawarma is one of my favorite sandwiches of all time. My only complaint I have about shawarma is that every time I think about shawarma, I do not have the power to instantly manifest one in my hands ready to eat right away. And that shawarma is a crime. is like my third or fourth favorite sandwich because I have to admit, I do like gyros a little bit more. I can respect that. Just a bit more. I can but respect that. I, I just like tzatziki more than tahini, you mm -hmm. know, is the, the thing. But I also do think that they're they're absolutely great and they're could be one at any good. time. Good, yeah. Next up is Shooter Sandwich. This is a Shooter Sandwich from Mike Beltzner Shooter Sandwich Cross Section, which doesn't seem. Oh no, never mind. The the redirect link is showing up in the other corner of my browser. It is a Flickr site. I thought for a second this was like a link that just didn't lead to anything, and I was like, <laughs> why? From the UK. Prepared by filling a hollowed out long loaf of bread with cooked filet mignon steak, cooked mushrooms, salt and pepper. This just sounds like, uh... It's a beef wellington sandwich. Right, right. I was trying to remember what yeah. it was called. It was just a beef wellington sandwich. Uh, what music is this? This is, uh, Continuum from the soundtrack for Fez. I am pretty sure this is literally just, like, a like take on some classical song but i don't remember which one it is i remember reading that in the notes for the for the album uh but i it doesn't come to mind offhand uh it's a good song fez has good music uh this one in particular is for like an ending of the game which is like super like introspective and kind of scary uh which is deeply funny for sandwiches <laughs> deserves it they deserve it mm-hmm this is the reverence a sandwich deserves. Next up is the Shuko. Thanks for stopping by, Glass Turf. You have a wonderful rest of your night, then. From Guatemala. No image provided. Use your imagination. Dry hot dog bun. <laughs> containing guacamole. <laughs> the, the fact that the dry is specified gives me pause. As opposed to a wet hot dog bun? <laughs> what are we talking about here? Just absolutely sopping hot dog bun tonight. <laughs> containing guacamole, sliced cabbage, ketchup, mustard, and mayonnaise. It's usually served with a sausage, but it can also be ordered with churrasco or uh, adobado beef. Chopped onions and a variety of hot sauces are also available for the sandwich. I mean, yeah, especially the churrasco or adobado version of it. Uh, yes, please. Oh, boy. What is churrasco? Uh, Tarasco is basically, it, it's Brazilian barbecue, I'm pretty, pretty sure, so. Oh, I'd eat that then. <laughs> oh, now I'm terrified thinking about just, like, a horrible, moist hot dog bun. Just, kind of, like, filled with the absolute worst shit. We've got baked beans. We've got that tar candy from Finland. We've got, um, aspic. I unpeeled the bread off <laughs> Please of no. my vegetables <laughs> before I ate I, I can't handle any more aspect in my life. <laughs> I can't blame you for that, frankly. Thank you, Ghost to Christmas Future, for the three-month resub and message of I unpeeled the bread off of my frozen Uncrustable before I ate it. <laughs> Great. <Hold on. laughs> Did you just eat the filling, then? <laughs> the frozen peanut butter and, and jelly puck, I guess? <laughs> What, you telling me you don't remove the shell from your Uncrustable? You know that shit's not digestible, right? You're just gonna poo that out. I do, in fact, use an oyster shocking knife to, to pull it out. <laughs> My Uncrustable careful, shocking blade! <laughs> <laughs> now I'm just imagining shellfish that are literally just full of peanut butter. <laughs> like, in the wild, out there swimming, having a wonderful time. <laughs> Yes, this is the Donkey Kong Country 2 minecart music. That is correct. Good good catch. <laughs> Thank you, Hydroluricon, for the bits. Sandwich. Sandwiches, it turns out, are pretty good, like, just in general. <clears throat> Next up, we have the slider from the United States. Sliders is just tiny burgers. So fun a burger history note is that slider did not originally refer to a small burger, but just a a diner burger that would be slid oh, huh. down, you know, to you. Uh, 
but White Castle started to make burgers that were tiny and they called them sliders and thus the name stuck for, uh, in that way instead. Interesting. There's like a lot of really interesting history about um, like the history of like burgers in like America and the sort of culture surrounding that and like I don't know a lot about it but I've seen bits and pieces and like heard from like folks like what's his name George Motes I want to say uh, mm -hmm. who I, I see talk about like burger stuff a lot it's it's interesting it's really interesting yeah also these are Dungeness crab and shrimp cake sliders <laughs> what you can't tell you can't just slide this into my face like this <laughs> Out of nowhere. These ain't burgers, what? <laughs> By the way, this is fully a crab and shrimp cake. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, I have seen a couple of George Motes' videos. They're a lot of fun. A miniature hamburger. Hamburger. <laughs> hamburger. Hamburger. About three inches in diameter, but may also contain other toppings. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a burger might also have other stuff on it aside from just the burger. It turns out, who would have fucking thought? <laughs> ah, my god, we have two separate Sloppy Joes. We, okay. we, we have two separate Sloppy Joes, and yet... The entry for hot chicken encompasses both the Quebecois hot chicken and the Nashville hot chicken, which are both very different. So this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Here we have Sloppy's Joe. This is a real Sloppy Joe, also known as a Smoky Joe with the addition of BBQ sauce. Homemade, not from a can. <laughs> Made from one half burger and one half turkey. Secret KFC recipe slaw on the side. Sloppy Joe, homemade. By Buck Blues. Of course, Buck Blues is the one talking about a real Sloppy Joe. Buck Blues is one of the strongest fucking names for a Sloppy Joesman I can think of. A Sloppy Joe Slinger, 100% Buck Blues. <laughs> a real Joe Slinger in the house. And who are we but peons before him? I actually can't stand sloppy joes. I've never had one, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> they're they're so. Now it might be because I've never had like uh, one that was completely homemade, but they're so goddamn sweet, and mm -hmm. I I can't stand it. I had uh, what I was told was a sloppy joe, and later learned later was not, uh, which was quite literally just like a hamburger with uh, spaghetti sauce on top of it, and like it was huh. odd but fine. But it's not really a Slopey's Joe. <laughs> nah, you would not get that from a real Joe Slinger. Not you, you, at all. You definitely at any point. would not. If you saw a Joe Slinger sending, serving one of those, even calling this Slopey's Joe right there, then you know they would just be ostracized in the community immediately. That's that's grounds for a criminal trial, right there. Is what that is. Mm -hmm. Ground meat, usually beef, cooked with seasoned tomato sauce and served on a round bun. That's what a real Sloppy Joe is. Nothing fancy. And now we have Sloppy's Joe from New Jersey. Our Sloppy Joe sandwich with roast beef. There is a choice of meat. Rye bread topped with poppy seed slaw, Russian dressing, Swiss cheese, at the Maplewood Deli and Grill, Maplewood NJ. <laughs> Further information, maplewooddeli.com. I know it's supposed to be grill, but I like pronouncing it wrong on purpose. Very good. I like it. <laughs> Thanks, Tom W. Sulcer. <laughs> Was that the name? Hang on. <laughs> that is Tom W.'s Ulcer. <laughs> or Tom W.S. Ulcer. <laughs> Got those two middle names. God. <laughs> the W.S. stands for wet stink, but he doesn't want anyone to know that. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I, you, line of wet stinks. I, I have a request for my friend Peregrine to put Jello sandwich on the stream. So I am going to uh, open that up <sighs> in my browser. Uh, so here is your warning. Jello sandwich is inbound. It's this. Oh, no. No, <laughs> I hate this. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ooze sandwich. You eat this and you become a new animal with powers. <laughs> I, 
I immediately thought that this was mint jelly like you'd serve with lamb, and that sounds like the worst thing oh, ever. Oh, God, my yeah. Mouth. That'd be foul. This is. <laughs> this is Mountain Dew Gamer Aspic. <laughs> Uh, triple. Anyways, back to Slopey's Joe from New Jersey. The origin is the United States, but we don't know what specific part of it. It's it's still up for debate to this day. Who could know? Triple Decker rye bread sandwich made with one or more types of sliced deli meats, such as turkey, ham, pastrami, corned beef, roast beef, or sliced beef tongue, along with Swiss cheese, coleslaw, and Russian dressing. So it's... It's, it's another one of those. It's another variant on the Reuben. Right. Is this... <laughs> this is the Joe. <laughs> My god. This this has nothing at all to do with like what most people think of when they when they think about a Slopey's Joe. This is just where does the sloppy come in? Uh maybe they really just serve a whole lot of Russian dressing and coleslaw on it. I don't oh, know. It didn't god. seem like it. I I'm just imagining them slathering that shit on and being like, alright, here's your mayonnaise sandwich, and I wanna cry. This is what defines a wet hot dog roll. <laughs> <laughs> hot dog <one. laughs> I'm going to be honest, though. I'd eat this more than a regular Sloppy Joe. I'm, I'm into the, the New Jersey and Joe. I, the I, Joseph. I would definitely still eat this, yeah. It, it does sound a good. A Slopepe Joseph. Joseph, right here. <laughs> no, wait, sorry. A Slopepe Gi Giuseppe. <laughs> oh, that's a strong one. I'm into that one. Uh, this one is a Smorgastarta uh, from Sweden. This is a picture of a Smorgastarta. It looks like a cake. It... Yeah. It, it it looks like a, a, a it looks like a meat cake or a vegetable cake. This is a cake. Um It's a sandwich cake, yeah. I've actually made one of these before. Oh huh. I'm curious to see how the sandwich part comes in. I'm assuming the base is j then just like a bread or something. These are made with like stacked slices of white bread, yeah. Ah, okay. That that definitely makes more sense, but like man, it, this this picture is very good at concealing that, isn't it? I made mine with uh, a sour cream based dressing and it was filled with a cashew and chicken, uh, like cashew and chicken salad. That does sound and, good. And uh, black forest ham salad. Oh man. Basically. Oh, that does sound good. Sandwich. Thank you, Lizard Business, for the 17 month resub. I appreciate that. Multiple layers of white or light rye bread containing creamy fillings, such as egg and mayonnaise, liver pate, olives, shrimp, ham, various cold cuts, caviar, tomato. Cucumber, cheese, excuse me, I had the hiccups, and smoked salmon. This does just sound like what if we took a bunch of different sort of like appetizer foods and canapé and stuff like that and like put it all together in one thing and then you could just have your cake and eat it too, literally. Yeah. And like, it, it sounds fine. I would try it. It does seem extremely like a 1970s type of recipe. The thing is that you make one of these and you need like... 20 people to eat one because oh, a single God, yeah. slice of it is so rich and ridiculously like flavorful Th that you, you can't eat much of it. <laughs> this is a sandwich for the family gathering. This is a sandwich for the wedding. Next we have Smurbrod, which I think is how you pronounce that. Danish open sandwiches at a cafe at Kastrup Airport in Denmark. <laughs> it looks like we just dropped a whole bunch of shrimp on it. <laughs> Someone was just carrying their vat of tiny shrimp and tripped over like a comically placed <laughs> banana peel and it all stumbled onto this this open face sandwich. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry there. Hey, do, do, do you want me to pick any of this off? No, it sounds all right. I'll keep it. Oh, pardon me, sir. I do say pardon me, sir. I do seem to have spilled all my tiny shrimp all over your sandwich there. Now, I do hope it ain't no problem, but I do gotta get going. I'm in a real hurry at this airport, you see. I don't know why Foghorn Leghorn would be working at a Denmark airport, but... I'm... Hey, he's a lawyer, right? So... <laughs> he gets around. He's allowed to travel. He's legally mm -hmm. mandated to travel. <laughs> At least I'm assuming he's a lawyer. I'm not going to look into this. <laughs> it's that famous thing he's always doing in the Looney Tunes cartoons. Yeah. <sighs> Open-faced buttered dark rye bread with cold cuts, pieces of meat or fish, cheese or spreads. It's, it's interesting. It's an open-faced sandwich. That's it. <laughs> yeah, basically. And like open-faced sandwiches in general are, are like a big cultural thing in like the 
The, well, the... I mean, given that the Vikings made them, it makes sense that they would go to Denmark. The Vikings famous for inventing and then losing uh, the open face sandwich. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so like they're, they're like a big cultural thing there, culinary wise. Uh, I, I, I am, I have heard. Uh, so, so it makes sense that they would have like their own sort of. Well, this is our version of it, even if it is essentially just. Well, it is just an open face sandwich, and you can put stuff on it, sort of thing. Um, I forgot where I was going with this. <laughs> And that's okay. Uh, oh, the other thing I wanted to say is, I, I, it's interesting going through this list and seeing, like, there are so many different sandwiches from so many different places in the world where, like, one of the ingredients is like, oh yeah, as like a sauce on this, just like spread some butter on there. And like, that's not really a thing around hereabouts, unless it's specifically just like, you're having a piece of toast with like, jam or, or honey on it, or just toast with butter sort of thing. Like, it is kind of weird how in the Americas it's just so much less likely to spread butter on a sandwich as as your, well, as your sandwich lubricant, if we're being clear, uh, completely honest. That's mm -hmm. the purpose of mayonnaise most of the time. Yeah. It's to make, it's to make it so that the sandwich is not dry. Mm-hmm. And, like, just, it's, it's wild. You, you would think, like, that, like, the fucking U.S. dairy industry would be all over that shit, given how they're like that with cheese and milk. Yeah, but no, it's weird. I wonder why. I wonder if there's a specific reason for it, or if it's just happenstance, I suppose. Uh, next, we've got Soul over Gudhim. Soul... This is the uh, the inverse version of Moon over my hammies from Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> Great! The logical opposite of something you get at Denny's. It's this. He's a whole fish. Exactly. <sighs> is the kipper with a raw yolk and a piece of dark bread. This is the most popular dish on Bornholm. From Denmark? I almost said Denway. <laughs> Denway and Normark. <laughs> I I took a drink after saying Denway and almost choked on it, laughing at how funny Denway was to me. <laughs> most. Open popular dish. It is the most popular dish. Open face sandwich on Rudbrod with smoked herring, chives, and a raw egg yolk. Also, you know, yeah, I'm... Socks brings up a good point. This isn't even the sandwich. This is the components of it. It's a deconstructed solo of a good yum. <laughs> I am impressed at how infrequent you get people serving just an egg yolk on things, because it really feels like cutting out the middleman. I'm not an eggs liker. But from how I have seen other people enjoy eggs, feels like they mostly enjoy the yolk, right? Like, that's the thing? Yeah, like, like the yolk adds, like, a ton of flavor to it. And, like, most of the people who, like, just eat egg whites is, like, you know, either they're making, like, a fucking meringue or something, like, like baking. Uh, or, like, they're doing it for, like, health reasons. An extreme diet. Or, or like, yeah. Like, or, or because, like, I know some people that are, like, apparently specifically, they have, like, an adverse, like, allergic reaction to, like, the yolk. And so, like, they kind of mm -hmm. can really only eat and enjoy the, the, the white. But, and then it's like, well, what do you do with the yolk then? It's like you, like, with just a yolk, what can you do? You can make a custard? And, like, that's the only thing that comes to my mind, being someone who was born and raised in, like, North America, as far as, like, food goes that you can just do with an egg yolk. So for me, uh, because I, I will cook with eggs, I just don't like the taste of eggs by themselves or the mm -hmm. texture of eggs by themselves. Uh, I would put a yolk into almost anything to just like um, into a lot of different things to boost up the richness and the uh, it just general fat content of something. I mean, that makes that's how sense. I would do it. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's basically what the yolk is. It's just like the, the, the higher fat concentrate bit of the egg. It's, it's, it's good. It's got a good taste to it. Next up is Souvlaki! Fuck yeah. I mean, hey, it's one of them wraps. I'm down. Uh-huh. Give it to me. It, it is yet another uh, Greek wrap, which is to say, it is yet another very good thing to eat. Put From that into my mouth. Sizzling skewer of pork or chicken roasted, shaved off the spit, and marinade ranging from hot barbecue to sweet, all laid out on a rolled piece of bread, sprinkled with the choice of lettuce, tomato, cheese, red onion, and oregano. 
and doused with tzatziki sauce. Is this just a barbecue gyro? Yes, please, give that to me. Su- Suvlaki in like a rap is fucking great. And also, this yeah. literally does just seem like it was an advertisement. It's just like, put wholesale here for the Suvlaki description. <laughs> like, yep. Never had one of these. The the Greek restaurant that uh, closed actually just last year um, mm-hmm. uh, did not serve one of these, but... Oh, man. All right, here's... Here is going to go ahead a uh, a real good secret tip for getting making sure you get really good Greek food. Mm-hmm. Make sure the restaurant has ties to organized crime. <laughs> Not a joke. That's a real, actual, genuine way to guarantee that it has good food. No, I get it though. I've I've seen and heard similar things. It's like. Mm-hmm. You, you hear it, it's like, my god, what a wild fucking world. But also, like, empirical evidence is just kind of like, yeah, but I mean. To an extent, that's that's correct. Yeah. <laughs> for better or for worse. <laughs> the mob ties taste better, but also it's because they don't really care as much about the, uh, you know, the profit margins off the restaurant. And they use it for meetings and stuff, so of course the food's going to be good there. God, yeah, that's true. Spaghetti sandwich. It was oddly delicious. <laughs> and it was oddly delicious. Uh, Grandmaster B. Funk is saying, Okay, so as an Australian, I don't think we invented spaghetti. Correct. I also don't think Australia invented putting spaghetti on toast. This is just a thing my dad does sometimes when we have, like, a bunch of leftover, like, spaghetti or spaghetti sauce. Because my parents love making, like, a huge batch of spaghetti and then having leftover spaghetti. Uh, instead of just, like, boiling the, the noodles to order. Uh, but I digress. Anyways, my dad just likes to, like, you, you take the leftover spaghetti, you know, you heat it up, you, 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 you take a piece of bread, you put it on top of that. If you're feeling saucy, you put a second piece of bread on top, and that's that's meal. That's I'm meal. gonna be honest. I love me a carb on carb sandwich. It, uh, they're honestly, always really though, good. Yeah. The, 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 the fucked up thing about them is people keep making them. You can ham and haw, like, oh my god, that's so weird. Oh my god, that's so odd. That sounds so that sounds so excessive. But the thing is, people are going to keep making them and eating them. Because evidently there's something to them. And I I, I as a as a child, as a baby child, mm-hmm. loved having a bit of bread with my spaghetti so I could make these just on the fly. There you go! Yeah. It, it is it is an instinct of young human children uh, to seek out and crave the spaghetti sandwich. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Which which is of empirical course, evidence. <laughs> which is of course for completion's sake, even though we all know what this is going to be, prepared with cooked spaghetti, sauce, and bread. Can I get a raw spaghetti sandwich? Because I want mine al dente, but oh, I mean like real al dente. That you crunch. Know how al dente I want it. I don't even want to remove from the box. <laughs> Listen, it's free fiber for you. <laughs> you gotta chew through the paint and stuff, but the fiber's free. Specials. Daily sandwiches. <laughs> from the Mid-Atlantic United States. Category. S- miscellaneous. <laughs> Specials? refers to cold deli sandwiches such as such as the corned beef it says such the corned beef special oh this is such a corned beef special (laughs) the roast beef special or the turkey special these are made with the appropriate meat served together with coleslaw and thousand island dressing on Jewish rye bread again (laughs) you got your pickled cabbage or fermented cabbage and your thousand island dressing on your rye bread and that's the special. <laughs> I, uh, I'm a big proponent of deli astrology, and I am such a corned beef special. You don't, you, unbelievably. <laughs> What's your cooked uh... deli sign? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Reuben Rising smoked meat son. I almost said smoked meat and heat. That's not astrology. That's <laughs> that's a very different thing. <laughs> It's one o'clock in the morning. My brain's a little bit puttering, but we're so close to the end here. <laughs> we're, at, we're almost out of the S's, so you're close. You're close. We're, we're nearly there. There are so many fucking S's, and then it's like the fucking victory lap, I think. Uh, speedy. Or Spidey? Or Spy Die? 
one of those is maybe right, unless none of them are. It's very tasty. Smell! The chicken, or pork, is marinated in one of the Spidey brand sauces, grilled and served as a sandwich. Smile! Yum! Ah! This person really enjoyed this tiny meat sandwich. Hey, I mean, I can get into it. <laughs> Decent looking tiny meat sandwich. Mm -hmm. From the United States. Uh, Binghampton, New York. Which I almost read as Birmingham. <laughs> Binghampton's not a real place. <laughs> Binghampton's not a real place. You made that up. Big Hampton isn't real, and it can't hurt you, no matter what Wikipedia tells you. You have to believe me. Marinated fake names. <laughs> yeah. Marinated cubes of chicken, pork, lamb, veal, venison, or beef, grilled on a spit, and served in a bun. So it does just sound like souvlaki, but in a tiny bun. Yeah, without vegetables, because it's, because it's served in New York. Yeah. <laughs> oh, a dire indictment of New York. <laughs> hey. The thing is, is I get it, so I'm not really, and not actually judging. You have more New York experience than I do, so I trust your judgment. Uh, uh, believe it or not, no, I have not. I've never <laughs> been to New York. I, I'm from the greater Boston area. I'm just here to, to, you know, goof on New York. My God, I think I do have more New York experience than you. I went there as a baby Probably. and have no recollection of it. <laughs> also, it's apparently pronounced Binghamton, not okay, not that Binghamton. Makes sense, actually. Binghamton. Binghamton, that makes more sense. There we go. Uh, next up, we have the St. Paul. That looks like a St. There's meat on that one. sandwich. There's, there's, definitely a, there's definitely a meat on there. What do you mean I have New York muscle memory? That's such a, that's such a funny way of describing that. <laughs> oh, Aperture City in chat says this looks like a sandwich with depression. <laughs> oh dear, I can kind of see it's it. It's the lumpiness of the white bread. Uh huh. It it makes me think of Eeyore. <laughs> this is the Eeyore sandwich. It's an egg foo young patty. Egg foo young is an omelet dish found in Chinese, Indonesian, British, Chinese, and Chinese American cuisine, uh, containing bean sprouts and minced white onions, dill pickle Are slices. Sure? Okay. Are you sure that's what's on that sandwich? Cause I don't think so. Maybe? Question mark. Dill pickle slices, white onion, mayonnaise, lettuce, and tomato on white bread. It's it's this sad lump of Eeyore meat. <laughs> which, Allegedly, which... there's no meat in it. It's all egg and uh, bean sprouts and stuff. Right. I don't it, know. It might actually be egg, but this does look rather meaty. So it could have fooled me, St. Paul. I guess I gotta go back to church and pray now. Uh, next up is the steak bomb. Which definitely looks like it's on the verge of exploding at any moment, so that's an apt name, I suppose. Uh, shredded steak with peppers, onions, and tomatoes. Ropa vieja. Oh my god, this is a ropa vieja sandwich? Oh my goodness. Apparently. I'm I not sure what that, that means, but... Ropa vieja is uh, like the national dish of Cuba, and it is absolutely delicious. Ooh, nice. Uh, from, Although it says this is from the United States. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, the United States takes credit for a whole lot of Cuban food. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Grilled, overstuffed submarine roll containing shaved steak and topped with salami, molten, oh, sorry, melted provolone. I thought that said molten, genuinely, <laughs> and I got scared. Sautéed onions and bell peppers. It looks good. That's a hell of a steak sandwich. Yeah. I'd put that in my mouth. I put that in more than my mouth. <laughs> Great. The steak burger. <coughs> oh, the sandwiches are fighting back. Hang on. I have finally finished all of the water I rationed out for myself on this stream. And I got myself quite a bit. I have, a, I have complaints about the structure of this sandwich. I'm very excited to tuck into this description here. <clears throat> this was my lunch yesterday. If it gave me a heart attack, it would have been worth it. Smile. Starting from the bottom, mayo salad, lettuce, tomato, cucumber, a little mustard, six ounce Angus steak, burger, bacon, cheese, dill, pickles, three onion rings, count them, Frenchies, mustard, jalapenos, oh yeah, and all in a really nice bun and served with lovely, chunky chips. Gotta from mention that French is mustard twice. 
from Super Rabbit 1 from UK. Mm. Uploaded by Faye. The, the, the onion rings give me worry about the structural stability of this sanguage. Fundamentally, this is just... This is just a burger, but they made the, the, the you know, burger meat just bought from a steak. That's it. Right, yeah. Typically prepared with ground sliced or minced beefsteak meat, additional meats are also used. I've I've heard some people in places be like talking up like, oh yeah, you gotta get the steak burger. It's it's life changing, it's incredible, it's so much better than a regular burger, and like it just It just sounds like a like a burger. It just sounds the like best a burger. burger the best ground meats for you turning into burgers aren't made with steak meat. It's yeah. Like, you don't, you don't turn, you don't make brisket steaks or anything like that or chuck steaks. Right. Like you, you or like, short rib steaks. Th there's like specific cuts of meat that people have been like using and mixing in different, like different proportions for like many, many years. And they've been doing that for a reason. It's because it's fucking good. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's because it makes a really good goddamn burger. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm just not a big steak gal in general. I'm just never been huge on steak in general, so like mm. it's it's not for me. It doesn't do anything for me. I do kinda wanna just eat these onion rings though. Love me an onion ring. Next up is steak. Uh which does specify that this one is a cheesesteak, even though Cheesesteak is evidently supposedly like a different qualification from steak sandwich with the inclusion of cheese, which like I I, I that that much I am willing to concede at the very least. I am questioning where the cheese is on this to turn into a cheesesteak. Doesn't uh, look like it has any. Don't you know? Peppers are made of cheese. No, oh, you know I didn't think about it, but you you got me. It's that famous thing that people are always making out of cow byproduct. It's peppers from the United yeah. States and Canada. Prepared with cooked steak, served on bread, or a roll. Steak sandwiches may include toppings such as cheese, onions, mushrooms, bell peppers, hot peppers, tomatoes, and in some cases, some instances, fried eggs, coleslaw, or french fries. I was about to say fried egg on a steak sandwich sounds odd, but I remember I like putting a fried egg on a burger, so like, I, I guess that makes sense. Why define that those are in some instances, as opposed to all of the other toppings? Aren't those all some instances? I don't know. I I think it's supposed to be read as, like, parsed as, like, uh, well, these ones here generally are more common than, like, these. But, like, it, it just seems strange and arbitrary to me based on the way it's worded. Which, yeah. stra strange and arbitrary is part of why I love this article, so... <laughs> all right. You're almost done with S. It's the last S. Our final entry for the letter S. Submarine slash sub slash baguette. Photo I took of an Italian sandwich I bought at a deli in San Francisco. I mean, that looks like a good sandwich. Is that like three layers thick tomato? Like, what is that big mass of red underneath the cheese? I think like directly under the cheese i want to say it's like well, we, well the, we have the, the green the here. yellow cheese sorry oh the okay okay layer. i i yeah. was i was parsing the like the light colored meat as cheese uh that maybe it's tomato maybe it's i was gonna say maybe it's like a pickled pepper but there's like peppers up here above the cheese so like what the fuck is that maybe like tomato i think paste? it's a That'd be a lot of tomato paste. Right. That's the only thing you're tasting if that's it on this sandwich of everything. I think that might be just like a triple stack of beefsteak tomato. Like it might just be some big meaty fucking tomato. Yeah. And I mean, like, yeah. I like tomato. I'd be into that. If they were seasoned, I wouldn't hate it. Mm -hmm. There. I have had so many people tell me they don't like tomatoes and it makes me sad because I am like 90% sure every time they say that. All they've had is, like, supermarket tomatoes, which are, more often than not, taste like fucking swill. A good tomato, like, a fresh-grown tomato that, like, has been recently picked and, like, hasn't been, like, bumped around a lot during shipping or whatever, like, either homegrown or from, like, a farmer's market or something, is really fucking good. If you try that and you tell me you don't like it, 
That's fine. I'm willing to accept that. Not every food is for everyone. If you say you don't like tomatoes and your entire basing of that is, uh, like supermarket tomatoes, I implore you to reconsider. I There's implore you to about... try. It's actually a thing about fruits in general. There is a kind of ugly for thing that forms on the skin of a lot of fruits mm -hmm. that's kind of hard and crusty, and you want to cut that out. But the forming of those on the skin of things, especially on things like tomatoes, means that that tomato is sweeter than average mm -hmm. and like a lot tastier in general. So weirdly enough, the uglier a tomato is, on average, the tastier it's going to be. You want those weird and rowdy motherfuckers. That's the good stuff. Yeah. You're looking for that. I I grow uh, tomatoes. I love them. They're delicious. And like, again, yeah, there's a lot of reasons, a lot of valid reasons for someone to not enjoy any kind of food. I'm not saying, well, if you don't enjoy a food, you're fucking wrong. I'm just saying, if your entire basing of it is, well, I didn't like the taste of a supermarket tomato, you, please, please try something better. <laughs> I'm begging you for your own sake. You might actually like it. You might actually like it. You never know. So a sub sandwich is, it's just any long sandwich, period. That's Sand all it is. Sandwich what is long. Sandwich what is long yeah. and has stuff piled on top of it. I also see some people say they don't like the the texture of tomatoes, but there are like a lot of different tomatoes that have different textures. So like, you know, it's, 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 it's worth looking into things to see if there is something that like you are able to like eat and enjoy just because, you know, there's, there's a lot of good food out there. There's a lot of different varieties. And I think it's important to like, explore to see like what works for you for whatever reasons you might have you know mm. also thank you pizza pocket full for the five month reset i appreciate that all i have to say is that grape tomatoes are great to eat on their own yeah we have like a little grape tomato plant uh in like a planter in the front and i'll just like go out in the morning plant like pick a couple and just have like a bowl to eat <laughs> it's good submarine sandwich that's that's my tomato rant for the month i'll do another in november please look forward to it <laughs> Generic sandwich served on a long French or Italian roll, which may contain a wide variety of sliced meats, vegetables, and condiments, including lettuce, tomatoes, sweet peppers, onions, olives, and mushrooms. Also known regionally as a hero, a hoagie, a grinder, or a zep, among other okay, names. Okay, what the fuck? I have never heard zep in my life. I've never heard zep before. I've heard all of the other ones. I've never heard of a zep. Zep straight up just sounds like the name of, like, uh... Like, it, it sounds like a Frank Zappa adjacent type of musician, is what Zep sounds Some, like to me. Someone snuck that in there to, to wonder if anyone's going to notice, because, you, <laughs> you know, it's believable following Hero, Hoagie, and Grinder. Right. That's like someone coming in here and being like, oh yeah, by the way, a submarine is sometimes known as a Krongle. And people would be like, <laughs> yeah, that, that, that seems like something you would hear in, like, the northeast of America. <laughs> Among other names. In the United Kingdom, it is named a baguette after the French bread used to make it. Which I guess makes sense. There are other sandwiches named after the type of bread what's used on it. The Tavern Sandwich. Why Why is this linking to Made Right? It's an IRC cop, uh, thing, I think. An American casual dining franchise restaurant chain. Huh. Oh. This I one thought Maid was the name in person. It could also be that. Uh, this one went first. Uh, the meat mixture is a bit sweet. The rumor says they use Dr. Pepper as a flavor ingredient. But don't even ask. They won't tell you. Doesn't matter. People come from far and wide to sample a Maid Right. It... My, my gut reaction is that it does look a bit like a sad, dry, sloppy joe. But even then, I would still try it. That was looking like a sad, sad, sloppy Joe. I would still give it a try. A sleepy Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> Common in Iowa, consists of a mixture of unseasoned ground beef and sautéed onions. Oh, sometimes no. told the, the the bit where it specifies it's unseasoned does make me tilt my head a little, especially considering the description for this one was like, you know, I think they used Dr. Pepper to flavor it. So, like, clearly this one isn't unseasoned. And also, uh, my friend Len in chat, who evidently has actual experience with the sandwich, is saying it usually is seasoned. It's very much seasoned. <laughs> who fucking wrote this? <laughs> ah. 
sometimes topped with pickles, ketchup, and mustard on a bun. <sighs> I, I don't think it's a typo, Coach Meg. I think this person put that in fully seriously. Either that or put it in as like a joke or something. Sounds like nothing to you, because in southern Vietnam, folks do simmer pork loin with Coke or co Coca-Cola for sweetness and color. Yeah, there are, like, oh, yeah, multiple places fine. in the world where people will use, like, a, like a cola or a soda or something similar as, like, a, like flavoring for meat. That's, that's a fairly common thing. Like, I've heard of multiple people in, doing that. In the U.S., people use colas as a basis for barbecue sauce all the time. Yeah, exactly. Like, all the time. Lots of times, like, drinks like that are used, uh for like sauces or for like seasonings in different ways because like it, it it it's good at like reducing down to like a very concentrated flavor i have heard people use coke as a cake flavoring actually i've not heard of that but that like i can see that that makes sense mm. next up we have finally reached at long last after at the beginning of the list being haunted by finger sandwich with no image and the description only saying see tea sandwich we have finally reached <laughs> tea sandwich and the image is the same image they used for the cucumber sandwich much earlier <laughs> 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 it's just the same picture once again <laughs> cucumber and cream cheese sandwiches with tea as served at the Orangery at Kensington Palace in London, England. Cucumber and cream cheese sandwiches with tea. It, again, I, just, I can't believe this picture was taken in England. I am taken aback and so surprised by this. Shocking. Are we sure? It couldn't have, could have been anywhere. It, I, I mean, it's saying down here, bit boy from Los Angeles, California. For, perhaps there's been a mix-up. Hmm... Tea sandwich. Thinly sliced white bread with crusts removed, lightly buttered, containing a light spread of cream cheese or mayonnaise mixture, and often radishes, cucumber, asparagus, or watercress. Other fillings may be pimento cheese, ham with mustard, smoked salmon, fruit jam, curried chicken, and egg salad. So it's just small sandwiches. It's it, just small sandwiches to eat with tea. That's it. Small sandwich on white bread where we remove the crust, put a little bit of butter on it. Other stuff is in it. It's a snack time sandwich. It's, it sounds okay. It's not a meal, but it, it's something I suppose I would eat if I was invited to tea with sandwiches. I actually quite like the cream cheese and cucumber variety. It's, it's Those a good are very, combination. Very, yeah. yeah. They're very refreshing and a light thing to eat. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think I would enjoy, like, a cucumber and cream cheese sandwich if it was, like, not super thinly sliced and peeled cucumber, like, a, like a decent-sized bit of it, because I like a good cucumber. Gotta get that crunch, yeah. Yeah, 100%. you gotta. And, like, I, I really like the, like, the skins on the cucumbers. I like the taste and texture of them. Uh, and, like, a lot of recipes I see are just like, oh, yeah, by the way, peel all the cucumber and, like, scoop out all the insides of it. And it... it, it Sometimes I get it for what they're trying to make out of it, but sometimes it just it just kind of confuses me because I like those bits. Next up is right, the so toast we're sandwich. We were talking about carb on carb sandwiches earlier, and Which, I think this is the one that goes one step too far. Yeah, this this sandwich is a little dire, but like you, you, you do need to understand this is very much like this is I am dirt broke. I only have bread. I need to eat something. This at least gives me uh, like texture variation. Mm -hmm. Th this is desperate times call for desperate sandwiches. This this is not as a lot of people like to joke about. Uh, oh, the quintessential British cuisine. Like I know people like to joke about. Ha ha. Yeah, the the they, they eat the wig and kebab. They they eat the babby's yed. But like this is. This is very much, oh god, this is all we fucking have. We are poor. We are fucking broke. We need to eat something. England has this thing with glorifying their wartime poverty foods. I wouldn't know. I'm not English. This is an image of a toast sandwich shot from the side. A sandwich was made and photographed by me, Ryan. It was okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting us know, Ryan. Quants. Good time, Ryan. I took it in my kitchen after making the- This is Ryan North! Ryan North? Hold this on is... a second. Dinosaur Comics, Ryan North? This is Ryan North. It is! 
Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Thanks for contributing the famous image, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> My fucking god! It is, it is truly uh. a small world we live in, huh? <laughs> From a whole bunch of places. <laughs> yeah. Thin slice of toast between two thin slices of bread with a layer of butter, salt, and pepper to taste. It, it is very much just, we need to eat something. We've got a lot of bread. At the very least, we can get some, like, texture variation. A bit of salt and pepper on there. I never said there were celebrity guests on the Sandwich Wiki article. I didn't know! I didn't know! <laughs> I didn't realize! I have never read the description and looked more into it for Toast Sandwich specifically! I didn't know! Because here's the thing. When you brought that up, I saw Quants. I was like, Quants sound familiar, but I don't remember why. And that's right. Ryan North's, like, username whenever he's not using his real name. Mm-hmm. God, ain't there also fairy bread or something? Is fairy bread? Uh, fairy bread is when they like it, it's spread with some Nutella or butter and then sprinkled on like some uh, some Jimmy's basically sprinkles. Ah, okay, it's, yeah, that's that's not the one I'm thinking of. The one I'm thinking of was like uh, this was something that my family did back when we were like uh, pretty well, pretty less well off than we are right now. Like mm -hmm. back back when money was a lot tighter and I was a lot younger, like a a, a a a a treat for a kid that my parents would do was just like, uh, basically a piece of toast with like some butter and cinnamon and a bit of brown sugar on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Mm -hmm. and As like, a child who also was uh, conditioned to adore mashed potatoes. Uh huh. Like, as a child with no concept of poverty because you're a child and you haven't been fucking worn down yeah. by capitalism yet. It's just like, oh man, this is good. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> and yet, like, like a, a lot of people have just had, like, brown sugar cinnamon toast before. Like, it's, mm -hmm. it's good. Now, it's, when I say conditioned to love mashed potatoes, I just mean you add a lot of it because they're incredibly cheap to, to make a lot of. And <laughs> yeah. They fill you up really well so you don't have a large actual entree mm -hmm. to your meal. They're cheap, they're easy, they're filling. That's potatoes. Yep. There's a reason why many places around the world have subsisted on potatoes. Toast Hawaii. From Germany. A maraschino cherry? Hold the fucking phone, please, oh, no. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. And this... I I know this is gonna make the previous thing I said ring a little hollow, the thing where I was like, you know, try not to be too judgmental about some of this stuff. Some of the stuff is just like, you know, it's, it's, it's poverty food. People using whatever cheap stuff they have around to try and make something that's at least nice enough to, like, not have to be eating fucking swill. Uh, I, I can't condone this. I can't defend a maraschino cherry being plopped in the middle of a, a piece of toast and some pineapple cheese and ham. I'm the person that enjoys, like, pineapple uh, and, like, a, a, a decent, like, chunky ham on a pizza. I like that. Oh, that's fine. It's... The, the pineapple on pizza debate is ridiculous because it entirely depends on the sauce on the pizza. Yeah. People love to get fucking up in arms about just, like, food arguments that mean nothing in general, and it's, like, one of my biggest yeah. online pet peeves, which is why uh, I told people outright in the stream, if they're going to argue, oh, is this a sandwich? Is this not a sandwich? You're banned. Uh, I have said enough that I hate this shit on multiple streams, so <laughs> I'm taking the nuclear option tonight, giving how this is a sandwich stream. <laughs> ah, but God... I, I, I look at this and it just makes me feel haggard. From Germany. Slice of toast with ham. A maraschino cherry. In the middle of a pineapple slice. Uh, and cheese grilled from above. So the cheese starts to melt. <sighs> oh, Germany, you've done us dirty tonight. You've done us dirty tonight with this one cruel move. <laughs> this is a sandwich for villains. <laughs> Only evil guys eat this. For sure. I could extremely see just some ridiculous evil, you know, evil like mastermind in his lair, stroking his cat and noshing on one of these. God, fuck, I can too. <laughs> toasty. Next, next up is the Toasty. 
Not from Mortal Kombat? Dang. Again, By celebrity Dick guests. <laughs> Dick Johnson! That's... No, that's got to be a fake name, right? There's no way. There's no way. No There's got to be at least. There's got to be a lot, like a few Richard Johnsons in the world. There's no way that they they don't exist, you know. I mean, there's definitely a Dick Hyman, and he is a proficient, like a prolific, rather, uh, jazz musician, and he's got that fucking name. So, one of the uh, one of the uh, like committee members of the Olympics, his name's Dick Pound. <laughs> Who has written a book called Dick Pound Inside the Olympics. <laughs> I'm going to die! <laughs> Holy shit. Holy Did he know? Shit. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you not hear me say the words inside the Olympics? <laughs> people lean in. when they People lean into it. They just do, uh-huh. you know? They know what they're about. They're not going to take that chance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, a toasty cut and sealed. Originating from the UK, the US, and Australia. Two slices of bread with various fillings, toasted and edges sealed with a sandwich toaster. So it's... But not Canada. N- not People Canada. People don't do this in Canada. Nope. We've we've never done this here. If you if you tried to get me to do this, I would I would get cry. I would get scared. I would run away. I would trip and fall, and I would hit the missile launch controls by accident. So don't try it. Mm. This does just seem like they're describing the ability to toast bread. Uh, though. Yes. This 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 does just seem like they're describing the fact that you can toast some bread and make a sandwich out of that. Uh, or like make a. Or, like, make a panini pressed sandwich with, like, white bread. That that, yeah. that that does seem to be the impression I get here, and so I... The, the seal is very important. Okay, I'm, I'm willing, to, I'm willing to, 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 to give that much. This is, like... This is an Uncrustables with the crust on. This is a crustable. This is the... Finally. <laughs> We've created it. <laughs> Science has generated it. At long last. At long last. <laughs> crustables. A singular <laughs> tube, a beaker of crustable. God. <laughs> uh, next up is tofu. Smuckers has a fucking sniper trained to my head right now. Oh God. <laughs> Smucker himself is coming to my house with an axe. <laughs> the jig is up. Uh, tofu sandwich. You know tofu, that famous thing from United States. Mm-hmm. Typically broiled or baked with vegetables. I mean, I, I, I guess it makes sense. The, the idea here is that, like, it's a very Americanized way to serve tofu. So I guess the U.S. distinction there does does track it's in, not in that this weird. instance. Like, fried tofu is absolutely a thing in Japan, too. Like, yeah. it's not that weird, really. It's honestly, I could 100% see this probably should actually be listed as being a Japan thing first. <laughs> yeah, rather than United maybe. States thing. <laughs> like, period. Because I. I am 1,000% sure that they, they will serve you, if you ask for one in any given place that would do a sandwiches there, a tofu sandwich. Yeah, that, that wouldn't surprise me, quite honestly. Are sandwiches big in Japan? I mean, there was one thing earlier that was the, 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 the I forget the name for it, but the, the fried pork cutlet as a sandwich. That was, that was uh, a thing katsu. on the list. Yeah. yeah. Katsu sando. Mm-hmm. Uh, next up is tongue toast. Beef tongue and scrambled eggs. All right, I've got a question here about mm-hmm. the, uh, the structure of this right here. Right. They're on the same plate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it counts. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a deconstruction, a reimagining yeah. uh, of the sandwich. Uh, Birdlimes in chat asking, where is the bread? Don't you see the bagel to the side here? Yeah, there's the bagel right there. You've got to slice this puppy open and put it in if you want to eat the sandwich. Yeah. I've also never really thought of doing tongue meat on a sandwich. Like I've had tongue meat in like a, like a like a like a soup, I think, and also as like a taco, and that was good. But I've never really thought Tacos of like with eggs enough, on a. Right? Yeah, I. You know, yeah, I'm willing to concede that much. That's true. It's 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 close enough that it's like, wow, why didn't I think of this actually? <laughs> Sautéed beef tongue and scrambled eggs served open faced. Neat. I try that. 
Ah, uh, torta. Torta. Yes. Torta. Mexican style torta with typical accompaniments. I have never had a torta, but I have heard nothing uh, but good about it. it. They've got like a good dense bread that to hold up to all of the fillings in them. They're really good. Mm-hmm. Man, this Gotta picture does look pretty good though. Like, like we've <laughs> yeah. seen some amateur pictures that have looked real bad. This is an amateur picture that looks pretty damn good though. Oh. There is kind of a, a a recurring theme of the sandwich list on Wikipedia. That basically every Latin American or South American country, they really nail sandwiches every single time. Honestly, though, uh, I saw someone earlier in chat say it's so good, you gotta try one. The issue is that for like as multicultural uh, as especially the the food scene here is in like Montreal and Quebec, as 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 like good as we are on that front. Um, there's not a very large presence of, like, Mexican food, which makes me sad, because every time I've been to the States and had Mexican food there, it was fucking phenomenal. Uh, and, uh. I, and I say this knowing full well that this is not real Mexican food. I know it's not real Mexican food. You don't have to tell me, oh my god, I can't believe you're using Taco Bell as an example here, Holly. It's not real Mexican food. Trust me, I know. I understand. I get it. It is emblematic of fast food uh, Mexican in a very Americanized setting, and so I'm using it for that context alone. You know, in comparison to something like a McDonald's. There is one single Taco Bell in the entirety of Quebec. We have one. We get one. <laughs> Just one. In the entire province. And... Canadian provinces are quite big. They're quite large. Anyways, the torta. <laughs> Mexican roll, either telero or bollillo, spread with mayo or refried beans and stuffed with various sliced meats, cheeses, vegetables, usually tomatoes, onions, and avocado, and choice of pickled jalapenos or chipotle peppers. It can either be made ahead and tightly wrapped for a packed lunch, or, if made to order, grilled on both sides with some butter. Fuck. Oh, that sounds good. I just want to point out that this is a stuffed sandwich that can be spread with refried beans. What the fuck? Oh god, I need that right now is the thing, though. Refried beans are so good. <laughs> Genuinely, I thought about refried beans the other day and got so happy I wanted to cry. <laughs> My favorite for, uh, form of beans is Cuban black beans, but Ooh, refried beans are pretty good. Refried beans. I love Cuban food in general. It's Cuban, really good. I, I've not really had very much uh, Cuban food, if any, now that I think about it, and I want to I wanna change that one of these days. Next up torta is the ahogada. Torta ahogada. A Mexican torta ahogada. A dish consisting of a pork sandwich in chili and tomato sauce, plus onion slices with lime juice. F fuck. It's a bit messy. <laughs> Little bit sloppy style, but that's not that's not inherently an issue. You, you just get yourself a fork and a knife, and you can go to Hog Wild Town on that. Oh, oh, oh! I would eat the hell out of this. I love, I love me a fucking uh, tomato and hot pepper type of sauce. That's a good kind of sauce. From Mexico. Oh, uh, Phil Carnitas. Ooh. Oh, God. Uh. It's it's almost two in the morning. I shouldn't be thinking about food what makes me hungry. <laughs> and yet... Oh, sandwiches. <laughs> From Guadalajara. Birote bread, similar to boyillo, filled with carnitas, deep-fried pork, shredded chicken or other meats, beans, and cheese. The torta is then dipped in a very hot tomato and dried chile de arbol sauce and topped with pickled sliced onions. God damn, that sounds like I would enjoy the everything there. Oh. Oh. oh, 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 oh. I want to try this mm. one. You'll get the chance someday, I'm sure. Mm hmm. Ma'am, a yummy sandwich for me. <laughs> yummy, yum, yummy sandwich for me after work. Thank you, sick, for the 250 tip. I appreciate that. I hope you're doing well. Uh, my throat's a little scratchy. I'm so glad we're at the end here. I am very glad, in retrospect, that I didn't really have any sort of big, long stream plans for this week, and I'm probably also not streaming tomorrow, because uh, 
I vastly underestimated how long List of Known Sandwiches was. <laughs> yes. Yeah, every time, every time you look at one of these pages, like pages like this, you underestimate it. Ranking of Colors took like three months. Anyway. God, I thought this would be three hours, four hours max, one and done. We're good. Enjoy your sandwiches. I'm off to bed at a reasonable hour. Mm, we're still going. I'm, 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 it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> so, Tramezzino? Tramezzino. The Tramezzino from Italy. Uh. Are you sure about that? That. Uh, this looks like a little face. This looks like a, uh. <laughs> This looks like a Muppet, is this, what it is. This looks like someone made a macaroni and cheese sandwich and then infused the soul of a little guy into it. <laughs> they they um, fully transmuted the soul of a Muppet into the sandwich. You can't eat it because it was its birthday. You have to wait until tomorrow. Come on, it's just a little guy. Heartless. <clears throat> Triangular white bread. That's that's a square. With crusts removed, with fillings such as tuna and olive and prosciutto, served in Italian bars throughout the day. Okay, so it's like a bar food snack. This doesn't look like tuna. What what is in this? It is anywhere between two and eight triangles. That's that's a rectangle. What is what is in this? I can't tell what's in this specific one. It looks a little bit like Janiera, actually, that it has had some uh, cheese melted onto it a little bit. I guess, yeah. So, something about the neon green of this one bit here is scaring me a little. Yeah, I think that's maybe like the skin of zucchini, you know, like a, a skin side of zucchini. Oh my god, it probably is, yeah. That tracks. I'm now less worried about it. <laughs> Next. We have the uh, Tran Capecho, or Peco, I'm not quite sure how the CHs are always pronounced in other languages, mm. from Bolivia. A magnificent oh. representation of the Cochabambino gastronomic impetus made into a sandwich. It has white rice, a large diameter piece of breaded beef, boiled and later fried Andean potato slices, fried egg, tomato bramble, onion and locoto chopped into millimeter cubes. In short, it is a silly pancho plate inside a tortilla bread. This culinary innovation was popularized in the 90s, and due to the high caloric concentration, it was consumed by the working class during the day and by the bohemian population at night until dawn. These diners were the ones who creatively baptized the colossal sandwich as Tran, pa tran Capecho. This is the big motherfucker on campus, is what this one is. <laughs> big Dick is back in town, <laughs> right here. Big Dick is back on the menu, boys! <laughs> <laughs> I, you, d again, take that fried egg off of this, and oh my god, I'd eat this. It's like, oh, I'm into it. It sounds really good. It also sounds like another type of sandwich where I would eat this and then not want or need to eat food for the next 48 hours. Oh, 100%, yeah. <laughs> Slice of breaded meat, fried potatoes, fried egg, rice, and salad, such as tomatoes, onions, and lakotos, uh, which is a type of... Of pepper, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, between two slices of bread. <clears throat> Next up is tripleta, with no image provided. I've had tripleta. Nice. From Puerto Rico. There are numerous variations of this sandwich, but all include three kinds of grilled meat, usually beef, pork, and chicken, on toasted pan de agua, a Puerto Rican bread similar to Italian bread, generally topped with lettuce, onion, tomato, mayonnaise, ketchup, and shoestring potatoes. Yeah, they're good. That does sound good. S sometimes it's fun to mix and match your meats together. Tuna sandwich. I like tuna sandwich. Uh... Of all the, like, X-type salad sandwiches you can make, I think tuna's probably my go-to. It's my favorite. It's a good sandwich, in my humble opinion. And you can even make them, like, without mayonnaise if you're not big on mayonnaise. Like, I've seen some recipes that, like, for the, 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 the sort of fat of choice, they use, like, an olive oil in it, and, like, that's been pretty good. The couple of times I had it like that. Usually made with tuna salad, 
Uh, I, I mean, yeah, a tuna salad sandwich would have tuna salad in it. Which may include mayonnaise, sweet corn, cucumber, or celery. Uh, there, I've never heard of putting sweet corn in a tuna salad. That's new to me. I could see it. I, I, I've never seen it either, but I could see it. Yeah. Uh, usually what I like see and do for a, a tuna salad is like celery, some shredded carrot, sometimes a bit of like cucumber, uh, then like whatever other seasonings I want in there. Other common variations include the tuna boat. What the fuck is a tuna boat? <laughs> I, I have to assume that is a sub version I, of a tuna I, sandwich. I guess. Yeah. Or the tuna melt. Which, and the yeah. tuna melt. Yeah. Uh, I'm not big on tuna melt because I don't really like fish and dairy. Uh, but like, I don't know. Other people get it. I can respect it. Tuna sandwich. It's a good standby. It's a solid sandwich. Turkey Devonshire, once again, using our hot it's brown pick. <laughs> you know it. You love it. That's right, baby. This mediocre hot brown pick. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking hot brown is here. <laughs> hot faced open sandwich. Hot open faced sandwich on toasted bread with hot turkey, bacon, tomatoes, and a cheese sauce. This is just a hot brown. There's not a single thing about this that differentiates it from a hot brown. This is just yet another hot brown. Next up is turkey. A turkey sandwich at Corbell Champagne Cellars in Guerneville, California. Usually made with smoked turkey. You can also have other ingredients and condiments, such as... Wait! Oh, oh, never mind. I misread usually made with smoked turkey. And in my, like, almost two o'clock tired haze, uh, parsed it as, um... Usually made with turkey. <laughs> <laughs> and... Had a brief moment where, like, I felt like my heart was going to leap out of my chest, like, What do you mean it's usually turkey? <laughs> Yeah, you got that ham turkey. Got that uh, <laughs> beef turkey. You got that. You got. The, if you really, really go looking, you can get like lamb turkey. Yeah. This is a Reuben. It's like a turkey sandwich, but instead of turkey, we have Thousand <laughs> Island dressing and coleslaw, <laughs> or sour and nothing else. <laughs> uh, can also have other ingredients and condiments such as cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, mayonnaise, and mustard. I made a turkey sandwich today. I had two sandwiches today, and that was my lunch sandwich, and it was good. Classic turkey sandwich, yeah. Next up is the Wada Pao, which is how it's pronounced. I have heard many Indian people uh, pronounce it. Uh, I got to try this once at a friend's house, and it's fucking awesome. Uh, it's usually like a, like a breakfast sandwich type of thing. Uh, Ooh, potato, potato fritter, fritter coated in chickpea flour in a bun. It's real good. Oh, it's real good. Sounds it, good, yeah. It is a great type of fried potato sorts of thing. Uh, again, carbs on carbs. It fucking works. It's great. I wonder if I could get one of those Dominican uh, potato fritters uh, that are filled with cheese and meat and have one of those on a sandwich. Oh, man, that would be good. Excuse me. That would be good, too. <laughs> Vegemite. On toast. Yep. Vegemite is a dark brown Australian food paste made from used brewer's yeast extract, a byproduct of beer manufacturing, various vegetables, wheat, and spice additives. It is a spread for sandwiches, toast, crumpets, and cracker biscuits, as well as a filling for pastries. Uh, much like Marmite, which appeared earlier, Vegemite, I'm told, uh, is an acquired taste, but if you like it, it's pretty good as long as you like ration it right. Yeah, uh, also, people tend to use way too much of it, I think, right, exactly. when they try it, so... The, the, the problem is they go, like, oh, well, this is a sandwich spread, so it's like a peanut butter or a jelly, so I'm gonna just slather on a whole bunch of it. And they take a bite and their mouth dies, and it's like, well, yeah, you're eating the super concentrated beer flavor uh, in a massive yeah. amount. You you have to spread it super thin. You, you gotta spread that shit thin. Uh, I've never tried it myself, but I want to someday. Uh, why are they not one entry? Because Vegemite and Marmite are distinct somehow, for reasons I don't know. Uh, I, I think the difference is that, like, Vegemite has, like, 
vegetables in it. And I think Marmite is mostly just the yeast extract. You sp spread it super thick on purpose and you love it? You are stronger than I will ever be. You Have are you stronger been... than I will ever be. <laughs> Have you ever looked into Jepson's Malort as far as a booze goes? You might, you might be one of the few people who are into that. <laughs> <laughs> Jepson's Malort also sounds like a wizard's top level spell. Oh yeah, 100%. It's... It is a, it was a kind of liquor made by someone who basically had no sense of taste left from a lifetime of smoking, like, hundreds of cigarettes. Oh my god. A week. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that is the actual audience for Malort, is people who basically can't taste anything. Mike Mega in chat just described it as Chicago's ultimate trick. <laughs> also accurate. They're not wrong at all. <laughs> Fucking phenomenal. Great. <sighs> Vegetable sandwiches from India. Vegetable sandwich with a spicy green chutney, a popular street food in Mumbai. That sounds good. I like me a good yeah. veggie sandwich. Uh, this I like Indian food. I like a lot of different like spicy chutneys. I'd put this in my mouth. Hell yeah. Popular in Mumbai is a street food. It is made with Western style bread and is usually toasted. The main ingredients are a spicy green chutney spread, tomatoes, onions, cucumber, and a spicy potato filling made with chaat masala, or a similar spice mix. Other ingredients sometimes included are cooked beetroot and cheese. The sandwich is a popular student lunch. That does sound good. Sounds good. I like that Indian food is like starting to like have more and more of a presence in terms of like uh like like food in like the north americas uh oh, yeah. i i honestly hope that like more of the like the vegetarian based foods that they have start coming to prominence because like there's some really fucking good ones there's some really fucking good ones like indian food is phenomenal and just because of like how so many people in the country are vegetarian like they have so much fucking good vegetarian food it it fucking rules it's so good. Speaking of, Veggie Burger, our last V entry from the United States. Mel's Diner, the best veggie burger I've ever eaten. Vegetarian goodness, baby. There's two different approaches you can do to a veggie burger. Mm -hmm. the, the, the one that I prefer is don't actually try to emulate a burger. Yes, don't agreed. Don't make it be beef adjacent mm -hmm. because you can make them really good and very well vegetably and everything and be very tasty if they don't bother doing that right yeah and then you could also try to emulate that and if you do that please go the mushroom route rather than the vegetable route. oh absolutely like mushrooms are a really good sort of like meat substitute for a lot of things yeah uh, but, but like, yeah, there's like so much you can do with the space of like what a veggie burger is. And it's like, well, yeah, I could try very hard, uh, against the will of God and mother nature to make this try and be like a beef burger. Or, you know, you could understand and appreciate like the different sort of flavor profiles that the different vegetables you use would bring to a veggie burger and like elevate that and celebrate that and use that. It's great. It's great. It's awesome. There's there's some really fucking good burgers you can make out of stuff like mushrooms or like beans and stuff like that. It's good. Veggie burgers are good. Veggie, veggie burgers are good in the same way that I say falafels are good. A good falafel is fucking incredible. A bad one is so disappointing. A bad veggie burger is kind of sad. A really good veggie burger is fucking phenomenal. You know, try not to judge foods by, like, the worst possible instances of them, but also be aware that sometimes it can be fucked up. Uh, next up is The Wrap, which is, you know, just put whatever in a wrap. Invented in the United States. Invented in the United in States and Canada. That famous country uh, known <laughs> known for this specific type of flatbread. <laughs> Thank you, Tiny Buff Cat, for the five month resub. GF and I just woke up from a three hour nap to find you still <laughs> streaming sandwiches. It <laughs> fell asleep around fan. It brings Less me a strange, puzzling 
type of joy to know that multiple people at multiple points in the stream have popped in and been like, Oh my god, what the fuck? You're still going? You're still streaming? There's a lot of sandwiches, <laughs> y'all. There's a lot of sandwiches. There are a lot of sandwiches out there in the world, and we are here to learn all of them. This is a thorough stream. This is an educational stream. This is everything it needs to be. And so much more. There's no way this could have been done shorter. <laughs> Anyways, meats, cheeses, and vegetables served in a wrap. That's that's what a fucking wrap is, it turns out. A wrap is when you have stuff in a wrap. Who could have fucking guessed? I... It's funny, after having so many specific wraps, I forgot that, yeah, some of these entries on the list are just, yeah, by the way, you can have this type of food and this type of bread, and it's that type of sandwich. I, I will admit, yeah, I did think Sandwich Stream would maybe be three or four hours max. We are here on hour seven. <laughs> we are here well into hour seven. Next up is the worst brot, or sausage bread. Oh no. Sandwich worst brot, worst brotchen. Uh-uh. It is from Germany and Austria, and is, of course, Simple and common German or Austrian sandwich prepared with thin slices of lunch meat or sausage, sometimes buttered. Variations include the addition of cheese or pickle slices. You, you take your big your, your big sausage, you slice her thin, you slap it on there, there you go. That's a quick meal. Thank you, Mothballs, for that brand new sub. I appreciate that. Don't understand sandwiches that are just meat and butter? You thought that was just a UK thing? Nope. Uh, it turns out, people all across the world, in many different countries and civilizations for many different years, uh, for many different reasons, have been subsisting off of bread with butter uh, and some other source of protein, such as cheese or meat, uh, because it's... Oh, that's a food! <laughs> yeah, like, it's 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 quick, it's easy, it's, it's satisfying, it's filling, it gets you nutrients that you need. Um, it's is like, like, you know, if you're like raising livestock and stuff, then you're gonna have like milk a like access relatively regularly, which you can then turn into like things like cheese, which is easily stored, uh, like a source of protein and like fats and stuff. And then like when it comes to the time where the animal's old and has to be slaughtered, well, there you go. Now you, now you have meat that you can use. Like there, there, there's a reason why so many cultures all across the world have been using that. And it's 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 because of what's 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 the word for 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 raising animals specifically? It's not agricultural uh, livestock. Yeah, livestock. It's because of, like taking care of Ranching. livestock, yeah. ranching stuff like that. Isn't bread with butter a German thing? Oh, sorry. Yeah, my mistake. The list does very clearly tell us all the way back at the top. Bread with the butter, butter on it. <laughs> Where's where's that butterbrot? Yep, butterbrot. Yep, vented by Germany. Nowhere else yes, in the world true. can you find putting some butter on that bad boy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fuck. <sighs> we have officially reached the fine. No, one, two, three, four. The final. I've got problems with this list. Uh, <laughs> this is not alphabetical didn't... order. Yes, yeah, someone didn't alphabetize these last three. This is not an alphabetical order. Holy shit. They thought they thought they could trick me and be like, yeah, you're going all the way down to Zed. You're almost done, girl. And then they just hit me with this. It's three more. <sighs> we three have... more. See, these are the uh, the extra boss uh, at, the end, <laughs> at the end of the game. The... You've gone through the alphabet. <laughs> these three are the post-game super bosses. We have three yep. more to go before that. Yakisoba pan. From Japan. Uh, these are delicious. They are an extreme instance of carb on carb, but they, they are delicious. Mm -hmm. I've never had it, but I look at this and I think, you know, I get it. I understand. Hot dog bun stuffed with fried noodles, frequently topped with pickles such as Benny Shoga with mayonnaise. Mayonnaise in Japan is also like different from... Uh, like the common mayonnaise you see around like the United States, it's got like a different texture and taste to it. I think it's like sweeter. Uh, it's slightly sweeter, and they use exclusively egg yolks mm -hmm. for making it, as opposed to the whole egg. So it also it's yellower. Mm -hmm. 
Yeni Shoga is the pink ginger. Ah, I see. I do like a nice pickled ginger. That is, it is good. Thin strips of ginger pickled in umezu, the vinegary pickling solution used to make umeboshi. I, I do like ginger. I do enjoy pickling ginger. It's it's that good stuff. Put it in my mouth. Uh, Zapie Kanka, which I hope I pronounced okay enough, from Poland. This is a long boy. This is a long switch. Open face sandwich on halved baguette or other long roll, usually topped with sautéed mushrooms, cheese, ham, or other meats and vegetables. Toasted until cheese melts and served hot with ketchup. I, I don't want this. I don't like ketchup. This that's a lot of ketchup. If it was a more tolerable, it was a smaller quantity, I'd be fine with it. I don't really like ketchup at all, unless it's on like a couple small things in small quantities. Uh, this, this is not for me. This is this is a sandwich that someone else can eat gladly. And so here we are at the final official alphabetical entry on the list of known sandwiches. And oh, oh boy, ladies, gentlemen, and anyone else in between or outside of that, we have saved the best for last. And this is, of course, uh, Zero Skinier from Hungary. Look at that. Look at that. Now we're talking. Some people have already They're seen thick. what the description is on this. Uh, can you in the chat, or anyone, I, I guess anyone would just be you, Doc. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little loopy. What yep. do you think this consists of? Well, I have I have a confession in that I did read ahead. Okay. But from looking at it, the, my you know my immediate assumption would just be, hey, that's onions and butter on some toast, right? Uh huh. That's that's what you'd think, right? Also, uh, Mabel, 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 Mabel in chat says that they are apparently pronounced uh, Sroshkenye. Thank you for that. Uh, I appreciate okay. that. Uh, I do enjoy learning things about other languages. I'm just bad at them. <laughs> Someone just described this as the Wario sad meal. <laughs> hey, hold on, no, Wario's powerful. all about garlic. Right, yeah, he's sad because there's no garlic on this. It's just onion. Exactly. From Hungary. <clears throat> Lard. On white bread. Usually topped with white or red onion slices. Fun note about lard. Lard is actually better for you than butter is. Huh. Yeah. No kidding. It is lower in, um, uh, like, whichever the, the fats is worse for you, mm -hmm. saturated or unsaturated, I don't remember. Saturated. Uh, yeah, it's lower in saturated fat overall and uh, also doesn't contribute as much to cholesterol intake. Wild. Yeah. Huh, I didn't know it that. It is just straight up better for you than uh, than butter is. Interesting. And so, we have reached the technical alphabetical end of the list of all sandwiches known to humankind discovered thus far. But I am happy to tell you, as you can clearly see, we've got some post-game content, baby. Here we fucking go, Spatlo! Now we're talking. From South oh, Africa. Whoa. Hold on a second. I'm interested in the, the, the bread shaping situation going uh -huh. on here. Now, this is a horseshoe type of bread. It's also <laughs> triple decker, I think. This this does just straight up look like a sandwich on top of a different sandwich. It does. <laughs> what is this? A hollowed out quarter loaf of bread. Filled with a variety of ingredients such as chips, cheese, poloni, and achar. Uh, poloni is just bologna, uh, which we learned earlier. Uh, the sandwich is also known as a kota. Okay, that's all well and good, but are you considering this entire separate sandwich as several ingredients? Several ingredients are typing. My fucking god. This is... No wonder this is post-game content. This is far too advanced. <laughs> <laughs> this is multiple sandwiches at once. Can we handle that? I don't think so. I certainly fucking can't. I don't know about anyone else. 
Thank you, Common Linnet, for the 16 month reason. I appreciate that. I would absolutely try it. I mentioned this in the chat earlier, but there is a local kind of sandwich around here called a fat chicken. Ooh. Uh, which is, it's basically a chicken parm, except it's so big that they serve it in a pizza box as opposed to wrapping it up. And it is stuffed with french fries and mozzarella sticks. And they're absurd. I have two a year. <laughs> it does sound good, though. Yes, it is extremely good. We are here at the final two. Tomato. United States. Sliced salted tomato on white bread or toast with mayonnaise. No image provided. Please use your imagination. A it's tomato a tea sandwich. A tomato sandwich. If you like tomato, and if you have some good quality tomato, because both of those things are important here, if you meet both of those conditions, tomato sandwiches are fucking great. Tomato sandwiches fucking rule. If you've got, like, some fresh tomatoes growing, you get yourself one of those in the summer, you slice that up, a little bit of salt and pepper on there, some mayonnaise, maybe a bit of cheese if you have some you want to use. Maybe a bit of, like, a hot pepper jelly if you've got that lying around as well. But, like, all of that stuff is just extra, honestly. If you just have a great fucking tomato, you can just fucking enjoy that on a sandwich, I'm, and it's good. I'm also a big proponent of the J. Kenji Lopez all dis disclaimer of a BLT is not a bacon sandwich. It is a it's tomato, a tomato sandwich. sandwich. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That, yeah, that has been seasoned with lettuce and bacon rather than the other way around. Mm -hmm. And here we are on our final sandwich of the list. This is the final sandwich known to all of humankind. The final post games challenge. The Glasgow Oyster from Scotland. That's right, the final sandwich is a pie. The final sandwich is just a pastry. A scotch pie, which is a small double-crusted meat pie filled with minced mutton, haggis, or other meat. On a bread roll. On a morning roll. Very powerful. It's like a triple layer. It's basically, it, it doubles down on the spat low being post-game content as like a triple layer of sandwich. <laughs> and it makes a lot of sense. You, you thought you could handle the spat low. Can you handle the Glasgow Oyster? My God! I don't know if I can beat it. I didn't grind enough. I, I, I don't, I don't think I would want to or be able to do to do a pie on a dinner roll. I think that would be too much for me. I think it would take me out, knock me flat on my ass. I, it would be over in a second. Frame one. Glasgow Oyster wins. Holly <laughs> loses. See also. Hot dog variations. List of bread dishes. List of hamburgers. List of submarine sandwich restaurants. Sandwich bread. Soup and sandwich. Wikimedia Commons has media related to sandwiches. Bet you do. Portals. Access related topics. <laughs> Food portal. Lists portal. <laughs> For true wiki perverts only. You can definitely find the list of lists in uh, when you go searching in the list portal. References. All 60 of them here for your perusal as you please. There are more than 60 sandwiches in there, so you'd assume there'd be more than 60. You would hope. Hate, but hey. And yet. Categories. Sandwiches. World cuisine. List of foods by type. This page was last edited on the 11th of October, 2021, at 19 hours, 30 more, 34 minutes UTC. Uh, that is, of course, before uh, things were updated as we were reading it, because evidently that happened. Uh, text is available under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike License. Additional terms may apply. By using this site, you agree to the terms of use and privacy policy. Wikipedia is a registered trademark of the Wikimedia Foundation, a non-profit organization. Privacy Policy About Wikipedia 
Disclaimers. Contact Wikipedia. Mobile view. Developers. Statistics. Cookie statement. There was a cookie statement at the, at the top here. Sandwich cookies and ice cream sandwiches are generally not considered sandwiches. A Wikimedia project powered by Wikimedia. Congratulations. That was seven hours and 20 minutes of sandwich content. And now you too. Now you at home, the viewer, know everything there is to know about every sandwich in the world discovered thus far, thus far, by humankind. Thank you, cat girl Laura Palmer, for the tip. Thanks for seven hours of sandwich, Holly. I hope you enjoyed seven hours of sandwiches. My voice is hoarse. My throat is sore. It is two o'clock in the morning, Eastern Standard Time, or Eastern Daylight Time. I'm not sure if it's EDT or EST, because I never fucking remember, and I don't care. It's EDT still. It's EDT. It is 2.06 a.m. Eastern. That's what matters. And the fucked up thing is... I had filling meals all day today. I have had plenty of food. Seven hours of sandwiches has made me hungry. Unbelievable. And that's terrifying. <sighs> I am going to let you go, Doc. Thank you for joining. <laughs> hey, no worries. It was a good time. Have a good one. You have a wonderful rest of your, your evening. You take care. Thank you again to Doc. For joining, uh, you can check him out. Uh, I will post a link to his stream here uh, at twitch.tv slash m underscore d underscore c underscore t. Uh, he is a great dude who does some real fun streams. You can also do sword.zone. That's right. That's right. The shorthand is uh, sword.zone, which is a great fucking uh, novelty uh, like URL to have. It, it fucking rules. Uh, thank you as well to Log and to Mike and to Scorpy who joined me earlier uh, before very understandably having to tap out uh, because how the fuck do you sit through for seven hours of sandwich reading? I say to myself, looking in the mirror, I am tired. I don't think anyone is going to hold this against me, but I don't have it in me for a fan art showcase tonight. <laughs> I am going to pass the fuck out. So I'm going to play the goodbye song now. <sighs> That's going to be the end of our stream tonight. Uh, a little different from the standard uh, stream fair. But uh, I think doing stuff like this is fun. And I've been looking for an excuse to do this, something like this, for a while now. And uh, I suppose sandwiches is a good excuse as any, isn't it? Thank you all very much for your support tonight, for all the subs, all the tips, all the bits. Uh, your generosity means a whole hell of a lot to me. Thanks for, you know, helping me keep afloat and all that stuff. And here's hoping I can keep on uh, making cool things and putting on cool shows that make your support feel like it's all worthwhile. Thank you as well for uh, all of the hosts and raids that we had today. Thank you for all the new followers we had today. Thank you to any new viewers that stopped by and enjoyed sandwiches. <laughs> uh, thank you for anyone who happened to do any fan art or take any clips or anything like that and share those around. Thank you, No Escape VG, for the eight month resub. I appreciate that. And thank you all very much for tuning in. You know, whether you were understandably just here for a bit or somehow managed to sit through the entire stream, my goodness. Uh, whether you only got here at the start or you only hopped in just now at the end, 
whether you've been chatting it up with your fellow folks in the chat room or you've just been lurking, having a good time to yourself, whether you've caught this live or god forbid you catch this through the pods, <laughs> it's always a delight to have you here. Thanks for taking time out of your busy day to spend it here with us and with sandwiches. I don't know who's live right now. It's two in the morning. I'm too tired to check. I'm gonna raid shrimps. We're gonna go look at shrimps now. You can let shrimps lull you to bed. Uh, actually, I'll check to see if anyone else is live that we could raid right now. Real quick, real quick, real quick. Uh, real quick. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, nothing's really coming to, 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 to my eyes. Uh, wait, is Bugs live? Is Bugs live right now? Is Bugs live? Holy shit, is Bugs live? Uh, we're gonna raid Bugs. We're gonna raid Bugs, my friend Bugs. Faithful of Bugs. Uh, yes, and uh, they are playing Psychonauts 2! Uh, Bugs and Frankie have been doing a go through Psychonauts 2 lately, um, where they, like, go super in-depth into, like, all the details of the game, so, you know, spoilers abound, but if you've played the games and you want a really cool playthrough that's gonna go through a whole bunch of details, check it out. Uh, I can't think of a specific raid phrase because my brain don't work no more. You can think of your favorite uh, sandwich-related raid phrase and just go ahead and use that. I'm gonna go to bed. Um, I've been very tired lately, kind of exhausted energy-wise. And I imagine doing this stream didn't help <laughs> as fun as it was. Uh, so I don't know when my next stream is gonna be. I would like to do at least one more stream this week. We'll see when it is. Uh, no promises yet, but... No, I'd like to do at least one more. That sounds like a good time. Maybe I'll see you there? Or maybe I'll see you around some other time. But no matter what happens, before we head off, I'd just like to say... Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you very much for tuning in. Make sure you're taking care of yourself or taking care of the folks around you. Enjoy your favorite sandwich at your earliest convenience. And I hope to see you again soon.